powered from the Panorama Squad Studios on the Red Stage in Indian Trail, North Carolina, and broadcasting from the Alec Bradley Lone Star Studios of Azel, Texas. Welcome to Primetime Special Edition number 125. Tonight, we reconvene the coalition team for some post-PCA talk. And as always, Primetime Special Edition is sponsored by Perdomo Cigars. Awarded Nicaraguan Cigar of the Year in 2014 by Cigar Journal, the Perdomo 20th Anniversary brand has consistently earned the highest scores in the industry and is a top seller in humidors around the world. The Perdomo 20th Anniversary blend requires tobaccos that have been carefully hand-selected and are well-aged for a minimum of eight years. The Perdomo 20th Anniversary is offered in three distinct wrappers, a smooth, creamy Ecuadorian Connecticut, a rich, earthy Cuban seed Nicaraguan sun-grown, and a dark, oily Cuban seed Nicaraguan Maduro. Combining these beautifully bourbon barrel aged wrappers with thick, high priming binder and filler tobaccos gives each blend a balanced complexity with layers of rich flavors and smooth, elegant aromas. Perdomo Cigar is a family owned and operated company headquartered in Miami, Florida, with manufacturing and agricultural facilities in Esteli, Nicaragua. Perdomo's highly acclaimed cigar brands include the Perdomo State Selection Vintage, the Perdomo Double H 12 year vintage, Perdomo 20th Anniversary, Perdomo Reserve 10th Anniversary, Perdomo Abano Bourbon Barrel Aids, Perdomo Lot 23. Perdomo Menso 70, and many more. For great tasting notes and pairing information, check out the Perdomo website at www.perdomocigars.com. And of course, we want to mention Aganorsa Leaf. Great Leaf makes great cigars. Aganorsa Leaf stands out because of the distinctive flavor of their Carojo 99 and Criollo 98 seeds cultivated by Cuba Garments on the best lands in Jalapa Nestle, Nicaragua. When you smoke one of their JFR, JFR Lunatic, Guardian of Reform, or Casa Fernandez cigars, you experience a unique taste and aroma that makes Aganorsa leaf special. Smoke one today and enjoy the signature flavor of Aganorsa leaf. And by Jerry Tobacco. The authentic Corojo leaf is one of the most robust and flavorful tobacco leaves out there. During the golden age of cigars in Cuba, it was a leaf of choice to make some of the world's greatest cigars. Because it is one of the most challenging ones to cultivate, it fell out of favor by the 1990s. In the Hamasran Valley in Honduras, Julio Arroa took on the challenge of growing Carojo from the original seeds. And in 2000, he successfully reintroduced authentic Carojo back to the market. With over 50 years' experience in the tobacco business, from growing and curing tobacco to scar production, the Jerry Tobacco Farm has been able to continue to deliver products to market with authentic Carojo. Now with Jerry Tobacco, Julio and Justo bring their very own brand to market and each contain that authentic leaf. You can find the Aladino line that represents the golden age of cigars from 1947 to 1961 in a variety of uh, blends and wrappers that will suit your palate. Now available at your local retailer, be sure to ask for Jerry Tobacco, a legacy that is tasted in every draw. And finally by Drew Estate, check out and download the Drew Diplomat app for your mobile device. Keep up with everything going on in Drew Estate. Experience the subculture is the rebirth of cigars. It's available on iTunes and Google Play. For more information, check out www.drewdiplomat.com. And as always, all the live streaming for the Primetime Network of Shows is sponsored exclusively by Drew Estate, as well as the California Studios for the Thursday Primetime Show. Well, welcome, everybody. This is Primetime Special Edition number 125. And today is Tuesday, August 16th. 2022. This is Will Cooper. I'm on the red stage here in the Perdomo Cigar Studios. And I'm first joined by my co-host um, from the Alec Bradley Lone Star Studios in Azle, Texas, Mr. Bear DePussy. Uh, good evening, Coop. Good evening. First and foremost, congratulations. 12 years, my friend. 12 years of the best coverage in the cigar industry. Um, you should be proud. You should be proud. I know you're proud. Um, just a fantastic achievement, sir. Really, really, uh, really can't thank you enough for allowing me to be a part of the journey, but congratulations on 12 years. Thank you guys very much. Um, and I'll just say this, you know, that 12 years. Don't thank them. I said it. Thank I'm thanking me. everybody. I'm thanking everybody. I'm thanking everybody here on the same. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And thanks bear. Of course. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. But uh, no, you know, I love you all, you guys. And, and Bear, thank you as well for the kind words. Uh, yeah, it, it's uh, it's something I'm proud of. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, it's just uh, this is I'm getting to the end of like the PCA coverage right now. And I'm in one of those things where, boy, it just seems like I'm pulling on the rope. <laughs> so uh, we do extend our PCA coverage, which uh, I've gotten a lot of good feedback that we've done this, by the way. M most of the feedback has been very positive that uh, and I've gotten this from both the audience and the manufacturing community that we've done this, that they liked it, that wasn't all rushed and, you know, it was spread out. So um, people liked it. So I was happy with that. 
the the, uh, the testament of quality over quantity. I believe it was, and I believe that this team like just knocked it out of the park this year. Uh, I said many times I was the weak link this year, which you guys didn't see it, but I didn't take as good a notes as I did last year. And you know when you when you have to go back and do this, it, it was a little more end work that I had to do. So, um, but you guys did a great job. So, um, hats off. But hey, let's let's introduce the other two players tonight, Bear, and we'll bring them right into the conversation. Uh, he is uh, from the Tap Toy Studios in Black Mountain, North Carolina, Mr. Ben Lee, the Bull Shark. Buddy, glad to be here. Glad to get this uh, the post show going. Yeah, we put in a lot of work, man. So it's good to talk about you know every, put everything in like one capsule. Exactly, exactly. And from the Rockin, boy, what did I do? Rockin. Vodka. Rock and Vodka Studios <laughs> in, in, in Illinois. Yeah. The one and only Aaron Nielsen. Greetings and salutations, gentlemen. As always, uh, a pleasure and honor to be here. Uh, as Bear mentioned, congrats on the 12 years, Coop. You've done it with uh, humility and grace. Uh, and I am just humbled to be a small, small piece of what you've created. So thank you. And by the way, it is rock and vodka. I couldn't get a cigar sponsor. So why not use nepotism and take my dad's vodka company and put it behind me. So there you, there go. you go. There you go. There you go. But no, thank you, Aaron. And thanks for being on board um, and, and everything you've done. Ben, you too, as well. Um, I, ben really the last few weeks has been putting some time in Um with the videos it's not unappreciated uh and i think the end product has spoken for itself um with all the photos the words the videos and audio and our audio was significantly better this year i got no audio complaints by the way this year from anybody zero now and i think now, and i think i think we had zero uh incidences where coop was in the background talking over bear i think it too. I but there, there were two, and then there was about three places I roamed in and uh, uh, in the interview. I've said, uh, uh, I know I did it with the Codio, I did it with Tony Bellato, and I did it with one other. So right, at least well. three, at least three. So I've got, but I oh, look, I I improved a lot. On yes, that. absolutely. But yeah, yes, last I, year I was last thrilled year. about that. I was I was so so happy because. Every time I did that at the end of a video, uh, it was like extra work for Ben. Like, well, it was like a lot more work for Ben because he had to fix that then, right? So, so I did make every attempt. Um, I did make. I really worked hard to 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 control my. It, the the parts where I walked on the interview, it was kind of they were kind of these very open booths that they were. In those cases, the, uh, oh, McAuliffe was the other one I kind of I stumbled into, but again, it, that was one of these open booths where it was just hard to kind of sometimes be to the side. But well, it's well, it's, yeah, it's hard to walk in when like you know it's me and you know Luciano sitting on a couch, you know, hopefully right, right, walk right, into that frame. right, right. Um, but I did walk into the frame with you in the Codio booth, but that was a weird booth because they had these panels that went high, and then there were these open spaces. Yeah, but it, that was kind of organic. And the same with the McAuliffe. Because the McAuliffe, that we went in a square all the way around the booth. So we were talking everybody. Everyone walked in that frame. That yeah, was exactly. Everybody turned. Yeah, that one yeah. was fun. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, no, that was a lot of fun. By the way, uh, I do want to mention that if you haven't, we have a short, we did a short recap video following the trade show on Facebook uh, that McAuliffe uh, sponsored for us. Um, so you could, but this is going to be a more in-depth one. It's not going to overlap, hopefully. Uh, and I'm going to be smoking the McAuliffe A in honor of that tonight. So, um, is that a 660 there, Coop? That is the Gordo, of course. Yes. Ah, of course. Jesus. Gordo. Thank you. I, now, I mean, I'm going to be in full transparency. Probably the, of the three sizes I've had of the A, the Churchill, the lowercase A, and the Gordo. The Gordo is probably third in this case. It's, it's, that Churchill is still my go-to. That's 100% accurate. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm I'm being I'm being very honest, <laughs> but I do like this cigar. It doesn't mean I don't like this cigar. Yeah, I, that's I mean that's my order too. Oh, by the way, I fell in love with a Gordo over the weekend. Big surprise, right? Aladino, Connecticut Gordo. I'm Breaking telling news. you guys, give it a shot. Oh. 
Give that, give that Gordo a chance, and you tell me I'm wrong. Coop, I think, okay, so I think, look, I'm all about the free samples. I think because it, I, I just find myself hard to go pick up singles. Uh, so how about you put together a gift pack of Gordos that, that the three of us have to smoke, and we will get back to you on that. Okay, I, I I I think that's a fair exercise. Now, I did send some Oscar Valadares Gordos, by the way. I don't know. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. <laughs> so, I'm aging them. I'm aging them right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you are. <laughs> they are. They are good. Uh, look, I sent one to Dave down in Australia, and he did like it. I'm going to be completely honest. Dave is not a Gordo guy, so. Dave, um, Dave gets cigars like every like six months and right. he has to pay like a bazillion dollars to get them out of customs. They're, you know, it's like, it's like $400 for a, you know, Hemingway, you know, Arturo Fuente Hemingway down there, dude, you could fucking roll up anything in a cigar. He, he, He'd fucking he would like swish your sweet. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's like, that's like sending food to an Ethiopian kid. Like, hey, he liked the food. Yeah. No kidding. Cause he can't eat. I did give Ben a Gordo once that he liked. The Davidoff, Nicaragua. I, no, wasn't it two? It was Davidoff, the Davidoff, Nicaraguan, Nicaraguan, and the Synchro, the Avo Synchro. Yeah. No, I, it, was the, it was the Griffin. Didn't you, were the, weren't you the one that told me about the Griffin Gordo? I told you. The, yes, Nicaraguan? it was. Yep, that one too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we were. Uh, you know, that was about, I think that had to be about five or six years ago when we were in New York. On that, yeah. on that general, we were Ben and I were on a trip with General. They took us up to the uh, Connecticut farms, and it was right around this time of the year. Uh, it was two thousand. I know it was two thousand seventeen, and um, we we met at the Davidoff store the night before. And Ben, I convinced Ben to try the Davidoff Nicaragua sixty, and he convinced me to buy that Calabra. And I think it was a win win on both ends because I thought it was good. It was good. Yeah, it took a minute to convince me, too. <laughs> it was <laughs> like, hey, you should go try that. Well, okay. okay, I offered to refund his money personally. I said, if you don't like this cigar, I will refund you the money of this cigar. So it won't cost you anything. <laughs> but I liked it. So. Yeah, that's why I bought the Calabra. I'm like, well, if I, you know, I can give him my Calabra then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Aaron, what are you smoking tonight? Well, Coop, I... Uh... I was thinking about what I was going to smoke first and it was memorable only because um, we were at a point in the show where we had to start to divide and conquer because we were getting to a point where it's like, you know what? Um, we've got a, a fair amount of boost to still cover. Yep. They, uh, ben and Bear had to do some interviews. So you and I went, and if you remember, we went to the 1910 booth and so we got some samples of the 1910, and I'm going to butcher the name, but it's the Cuchillo Pardo um, from 1910 that uh, was one of the ones that, that he had given us. And so um, this is the second one I've had. I've got, we got two, and uh, that's what I'm smoking tonight. So the 1910, all Mexican, 100% Mexican uh, tobacco. Yep, the Casa 1910. And we have him coming on the show. Actually, on Thursday, oh, on, good. Thursday on September 1st. Yeah, uh, he'll, tell you how, he'll tell you how to pronounce it correctly. <laughs> I, <laughs> uh, I know. I, I know I'm not pronouncing it correctly. Suchillo, Cuchillo, Pardo. I got the Pardo part right, but that's So I think the green one actually has some Nicaraguan in that, just so you know. Does it? I thought it was 100% the Mexican. The orange, I think the orange is 100% Mexican. The orange is 100% Mexican. Made in Mexico. And that one is actually made in Nicaragua, and it has some Nicaraguan in it. Ah, okay. Yep. I, yeah, I believe so. I stand I'd have to be, I, I, may, I may have to be fact-checked on You're that. You're right. One. You know what? You're right, because when we talked to him, he was branching out of uh, the 100% Mexican. I think he did one Honduran, one Nicaraguan, and one... He's got a Dominican he was talking Dominican. about. Dominican, right, yeah. right, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then someone I know saw him down in the Dominican and was asking me what he was doing down there. I said, well, he said he was going to make a Dominican or he was in the process of making a Dominican, so that's why he was down there. All right, Ben, what do you got? So I'm smoking um, it's that the Byron Reserve or Four Años yep. that we got at United. It, this thing was delicious. That cigar, I love that cigar. 
Yeah, it has so much richness and flavor, man. I was I was really surprised. I don't know this one has kind of been out a while, but it's not one that we've really ever spoke about. And it's one of the ones that gave us while we were at the booth. Yeah. So I thought I'd feature something a little bit different tonight. You know? Is that the 19th century or the 20th century? Nin- the 19th. That's, I thought so. Yeah, the 19th is the one I like the best. Yeah. Yeah, it's got a really rich, deep flavors. You know? it's, it's, it's really, really good. Nice. That's a good cigar. Good choices so far. So now I, I said I'm smoking the McAlfe Gordo, and now we're at that point of the show where Bear the Pussy will present his candidates on what he will smoke and allow one of our guests to pick that cigar tonight. All right. I got a, I got a really nice buffet to choose from tonight because I figured we, we would probably be going for a while. So, um, but Ben, I believe, I, I believe you're up, sir. Cause uh, I believe last time Aaron picked, uh, when we had the coalition on, so I've got plenty of cigars for you to choose from. I have got the Cavalier Geneva inner circle. Mm. I have got the foundation Olmec Maduro. Mm. Ooh. I've Never got, got that one. the Manola Casada 75th. Mm. I've got the Adventura La Rarona, the one with the pirate mm. face on it. And I, just for you, Coop, just for you, I have the All Saints Colorado, uh, Saint, excuse me, All Saints St. Francis Colorado, huge, but it's box now, press, I, so it doesn't feel like a 16. The name of the cigar is huge, by the way. The Batola name is huge. Yes. But I'm not picking it, Darren. Ben, uh, I am at your mercy. Oh, Ben, rather. Uh, I'm sorry, Ben. Now, all five of those, I think, would be awesome cigars. But if I was going to choose one of those to go first, it, my personal pick would be the Quesada 75th. Okay. Sounds good to me. Which I got word, Ben, we are going to be getting some for a Quesada corner. Nice. That's perfect. Yeah. That'd be uh, great. I got some, I, yep, I got some confirmation on that. So, guys, I don't have them yet, but stay tuned. That's a, I did, that was one of the samples I did not get at the show. So uh, I hope you guys got them because you guys should enjoy them. I don't know if I did. I know I didn't get the Olmec. I've got to get that. I'm, I'm... Oh, now, the Olmec, we're going to talk about the Olmec uh, in a little bit because that uh, I have a lot to say and very positive on that cigar uh, for sure. Way to, rub, a, it in that I did get, uh, way to well, rub it in that I didn't get the sample. Well, I didn't get, you know, I didn't get the Olmec Claro. And that was the one t- I wanted to. That was the and one I Everyone's to try. telling me the Claro is is even better than the Maduro, but I have a lot to say on that Maduro. Um, See, Nick did that on purpose. Now he wants to, he wants us to buy it. So, well, what about the free samples though? I, I know. I'm just saying. <laughs> he he gave me two high clear castles after he found out that I buy 20 boxes a year. I think I I think that was well deserved. I agree. That be you put the work in. So, <laughs> I, I, uh, to be honest, I, I think it was a bit light. Well, Ben comes ben, back with Ben, ben comes I back. Couldn't, agree, put, couldn't ben, agree more, Ben. Very ben, light, you came back light. with hats and shirts and all that stuff from from Nick's booth. <laughs> if Nick's yeah. listening, I, I'll, I'll I'm going to say this. Sorry, <laughs> Ben, real quick. On that note, I am so diehard at that streak I've got going on that I had a 6 a.m. flight uh, two weeks ago, and I woke up at 3 a.m to have my high clear castle before I boarded the plane instead of getting an extra hour of sleep. So that, is, ded- that is your dedication. That's, that's dedication. Dedication to the leaf or just absolute insanity. One of the two, but either way, I smoked the high clear castle again. Uh, yeah. I think it's all the above. I mean, that's correct. I, correct. Yeah. You know, I'll just ask the question now. Um, because none of us had, I don't know if any of us had it on. Well, no, we, Ben had it on his list, but, so I know Ben would, is going to get it, but are any of you guys going to get that new High Clare Castle in the, in the King Tut? Which I'm not even going to try to say the name of it, uh, but the one that, because I was more impressed when I saw that packaging in person, uh, and not just the packaging. The cigar looked really nice when I saw it as well. Like you, well, know, you, knew, I you, knew, you knew Nick was going to do it right, man. I, I guess I said, you know what? But originally I'm saying, well, that's a cigar I could I could pass on, and then I looked at it, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to try to get my hands on one of those cigars. And if it's really good, I'm going to get the box. So I'm just going to buy the box. 
Well, well, that's you, we, yeah. we know that we know we that know. We, we already yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just had to see yeah, that the, for Ben there. That was for Ben. Dude, all I the mean, fucking him and Hawing he did like pre-show, and he's like saw the price, and he's like, "Oh God, guys!" I'm like, "Oh, uh, thirty-three dollars." I don't know what to do. <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do. You're gonna buy the goddamn box, is what you're gonna do. Okay, let me re- let me just clarify though. I'm gonna buy the box. However, the 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 true definition is going to be if I repeat and buy the box again. Because right. I always will try. I'm always searching, as Bear likes to say, I'm always searching for that Holy Grail. In this case, it's, it could be entombed in a King Tut box. However, How appropriate would that be? Yep. However, at that price point, it better be damn good or else it's going to be one of those that I smoke on special occasions. Aaron, let's just be honest. How fucking terrified are you that it's going to be the greatest cigar of your life? And you're like, 100%, shit. 100%. 100%. Bear, there's no doubt. Well, you know what cigar that I I, I absolutely am just like blown away how good it is, and I'm gonna butcher it. So, you, but you guys will know what cigar I'm talking about. It's the Tatuaje. I, Pete called it his birthday cigar. I I can't pronounce the, it. It's go ahead, Coop. I know which one you're talking. I don't know the name. Escaso. You're talking about the Escasos? I believe that's what it is, and it's forty five dollars. And I got the box unknowing how much it was until I got the receipt. And I absolutely freaking love that cigar. However, A, it's limited. So I don't even know if you can get them anymore, but B, I love that cigar, but that's, that's expensive. That's really expensive to buy on a regular basis. So true. But I, for me, I think it's the best tat cigar I've ever had. I a hundred percent agree with you, Ben. It is, it is, it really is. So, which which is good. I mean, if you're going to spend that kind of money, then and to have it the best, at least you're in in theory uh, paying what you get. So I don't know. We'll see if he releases yeah. it again or what he's going to do. It's a great cigar. Um, I actually have one more of them. And this was that's it. Yep, right there. That's what we're talking about. Yep. I actually just took it out of the. You see, it's out of the cell a little because I just wanted to breathe a bit. But yeah. Um, actually, I cracked it a little at the bottom just now. Crap, it's still smokable. Sorry, Pete. Uh, if you're not, if you hope he's not watching, um, God, I hope but, he, I want him to comment right now. Yeah, it'll kill me probably, but uh, I gave you that cigar. <laughs> uh, but but uh, yeah, I, I agree. We're gonna talk a lot about Tatawahe too. Uh, when we get to some of our stuff, but you know, look, I, I this is I kind of said I'm kind of sick of talking about PCA, but that's what we're going to talk about tonight because we really haven't had a chance to talk about PCA since we all got back, uh, except we had that one Zoom call, I think, right? Mm-hmm. But right, so, yeah. but with our audience, we haven't had a chance to really share some of the feedback. Um, so I'm going to kind of go around the horn. Uh, I'm going to start with Ben. Um, you know, Ben, this was you're the veteran here. You've been to a lot of these PCAs. Uh, this is the second one with the Coop team. Just what I'm looking for overall impressions for is – um, let's focus first on the products and the companies. And then in the second half of the show, we'll talk about the logistics of the show. Um, yeah, I thought, I mean, the, obviously the, I like to still, the booth sizes were still a little small, which is, which I, I liked it. I still liked it. Uh, it's just easier to deal with for us, but you know, and there was a lot of new, new faces this year too. Yeah. You know, a lot of people returning, a lot of, a lot of, people that was our first time that was really good to see i i like the show i thought it was probably the you know I, again, last year was a really good show this one i thought was outstanding and you know the the products coming out there was a lot of stuff that we didn't even know about going into the show that we just kind of ran into we were there. yeah it, and, yeah it was funny bears like you missed this i'm like i didn't know about it it wasn't i didn't miss it i didn't know about it yeah, there was a lot it, of that, yeah, and it was, it, that was interesting that that just kept coming up over and over again. Yeah, it was a, a lot of it too. You know, so, some of we knew kind of going in, so we, we, you know, we put out our top five list going into the trade show, and it's it's basically based off of the stuff that we knew going at that point in time going into the show. Um, which is why, like our our post five, you know, was was a little different, you know, because we, yeah. we, we actually smoked some of the stuff, and we we actually introduced some of the stuff that we didn't know was going to be there at the time. But I thought overall the products that came out this year were were pretty good, actually. Like I, 
I don't get to smoke a lot while I'm on the show on the show for because I'm filming and stuff. But you know, when I get back, I wait a couple weeks, let them rehumidify, or because what I usually what I do is I'll get back to our our house and I put them in these giant humi bags, so they're not really crunchy and dry when I get home. And I started smoking a lot of them, you know, while I'm editing the videos and doing stuff. And I was pretty impressed by a lot of the releases that came out this year. And I thought it was a really good year for, you know, the the booth presentations, the stuff coming out. I thought it was a really good year. And, you know, I, last year had a lot of good vibe and buzz. This year, I thought it was even better. Even even better. I, and I thought, the, the, to me, it seemed like there was more people there, more retailers. It was busier on the last day than normal. But, you know, I just liked seeing there was more people presenting there with the booths, you know, and it, it just seemed like the vibe was there and their products coming out were really good. A lot of limited editions and a lot of really high priced cigars. That one I was a little concerned about, but we'll just see how that plays out. I agree with you on all those points. Um agree with you on all those points. Aaron, what about you? Yeah, so this is only my second show, right? So I don't have the history that you guys do. So I'm, I have from from my sample size. So here's here's what I, after kind of reflecting a little bit on it, I thought last year was interesting because it almost was like folks had the 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 manufacturers, the retailers, they had what I would call kind of like prep time. They knew because of the, the, the year off and not having a show, it was like, all right, so now we're going to have prep time, but they didn't really know what to expect. So they kind of went into it a little bit unknown and it was like, okay, how, what's our tenants going to be like? Uh, you know, how's this going to be received? What was the media coverage going to be like, et cetera. My first experience last year was phenomenal. I thought this year was even better. Um, I thought that, um, from a uh, a release standpoint, I would agree with Ben. A um, lot of limited editions. I thought the the booth presentations were more thoughtful this year, if that makes sense, or or they put a little more effort into them than they did last year. Definitely. So, perfect example is like an Ashton, right? I was hard on Ashton the first year I saw the booth. This year was more along the lines of what I'd expect from an Ashton. So just kind of using that theme of folks being putting a little more effort into this year than the prior year. Um, you know, I came in a day late, had to take care of something from the family and you guys were super supportive. Everything turned out great. So that was a, a good thing. So I came in a little bit kind of in a rushed, uh, you know, eager to get going and kind of see what was, was going to be kind of my second year. And, you know, it lived up to expect expectations. And the other thing that, and I'll, I'll leave with this, uh, turn it over to Bear. What I heard from you guys coming out of last year was the accessibility we had to the manufacturers, right? So we, it was, you guys, we had great access. We had great interviews last year. You were like, you know, we hadn't really gotten that before. Well, I thought that access carried over again to this year. There wasn't anybody that we couldn't really get to. I thought everybody was, was more than uh, accommodating for us and, and finding time, sticking to their appointments for the most part. So that was great to see that they continue to value what the media brings to them uh, and the coverage that they get and the benefit they get from what we bring uh, to them. So nothing but positive things for me coming out of this show again. You know, you mentioned Ashton, um, and I thought that was a good example, right, of making the booze a little better. And I think it helped them a lot because I know – we didn't get to interview Andy from Ashton, right? But I still covered that booze because James took me through some of the stuff. And, you know, they made they made some – we're going to talk about packaging changes. And to be honest, they started some of these packaging changes a year before uh, with the La Roma de Cubas. And we really didn't – they didn't have a booze to show that last year. And I think that hurt them. And so this year I'm seeing some of these, like, sampler packs and stuff like that. And, and I'm thinking they're all new and they really weren't. They had come out last year, but 
that was just like having a booth, I think, made a huge difference with that is what I was, you know, so I think it was a key thing uh, with a lot of companies with that. Just those just some of the making it wasn't the old Ashton booth that we remember, but it was a much more upgraded one for sure. OK, Bear. So this is just our like overall impression. Uh, focus more on the comp. We're going to focus more on the companies and the products, and then we'll talk about the PCA as an organization in the second half. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, I, I thought, uh, I mean, yeah, everyone hit kind of some really good points on this too. I, what I was, what I, I continue to be impressed with, uh, for the last couple of years is how some of the companies that are kind of less is more kind of approach and how well it actually has actually translated for them. I, I continue to be impressed with the Sutliff booth. I know that sounds kind of like random and weird, but I they the the collection of you know small boutique brands that they have represented in there and what they're able to do um, with just that with just that collection is pretty is pretty fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, I really liked um, I really liked um, just a, the ability for there just seemed a lot more flexibility. You know, Ben already kind of hit on that point about you know, every, everything just seemed a lot more accessible because with the smaller boost, but they weren't so small that we were cramped a lot of times in a lot of places, you know, um, you know, a lot of booths were packed and we were certainly a part of that, but we were, we were able to get in and out in, uh, you know, relatively short order to a lot of these places and the places that were packed, we hit early, uh, you know, uh, Ben and I hit up uh, Placencia pretty early on day, uh, was that day three, Ben? Day or day three. four? Yeah. Key move, key yeah, move. three. Got with key, and um, you know that that booth is always slammed. So um, that was a that was really uh, that was really lucky for us that they were uh, that uh, that Nestor uh, Placencia was uh, Andres Placencia was available so early. Um, the, yeah, there's sure there were a couple of booths that we that we missed that I was still disappointed in. We got a couple that we hit, missed last year that we really wanted to hit this year, so I felt really good about that. Um, but uh, but overall, I think from a cigar standpoint, um, here's here's a weird take, guys. You know, we always complain about the Vegas effect and how like cigars are like unsmokable and stuff for like, you know. Um, I got to be honest, the cigars I smoked were all in pretty damn good condition, like mm -hmm. relatively speaking. Whereas opposed to like the previous year, 2021, like almost everything I smoked was awful. And it was because of the condition, like it was because it was Vegas, right? It was yeah, really, we, I mean, I know, I know there was a lot, it was a lot harder last year, but still like, I guess uh, the 10 degrees really makes the difference because some of those cigars smoked fantastic. I mean, the cigars we smoked in Steve Saka's booth on the last day. Yeah. were fucking amazing. Yeah, they <laughs> like were they're in perfect condition. I was like, shit. Well, don't you okay. think too, Bear? I think um, that goes a little bit to what I was talking about in terms of preparation. You know, they kind of knew. The, the year before was like, all right, how's this going to, you know, logistics were, were big time in play. You know, how are we going to go to, what's our booth you know, you know, timing? And, and I'm sure they were still scrambling a little bit around there. So therefore it was a little bit, um, I don't say chaos, but maybe a little bit more chaotic. Whereas this year, all right, a little bit more prep time. They knew what was going in. They knew, um, had a little more, uh, insight maybe into what they were going to do i i don't know but i i echo yeah. what you're saying i mean i i want to applaud certain companies for you know for some of the the changes that they made and for being prepared but at the same time like they had a year to prepare for this i'm not gonna like i'm not gonna lather that on super thick i'm like okay they did their job <laughs> right, right <true. laughs> they, they made their booth presentable in some cases uh, and, you know, a lot of the ones that were lacking last year, they, they really stepped it up and, but, and it was still, but it was still a very minimalist effort, which again, I don't have a problem with. I thought every, you know, for the most part, every booth was really well done. Um, I it was really great to see right a now. lot of the, a lot of the principles. Uh, it was great to see, I'll, I'll tell you what, the, the last, the last thing too, it was great to see as we were scrambling on the last half day. Uh, to get as much as we could. Uh, it was still, you know, while we did miss, miss some key people uh, during that scramble, it was really fantastic to see um, 
principals still in the booth, principals writing business on that last day. Yeah, that's a, let, that was exciting. Yeah, don't let people fool you saying that that last day was dead. It was Bear and I were in 2019. Ben was there too. That was a ghost town. There was there, Oliva shut that booth down that morning. Okay. There was a. I'm not saying it wasn't. It was the slowest of the four days. But Barry, you're right. They were they were doing business. We 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 because there were several booths. We, I mean, I'm thinking of Enrique. I mean, is the guy, for example, from Matilde, who uh, I know he's on your show this Sunday. But he was the very last interview, and that interview was done really right as the show closed. Uh, People were got, shitting down. They like things were coming down on top of us, man. Yeah, I mean, literally. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, they were, they were literally pulling the carpet up off the showroom floor, floor as we're wrapping up that interview. Yeah. Uh, and hats off to Enrique Sejas, by the way, for doing that for us. Um, we, we appreciated that. Uh, I'm sure Bear, you'll let him know Sunday as well. Uh, when oh, he's of on. course. But, but yeah, I mean, that's what, he was busy, okay? Um, and I think if we – there were some principles that we missed – and most of those principles were missed by everybody this year. It wasn't really us who missed them, right? So I'm thinking, like, no, Ernesto wasn't there. And I don't think anyone got interviews with Lizette or Ernie, Ernie Jr. Uh, F- the Fuentes were floating around. You know, they, they were tough to get. I don't think anyone got the Fuentes uh, this year. <laughs> that was such a great story, man. Well, you had, you had the, you, well, we you had the award to give to 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 Carlito, and <laughs> oh, I never told that story. We had we had we had eyes on him, so like I'm I'm gonna tell this story because this is great. Go so, ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I'll let you tell. I'm here. So, I want to hear your point of view. It is so, so okay. Well, so for to kind of paint the picture and everything. So we he was accessible. Car- he was accessible, just not at this time. Yeah. Yeah. Look, and this is what I was telling, and this is what I was telling Coop. I was like, Carlito loves you. All you have to do is get in his eye line and he'll he will not necessarily drop but bro you know not necessarily drop everybody but he'll make his way over to you like that's all you need to do yeah problem was getting him in that eye line <laughs> so we so we hear that he's over in the fuente booth we we come over to the fuente of course jose stops us we get our jose blanco selfie we turn yeah. around carlito's gone gone right after the like, selfie, and we're like are you i mean we literally turned around and he's gone. So we're, we're like literally like little kids walking around the Fuente booth. Like, where the heck did he go? Where's, where's Carlito? Where's like, he yeah, like I seriously, it was like it was like, you know, um, it, you know, it was like playing a magic trick on one of my kids. You know, like you're just like, where did he go? So all of a sudden I see him and um, he's in between the booth, the Fuente booth and the Padron booth, which was next door. Right. Uh, right where the uh, the presentation was for the uh, for the. Um, collaboration cigar and i turn around to come back i was like coop coop come on and as soon as we get there he's gone again he's gone again it's the second Second time it happens a third time okay and i'm i'm fucking losing my shit because i'm like how is this guy just just like he's like lightning fast like just turn your head he's gone right where is he going like it happened twice uh the third time is when jeff borchowitz came up to say hi to us right yeah and we turn around again. I turn over my shoulder. I mean, I've got my, I purposely stood to the side. Like I didn't face, like I didn't face Jeff like I normally would and shake his hand like a normal man would because I didn't want to lose. <laughs> I didn't want to lose Carlito in my peripheral <laughs> and I still missed him. I still missed him. And lo and behold, we found, uh, we find him. He's, he's talking to George Padron in the Padron booth. Of course, we didn't want to do anything in you know, in George's booth, that's just disrespectful. Right, we didn't want to like, can't, so, yeah. So I literally just so, yeah, it's for you, and I left. <laughs> yeah, and so we, I, I got Coop, I got Coop, and uh, and I kind of pushed him into Carlito's eye line. He sees it, he comes over, gives you a big hug and everything. You were able to give him the award, and and uh, and it was just a, it was, yeah. it was a, it was a fun moment. It was funny. And he, and he did message me afterwards, um, you know, thanking me. Uh, but yeah, the whole thing is we we had the Factory of the Year award. You cannot get Carlito in one place. Is what I'm just gonna tell you, and. Because he was in the Padron booth, I felt it would have been disrespectful to either do it there or pull him out, right? And it would have been impossible. And, oh, by the way, Dave Savona was about 40 – no, no, he was about 10 feet away from those guys. And he was – I don't know what happened. He was work, He was with George, and, and then George went over to Carlito. So, so David Savona is, like, lurking around this whole thing, too, in the middle of all this. Yeah, you've got, you've got, you've got George Padron. 
You got David Savona. You got Jeff Borschwitz. I mean, yeah. I mean that's I mean that's three major players in yeah. all the components of of the industry, right? You got a major retailer, a major media component, and a major manufacturer. Good friend. And by oh, by the way, the guy he just collaborated on with you know one of the best projects of the of the trade show, if not the yeah. best project yeah. of the trade show. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. No oh, that man. Was, that, was, that was funny stuff for sure. Uh, it was I was losing time. my fucking mind though. Like I was like, how the, I, fuck I is he, believe, how the hell he, how does he this guy work? disappear? How does he just like he disappeared? Like um, like like I said, you turned your head, he was gone. It was it was, and and the thing yeah. is, and the thing is, like I'm just telling you, to get Carlito for five minutes, okay, at this trade show, is nothing short of a miracle, is what I'm saying. So it wasn't like he did a ton of interviews for the dojo guys or anything like. That. No one could get to these guys this year. Um, and it's not even that they're, if I had asked Carlito, I think he would have said yes. But the problem is we probably wouldn't wait two or three hours to do it. I, I, I mean, we've seen this. I mean, we've seen it happen. Uh, George is a little easier. To, like when we did George Federer last year. He's a little easier because he stays in the booth and he doesn't like disappear. Like Carlito's just like gone. Guys, so, All right. And so, yeah, like I said, fun times is a good story. Right. Um, no, that's good. So I want to take things in a little bit of a different direction with uh, and I want to talk a little more about cigars tonight um, because that's what the trade show is about. Like it is about not just samples, yeah, but it's about we're all cigars. about the samples. Oh, right, shit. Samples. No, no, no right. we're not about samples. All right. Um, and, you know, this year I asked the team and you guys were all great about it. Um, originally, I used to do my top five predicted uh, predictions for cigars we had at the trade show. And I said, you know, I had gotten a couple of feedback from people last year, uh, you know, saying, hey, maybe you should have the whole team do it. It was actually a couple of people, but it was enough to say I thought it was a good idea. I like I didn't. And I said, so I opened it up. I asked you guys if you could do it. Uh, you said yes. And I tried to basically say I didn't want to take anyone's. In, hopefully I didn't do this. I didn't want to take anyone's individuality away from this exercise. Like I wanted you guys to go into the trade show. I feel and, completely stripped of my humanity. It was like it yep. was not it was like it wasn't even my own voice talking. Sorry, keep going. Just kidding. <laughs> Thanks. Just kidding. No, so, so, no. Just kidding. So sarcasm, just, everybody. No, sarcasm. Because I had a because you'll see what my list. I had a very different view than other people. Did, but that's OK, because my view of the trade show isn't necessarily the one that's gospel. So. You guys were all great, and we, we went through it, and we're going to talk about some of the ones we went into before the trade show tonight. And then Ben, I think, was the one who said, hey, let's do this. Or I forget who said it. So I think Ben was one of the people said it. It was, amazing. It was hey, let's kind of go back and now do a top five of what we smoked and, and see how that did, right? Um, and as Ben said, there were some things we discovered at the trade show that we just didn't have on our radar. Some cigars we knew about, some cigars we didn't know about. And I thought it was a very, very interesting exercise. I'll tell you, with me, I had a trouble. It was, it was I, and I'll explain it when we get to my part. It was a challenging exercise to do that second one, uh, but I'm glad I did it. Don't get me wrong. Um, so I'm going to pull up the uh, screen here so like if people want to see the list as we're talking um we'll start with i guess our our predictions uh first is what we'll do in terms of that um and then we'll go with what the second part of it is what we actually liked coming out of the trade show so let me uh okay and uh all right, I'm going to start at the bottom here. Oh, you, you don't see it yet, right? No. Okay. Uh, let's try this again. All right. Now that will work. All right. So uh, I'm going to go from bottom up this time. Um, these are cigars that, like, like I said, before the trade show, no one had tried these cigars. And, um, you, and the idea was... What cigars do we think would make an impact on on people at the trade show? I think that was the simplest part of this exercise. It was, um, and everyone came up with five. So, Aaron, I'm going to start now. I'm just going to start. You don't have to say how these did, but maybe just talk about a couple. You you, you could say if anything disappointed you on this list, right? But these yep. were your top five: um, Casa Magna Connecticut number one, Foundation Olmec two, the LFD Solis three. Ace Prime Maria Lucia 4, 
in Gran Abano 20th Anniversario 5. Mm -hmm. Before you start, Aaron, how do you feel about that comment when Coop is like, we're going to start from the bottom up? And he's like, hey, Aaron. I just, well, well, I just I, want well, you to talk. Listen, no, no, no. So <laughs> I, 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 get, I, get, I get introduced last. My list is always last at the bottom. I'm used to it. That's fine. You know what? I, I'm just here for the ride and the free samples you guys give me. So guess what? It's It's – Goes if with we, the territory. If we listen, if we can't bust on uh, bust on Coop's balls tonight, like then then we just might as well hang right. up here. Yeah, I feel slighted. I didn't make any Gabe Kapler comments tonight. I mean, <laughs> Jesus, you just did it, man. God bless America. <laughs> I didn't. I just said I didn't make any comments. I didn't make a comment about his bad man. That was a that was a comment. Ben is rolling his eyes all the way through the screen here. <laughs> yeah. At least there was one one baseball manager he did bring up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yet <laughs> Aaron um, sorry man just didn't mean to steal your thunder no no okay so let's uh I, I went with this when we put when we were kind of uh, asked to do this I went with cigars that I thought were going to not only be of interest to me but again maybe make an impact or, or folks are going to be talking about both both pre and post right so um what, and in full transparency, I've only I've smoked three of the five. I have not smoked the Olmec yet, and I have not smoked the LFD yet. So I, I can't comment on those. But what I'll what I'll say. So when your question was, did they live up to it, or how, how do you want to take it, Coop? From um, our... well, you could say okay. Let's go. We can you could take it a couple of different ways. You could say you know in terms of how you felt about the cigar and then if you heard buzz about the cigar you you can certainly bring that up as well if you haven't smoked it yet well okay so i i think let's start with the one the number one it not only i thought lived for me uh lived up to the hype um i thought the cigar is outstanding i haven't smoked it since the trade show uh from the sample we got there but from my initial impression uh i was excited about it um I was, you know, really looking forward to it, and it it lived up to all expectations. On the flip side of that, um, I I again, I'm gonna I'm gonna smoke it again because I only got it from the trade show, but was the Grand Habano twentieth. I expect yeah, I had to send I, you that one. I sent you that yeah, one. Yeah. yeah, and I smoked it, and I think um, again we're coming off the we'll we we'll use the the Vegas rule. But I was expecting a little bit more when you come out with something that is um, an anniversary cigar and it was going to be, as I, I mentioned in there, right, it's a deviation from their, what I'll call the kind of their core portfolio, which tends to be a little bit on the more economical side. Um, I was a little disappointed in the cigar when I smoked it. Um, I thought the Ace Prime Maria Lucia um i thought was outstanding um i've smoked it now a couple times uh post show i thought the the packaging the way it was presented um you know having the opportunity to learn more about it from luciano was is always a you know a, an unfair advantage we have a little bit with that so i thought that was great so uh, those are three i can comment on um do i would i have changed my list right now no because it was what i knew going into it but um there wasn't like a dog rocket in there. It wasn't like something where I came away and like, I can't believe I put that on the list, but um, I, of all those I, one and five were kind of a, the dichotomy between living up to and being disappointed. So, so quick question, Aaron. So you asked the question in your comments there. You said, can this be a great compliment to an outstanding wine for the cost of Magna Connecticut? You said you liked it. It was, it lived up to expectation. Mm -hmm. I mean, how does that compare to the Liga F for you? Was the Liga F from last year, was it a better, was it better in terms of a cigar? I know they're completely different plans, but like in this term of complementing this outstanding line, right? Building on the outstanding line. Yeah, I, I do. I, th I think it's a, I think it's a, uh, what in my personal opinion, um, a little bit bigger of a departure, if that makes sense. Like, so I thought sure. the F was a little bit more in line. Like you could see where that fell. This was, a bigger departure away from that that kind of core if you will so um putting it in the connecticut wrapper w the flavor components of it uh i just thought it was a bigger departure than the app both great cigars but i i, 
I thought there was a lot of expectations into with that Connecticut, just just knowing what they were going to be releasing and the, the kind of the hype going into it. And for me, it lived up to it because we've had it before where we all like, oh, I can't wait to smoke the cigar. It's coming out. This is going to be, you know, this is going to be great. And it just falls flat. And I, and for me, it didn't. So to me, checks the box of, you know, job well done. Ben, I wanted to bring you into this. I don't want to step on yours too much here, but I, I felt like the Casa Mega Connecticut's an interesting discussion point because we all liked the Liga F from last year. I know you were a fan of it. The Colorado is smoking better than it ever has been. I think we all agree on that. You guys did an mm-hmm. entire uh, smoking syndicate on it, round table on it, or Quesada Corner, excuse me, uh, whichever one it was. You, you, you like the Connecticut as well. How fucking weird is it that the Oscuro just never took off? And it just is a, in my opinion, and I don't know if you feel this way, and that's why I'm going to bring you into this. The Oscuro, like from back in the day, was a complete miss. Yeah, I agree with that. I, it was one that I never really fell in love with. I just thought it was kind of forgettable, to be totally honest. You know, um, I, I would I would be surprised if they readdressed that one coming up in the future. It seemed like they were promoting that cigar a little more lately. And I, I want to say I saw it at the booth. I could be wrong. But it seemed like that cigar was put on the, like, the bottom of the back burner, it seemed like, for a while. Um, and it wouldn't – because – I didn't think that was a bad cigar to your school, but it was it was a very one dimensional cigar from what I remember. Yeah, it just wasn't it just did not hit for me, um, which was really sad because I had Man- Manolo actually handed me one at an event once. It, and then Domus Magnus came out the year after. And I think Domus Magnus took on a life of its own is what happened. Yeah, those are cigars are incredible. Yeah, incredible. yeah, that's that's yeah, that's to me was what happened is Domus Magnus came out completely overshadowed. Because yeah. that thing was fantastic. It was, it was, you know, it was on everybody's top list. You know, everybody was raving about it, and it just completely overshadowed everything else. Yeah. Well, that's so, we're talking about marketing here. I'm talking about the cigar itself. Like, like, like. No, I, I, call I, what I, it I, is. The but, cigar was not good. Like, it wasn't bad though. I don't want to say. Yeah. It was a, like it was no, it wasn't a say. dog racket. It wasn't unsmokable. It's not like the worst thing I've ever smoked in my life. But like, like each variation of this Casa Magna brand, which Aaron brings to to, to light here with this point about it, an outstanding line. It is the Colorado takes number one. It's smoking better than ever. The Liga F from last year was fucking incredible. It's smoking. It's smoking better than it was last year. The Connecticut hit for. Uh, I didn't have. It's not. I'm not stepping on my list, but it was not on there. But I enjoyed it a lot quite a bit um you know the domus magnus series like holy shit those were great like it just like i, I don't know it's like it's like one of these things does not belong and that like that's it <laughs> right yeah yeah, yeah. It, it, that's kind of what so, you know let's talk about the marketing part of domus magnus but it was almost kind of like it <laughs> kind of reminds me of like that that um that scene in tombstone where um the guy the the pharaoh game leader <laughs> is going to come out and shoot wide earth and yeah. you know, Doc Holiday walks out, says, "You know, John and Tyler." Yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, you Matt Cat, what you, you know, whatever. They start talking to Wyatt. Where you, and after a while goes, where you going with that says, shotgun? Yeah. Oh, Johnny, I forgot you was there. You may go now. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like that's the way this girl is. Yes. Oh, I forgot you were there. You may go. Oh. Because Thomas Mattis came out. You know, we kind of people just forgot about that one because that that blend was really really good and. Oscuro was kind of like just not. It was just kind of basic. I mean, it wasn't. My, I'm a coop. Wasn't bad. Great, great metaphor. The best part is coop's completely lost on this. No, no. Well, the white earth part, yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, but but yeah, <laughs> I am on that. Yeah. You know, the other weird thing about the Oscuro, that was the one Casada cigar. They did that with Placencia, but they actually made that one up in Honduras. That's the part. So that was that's the one mm-hmm. Casada cigar that's coming out of Honduras. Interesting. Yeah. Well, why don't we move over to Ben as we and we, we kind of dovetailed the discussion because Ben also had the Casa Magna Connecticut number one, uh, followed by the La Florida Dominicana Soli at number two, the High Clear Castle Senator, Senator. I'm not even gonna. I know, Senator. Senator. Is that right, Bear? I'm assuming Ben's right on that. Senator. 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 Oh, sir. Yeah. 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 
Uh, four was the Alec Bradley double bar leap, and five was the ace prime Maria Lucia. Yeah, this this I mean this lineup. I mean we so we I've smoked everything on here obviously except for the center. But this we didn't there was none, none of it right. Um, I I still stand behind this. This I mean obviously my post five was different, right? But all these cigars that I had on here all hit the mark, right? The Casa Magna came in just like I thought it would. A great extension to a line, you know, that, you know, needed something maybe a little bit more lighter bodied, but, you know, had a different flavor profile. And like Connecticut came in great. The Solace was freaking awesome. Dude, what a great like, cigar. Was, what a great cigar. Oh, my cigar God. Like, yeah. And it's, it's, so, it's so awesome to wear, you know, it, it's an it's a, a, a antithesis of the Lenox. And I swear to God, if you never smoke those two together, it's a hundred percent what they went for. That 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 cigar, but on its own, that I actually like that one more than I like the Lenox. I really like the, the Solace. It, it, it's such an outstanding. Like it's, I I'm waiting for my shop to get them in so I can buy a box of them. That's it was just such a really good cigar. It's it's so different than anything else they've got out. It's mm-hmm. I, you, you can't even compare it to another yeah. line because it's it's so different. You know, you um, got to give the kid credit. Lito Jr. did a hell of a job with that project. He really did. He, yeah. he knocked it out of the park. I mean, yeah. I, that was that was awesome. Yeah. And I could see, you know, when we were talking talking to Lito about it, he was proud of him, man. He, he should be, yeah, yeah. I yeah. Mean, he he was impressive to me uh, as a, he's a young man, like, and he's still in college. And to me, he just had so much poise and and uh, very mature. Uh, he's going to go a long way. And, and Tony's great, too. Tony's brother's great. Both those boys, are, the, the companies, the next generation of the Gomez family is going to do very well. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, off to number three, the Senator. It's that we didn't get a get a chance to smoke that one, but we saw it there. And it's, dude, the box, that thing is it's when, absolutely stunning. When you see it in person, it's like, wow. Yeah, I, I was impressed with it, too. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to try that. I will pay that money to at least try one. You know, I, I, at, at a minimum, I, I've got to try. I must have. I must have. I, I've got to try this. Um, the double broadleaf, I, I thought it was good. I thought it was actually one of the top cigars of the show. I, I mean, it was it was really, really good. It was. And I was worried about it, to be totally honest, because, you know, we've had other companies come out with, a, you know, Cigars that use a lot of broadleaf, you know, filler, binder, wrapper, even. And to me, it's overwhelming. It's like it's too much, too much broadleaf, you know. And I, that's what I was kind of on the fence about the broadleaf. Like, now I know this one, you know, they had all this mysterious you know, campaign going on about what this thing is coming in and the trade show, all this stuff. And then it comes out with the like, holy crap, double broadleaf. And you know, there's such a massive shortage of broadleaf, you know, it's kind of like, oh, well, they're doubling down. Hell with, we know it's a shortage, but we're, hell, we're putting two of them on this, in this cigar, you know. So, it, I was kind of like, I don't know, it's going to be good or bad. And, but it worked, man. I'd say it worked. It did. did a good job with it. It's not, it doesn't have that overly weird sweetness to it. It's, it's, it just, it works. It's smooth. It's actually a very smooth cigar. Um, and then Maria, the Maria Lucia, that will, it, it actually just exactly how, what I thought it would be. Honestly, it was, it was a really good cigar. Lashana did an amazing job with that cigar. I, I figured it would be honestly, um, out of all the releases that were coming, that guy kind of was lumping Ace Prime and Crown Heads together with their releases. And I was thinking, well, I don't want, I was actually looking forward to a lot of their stuff. But I was thinking, out of all cast, I, I stopped myself and said, right, wait, stop. Which one of these are you the most excited? Like, if you could pick one, which one would it be? And it was the Maria Lucia. Mm-hmm. And I thought out of the ones, all of them, because I, now I've smoked through all the samples we got from them, and that was my favorite one still. You know, it was a favorite one, of the, the first one that I had at the trade show, and it was still my favorite one today. So, I mean... I, the list, the list held up to me, and I was trying, I was trying to not do, you know, I was trying not to pick limiteds 
be honest, because I know Coop, you were trying to say, you know, let's kick, stick the core. Or you, you're, you're not us, but you were trying to say, let's. I want to try to stick the core, you know. And I was trying to do that for the most part, but it's like some of these, some of these limiteds, you know, were too exciting. Well, <laughs> so and and, and to that point, Ben, too, as we were talking about earlier, there was a lot of limiteds to choose from. We could have. I mean, there was a lot of yeah. limiteds released this year at the show. Right. And I did the yeah. same thing. I did the same thing. I stayed away from the limiteds only for what we talked about, just to kind of keep it on the path of is this cigar going to hold up in five years, in 10 years, whatever the case may be. And obviously if it's limited, you know, find it. Well, the yeah. Murillo Chia is in a limit. It's not an LE. It's, it's no, no. exclusive, but, but it is Luciano did say that's going to be, there's going to be more sizes coming to that. So that's right. Up. Right. It's yeah. a, it was, a, it was, a, it's a special release as of now to be a full blown line later. See when right. he did, so, yeah, when he did Sergeant last year, I think that was one and done. It's it's all, but this one he wasn't saying one and done with this one. I didn't love. The, I don't know about you guys. I I thought the Sergeant was fine. It's it's no Maria Lucia. Well, the you know, the Maria the the Sergeant is what the is excuse me the Maria Lucia, the Sergeant uh, is or the Maria Lucia is what the Sergeant is wants to be when it grows up. That's what it is. Yes. Yeah, I, I agree with yeah. that. It, to me, it's a more refined, well-aged yeah. sergeant. And I, and I like the sergeant, for the record. So, yeah. um, But that's that's exactly what the Maria Lucia I, is. I, I feel the same as Aaron. Like, I thought it was okay, but the Maria Lucia just blows it out of the water. Right. But so, anyway, what I was kind of saying about the limiteds, is like, when I was looking through the list, I was like, holy shit, there's so many freaking limiteds. It's like everybody's coming out with a damn limited. You know? I, mm -hmm. you know it was kind of irritating. To be totally honest. Yeah, yeah, it was. Well, that's supply yeah. chain too. You know, like these. You know, there's. I mean, it, it's hard. It's hard to release a core. Like I hear. I mean, th I think this is the first time that we're actually talking. Of, like, I think it's one of those like untold things that we're talking about. But like, what have we been hearing the last two years at these shows, at these trade shows, and then in, on these interviews when we have guests on? What are they talking about? Oh, the cigars are ready. The boxes, the labels, this. That it's all supply chain. So if I'm if I'm manufacturing something, like it's really hard for me to put a core line into the market, knowing that I'm gonna have to that I have yes I have you know fifty thousand, sixty thousand, hundred and fifty thousand, two hundred thousand cigars ready to go. But that means I have to have the assets to go with it. I have to have two hundred thousand boxes. Um, I had to have you know sixty thousand you know boxes. I have to have two hundred thousand labels. Like that that makes it really hard to put out a core line. Because the last thing you want to do is say, hey, here's my new core line. And then, shit, it doesn't come out till next April, you know, like some brands, you know, <laughs> or, 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 you know, and, and then it's only, and then it's only like, you know, a few boxes, you know, like, you know, I was talking to Cigar Hustler Mike about this on a, on a I'm not going to name names on the brand that he mentioned, but he like, he said, they, they said, hey, we've got this, you know, new core line. He's like, great, cool. I ordered. I, uh, something like 50 boxes and they're like well we can't give you all 50 now we can give you 20 like how disappointing is that for a retailer right you know to, to say hey i've invested in you in this core line that's supposed to be a staple on my shelf i believe in the product and you can't give it to them like that's 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 incredibly frustrating yeah i mean i i, I agree with all those points you're 100 percent right but we're the, but some of these companies were coming out with three or four limited editions i mean how about you come out with one and add a new core somewhere right else? no i i agree with you that. Know what I'm saying? i mean yeah. you have but you uh, but granted you do have some companies like espinoza right that came out with a bunch of limits as well but they had a lot of anniversary just kind of happen at the same time you know what i'm saying oh yeah so like so their their limits make like sense because of just the timing of them like they have two tenth anniversary, the limited, you know, knuckle sandwich, stuff like that. They just, it kind of, it, it, it's this is the anniversary. It's got to come out. A, a core would have got lost, and then they had the annual limiteds of Warhead and Seis Provincias. Right. So, so I, they, think, they I think were, they did the right move, not coming out with a core. Exactly right. But yeah. then there was some other companies that came out with just like three or four limited releases, and that's all they had. How about do one and come out with another core? Yeah. You don't. You don't have to come out with like five lines and a bunch of limited it's like it's i don't know i've never understood that like back in the day it was you you would come out with one or two cores and you might have an le thrown in way back in the day 
Yep. Now it's the other way around. It's like, yep. oh, oh, there's a core? Oh my God, when was the last time that happened? You know? Yep. Now it's different, all elites. Different, yep. uh, different, yep. uh, different era. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so Coop, you asked the question. So here's uh, here's here's everyone's weekly pronunciation guide. Okay, this uh-huh. is really this is really super simple. Remove the J from the new High Clare Castle. Senator is how you say it. Okay. So remove the J. Okay. Just don't and and then pronounce it. Senator. Yep. Senator. Yes. Senator. That's... Senator. Senator. Yep. <laughs> All right. There you go. All right. So, so the way the way I was hearing it at the booth, the way the guys were saying it was like it went, uh, and how I kind of remembered it, it, it sounded like senator, like senator, senator. Yeah. I mean that's that's I mean that's how I got it from from Nick when he pronounced it for me in the interview. So I didn't hear him say a J. So that's how I. Right. That's yeah. How, it's like I, I, I what it kept it in my head was like like senator, you know, the senator. Mm-hmm. Senator, Senate, Senator, whatever. All right, Bear, you're up. Yeah, so um, um, I was uh, really excited about some of these cigars. Still am. Uh, this is going to be pretty sad, guys, because uh, I've smoked only two on my list. Um, and um, I smoked the Maria Lucia. Um, yeah, as everyone knows, uh, Smoked a cup, smoked about, I think, smoked three of those at the show. Uh, and then I smoked the Bosphorus um, as well. That was handed out at the opening party. Uh, so smoked that as well. Uh, I, Carney handed me one of the Soli. Um, and uh, I've, I, I've been holding on to that like a treasured baby. So I wanted, I wanted to bring it back. I wanted to get it reacclimated before I smoked it. Um, holding on to it just for a little bit. I do this with La Florida Minicana. It's like, I love, I love La Florida Minicana. So like anytime I get a really good cigar from them, I tend to just make sure that I want to smoke it under like perfect, perfect condition and everything. I'm still super excited about it. I think the, I think the packaging was incredible. I think it lived up to it. It was really, it was really great sitting down uh, with Lido and talking to him about how his son put together that project along with him and Tony. It was just a, it was just a really, really great story. And I think it'll, it'll, it'll answer the hype. I'm, I'm excited. I'm still excited about the selected tobacco Alfonso, especially after speaking with, uh, with Nelson Alfonso and uh, particular Oliver who took us by the United booth through the United booth and through the selected tobacco booth. I really like the story that they're doing. Um, the, I love that the, the, the Nelson wasn't released this year. It's going to be released next year. Um, but I was, I was pretty, I, I don't know if you guys remember the story. I was pretty floored by the story, which was, I was like, okay, so the Alfonso is kind of in the lines uh, along the lines of like the Atabay and the Byron, right? It's in that class. Right. Um, but the Nelson, um, was a much more, uh, budget friendly cigar, more basic branding and everything. And I, and I, I asked Oliver why that was, and he, you know, and it was a great Nelson's answer gave. Yeah, it was a fantastic answer. Why well, Nelson wanted Alfonso is the family. It's it's not about Nelson. It's about his family, and so he wanted that elevated to the um, to the level of like the Atabay and the Byron. And the Nelson is reflect is you know reflective of Nelson's personality, which is just you know he um, you know he's a he's a, he's one co- you know he's one cog in the in the in the machine of of you know, his family's legacy and stuff. So I thought that was, I thought that was really poignant and really beautiful. Um, really excited to, uh, to smoke the cigar. I don't know. Can't answer that question that I asked, which was how does, how do you build on the standouts like Atabay and Byron? We'll see if uh, all the Alfonso is it. I've gotten some pretty good feedback on it um, as well as the Soli. Um, so I'm, I'm chalking up the Bosphorus to the trade show thing. Um, you know, I, uh, you know, it's, it seemed like it seemed a little dried out. It seemed like a little Vegas, <laughs> a little bit. Uh, but, you know, I, I do have a, my palate does have a propensity for a lot of stuff that, that Luciano does. Um, and I was really excited to see Tim's take on it. Uh, now I did have the pie synesthesia when I got back and that cigar is incredible. Uh, so really enjoyed that. Um, but the Maria Lucia for me um, was the, um, was the cigar for me, was the cigar of the show for me. Cause I really, I mean, I smoked three of them. It's fantastic. It's amazingly well-balanced. 
it's got strength it's got flavor um it's just so it's just so well done uh i'm i really really love that cigar uh and didn't have a chance to get the 10th uh, we we got some of the florida Centilli's 10th anniversaries haven't smoked it yet um but i'm still did really you, excited did about you it get the well. 10th anniversary or you get the or you get the cien años of the of the Michael oh Robert. yeah i did yeah i get the Lubitsch. i don't Sorry. yeah, the yeah we didn't get it we way. didn't get either incredible cigar i did i just sent i sent one to nielsen too because he wasn't there when we went to that booth because i want him to sm- i think that that was Barry. you're gonna love that cigar wait did awesome. we get we got both didn't we i only re- i'll have to i'll have to look i know we did i know i know i did we got the <laughs> i know i did no no, no. I, th- I think we got both I'm okay sure. you guys can fat you guys can check that out um I guess he might have had told, less, and he might have only given us two, and so like Ben and I got I, one. I told I told these guys to take it. Yeah, so that's fine. Hey, when is the um? So we were talking about the the labels you and the the tenth anniversary. When are those available for release, or when are they going to be out? I haven't seen them yet. If they're out, uh, uh, I think they said I think they said the fall. Yeah, I think they okay. said the fall. I think yeah. Florida Santias is going to be late fall, though. I think it's going to be like a November release. Yeah, it's going to be almost like Christmas time. But like, uh, I kind of went backwards here. But like, the, the whole point of my list or the way that I kind of approached this was I, I really looked at a mixture of both like cigars that would have an impact to come, but also who had that had a historical impact on the industry. And like, my whole thing was about like, how does Ace Prime? make this list if you're looking at like like historical impact over all the years uh and and my answer to that is this like i mean i mean coop ben you guys are you guys are the ogs have you seen anyone in four years make an industry impact of what luciano ace prime has done across their own brands across their alliance with crowned heads i mean has anyone well, done what they've done well, in four and, years? And to, piggy, to piggyback off of that bear, though, too, in, in the four years, I mean, they have put out, he has put out a bunch of cigars. I mean, this yeah. is not like rolling out two lines and then all of a sudden they're doing extensions on these lines. I mean, he's put out what, six, eight, ten, I, whatever the number is. I mean, he's put out a lot of not only good yeah. cigars, but a lot of them. La Polina had a hell of a start. But then kind of like from 2010 oh, yeah, to 13, but then I, I kind of feel they fell off the rails. Um, the yeah. They didn't keep it. They didn't keep it up. I mean, but the, the, you right through Mr. Sam, they were knocking them out of the park when they came. But but I'd say Luciano is a little different because he's been in control of the process that he's doing here. It's it's a, it, you're, it's a different animal. I mean, so Ace Prime's coming in, and they're you know they're got their own stuff, but they're also making stuff, you know, for Crown Heads, and, you know. They're so they came in more, and not just a cigar company. They came in with a factory, you know, cigar company with the, their own factory, right? So they kind of they came in with a lot of a lot of oomph behind them. So, but. Uh, I mean, I don't really, I can't think of another one that came in quite like they have in quite a long like time. Like vertically integrated, like you're saying. Right, yeah. exactly right. There's, yeah. I mean, you, we've had a lot of people come bust on the scene, but they're, you know, they're having other people make their cigars. Yeah. You know, but they're coming in with their own stuff. And it's, yeah, I mean, so the La Point example is they would not, they don't have a factory and they use a bunch of different manufacturers and they put four pretty good cigars out in four years, I think. Um, but yeah, Jay Davis mentioned Pepin back in the day, which is a pretty good, pretty good analogy. Yeah, Pepin comparison. and Pete, you could say Pete as well. Um, certainly. Um, so let me kind of just before I do my list, let me explain why I went with the regular production stuff. So for years, I did this list, and the idea of this list was let's let me try to figure out which cigar is going to sell out at the trade show. And Ben kind of just nailed the, the reason why I changed it, right? Because it used to be you come out with core lines and a bunch of limited editions, and then people figured out, hey, if I have to come out with something at the trade show, it's much easier to come out with a limited edition. So we started seeing this, inf- this increase in limited editions. And a limited edition is very easy to sell out at the trade show. So I kind of felt that now it was just becoming pick the limited edition that's going to sell out the quickest and 
I, I said it needs to, I want to take a step back with it. So really what I challenge everyone to do is tell me a cigar that's going to have an impact three or four years from now. And I think all you guys did a really good job, even with the limited you guys talked about, are cigars that people may be talking about three or four years from now, right? I just said, all right, you know what? I'm going to stick to regular production this year. Um, my five were, and I'll talk, I want to talk a lot about my number one, uh, Cuba Aliados uh, Original by Oliva, the Foundation Olmac Claro, the Casa Magna Connecticut, the Alec Bradley Double Broadleaf, and the Tatawahe Veracu Blue. Did I say that right, Bear? No. Uh, yeah, you, met, you left out the middle, but yeah, I mean, Havana, Havana, <laughs> six. Havana 6. I did, yes, I did. Okay. Okay. Um, so let me guys kind of, uh, I'll address the, the, the Cuba Aliados. Um, I put that at number one for impact because this was a very popular brand in its day. And this generated a lot of debate on our internal chat. I thought Oliva was the missed story by 90% of the media at the trade show. I think Charlie and us were the only two media outlets that even mentioned Oliva in their coverage, right? Yeah, but and if it, that was the only part of your argument, you would be right, but you well, kept going. But I thought it was, okay, I'm kind of, I'm meshing it in there, okay? But I think Oliva is a key, they're a key company, and this is a key project. We talked to the guy behind this project at the trade show, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this is a big direction they're going in, right? And we know if you if you know how retailers order from Oliva, they tend to buy a lot at the trade show. So I went with the uh, there were two Cuba Aliado cigars. It was the original, and then there was the uh, the EPC version. Uh, the original is the one being made by the Aroas, Julio Aroa, and the other one's being made by Ernie. I went with this one, um, and this one hasn't hit the stores yet. Okay, the Ernie one has hit the stores. This one hasn't hit the stores yet. Do I think it was a good number one pick? I think the jury's out for a couple of reasons. Okay. Um, one is I did, I, 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 it didn't make my top five coming out of the trade show and I did smoke it. It was good, but it wasn't like, maybe I had higher expectations than that. I didn't see the buzz because none of the media covered this cigar, right? The media just, none of the media chose to go to the, they, I heard every excuse why they didn't cover Oliva, right? But they didn't cover Oliva, right? We would, so I think that hurt because there wasn't a lot of media buzz about this. And so, so I don't think this one ended up as a good number one pick, in my opinion. I don't regret making the pick, but um, it, I think there's going to be some work to put this to build this brand up. So um, I'm willing to say give it a little time too um, on that. But the cigar was good. It just, it just uh, the number two pick. I didn't smoke the Claro, the Olmac, but I smoked the Maduro. And my goodness, what a cigar that is! Um, that is everything you want in a San Andreas cigar. Uh, Nick knocked that one out of the park. I didn't smoke the Claro, and I'm hearing the Claro is better than the Maduro. Uh, but to me, that was a home run by 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 Nick Morello. Anyone who had Nick Morello out for dead before the trade show bear, um, <laughs> you, right? Who said sell? I don't know if you said. Oh, wow, that's an up, exaggeration on my commentary. Okay. But okay, so, sure. So we were on a dojo show on buy sell a hold, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, we were Keep on buy. And, all right. And Foundation comes up, and Eric and Jordan are ready to unload their stock. Bear, I don't know if you said hold. All right, that's why I'm kind of – but you didn't have – I was. Oh, I said sell. I did. You said sell. They're all selling, and I said, I'm buying, guys. This is Nick Malolo we're talking about here. This is a guy who like, – Aaron Nielsen smokes a cigar every day. This guy knows how to make a Guilty. cigar. All right? I'm buying, and, and hell, this cigar comes out, and I'm like, man, I can't wait to do the stock market show next year. Uh, because I have some big dividend checks I'm going to be collecting. This guy's going to yeah. sell a lot. Too. This guy, people talked about it, who had it. It's going to be a big hit for them. I, this was a, this pick was a good pick, I thought. But I should have I should have just said Olmac like Aaron did, not made Claro or Maduro. So I technically had it wrong because I said Claro, but um, I have to just say I had it wrong. But I think this guy's going to be a big hit. All right, so I'll, I'll defend my position for one second on this. Uh, okay. First of all, I didn't have him out for dead. Um, so that's a little slight exaggeration <laughs> on my comments. Uh, but I will, I will say this. Like, at the time of the show, uh, Olmec was not in our vocabulary. No, no one knew. Was there was no, there was, we didn't, no one knew what Nick was the doing. The Manalik extent, line extension was yeah. not. In our, the, 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 even the Matcha Raton wasn't out. It wasn't, no. hadn't been announced yet. So, like, 
Yeah, I mean, at the time, contextually, yeah. I mean, it it didn't seem it didn't seem like the the worst the worst game because that's what it is. It's a gamble, gamble. right? Right. It didn't seem like the worst gamble in the world. But I will tell you, I will say this too. Um, you know, to go back to what you were talking about with the Cuba Aliados, uh, uh, Cuba. Like, I'll look. I'll fall on my sword here even harder on on this one because I got to be honest with you. I really feel uh, I want to apologize to you and to the guys and to our audience on this. I could have done way better on that interview. I enjoyed so it. It was a great, was you really did a great good. job. You did a great but, job. Not, but, not he, but, yeah. but here's, here's, here's a big miss. Here's a big question that I missed. And this is a question worth asking and a question right. that we deserve an answer on. Okay. Legendary bland, a uh, brand historical, um, you know, historical brand, you know, almost iconic in a lot of ways. What's up with the Leva's decision? Look, I love the Iroas. They're fantastic. I know, I know, I know a question you're asking. Yeah. Why are you moving a cigar that was manufactured in the Dominican to Honduras? Well, I, get the Ernie you mean, I get the Ernie connection. I get the Ernie connection. Vice versa. You mean vice versa, Honduras? Yeah, vice versa. Right. Excuse me. He, he hit on it a little in the interview, but because he talked about Aliados meaning alliance, and then he talked about a little of um, – he tied it back to Rolando Reyes' journeys a bit. Like he had a connection with Ernie, and then he moved his stuff, and he had the connection. He with did. Ernie. I could have done a lot so, better, though. I, I know what you're saying. I know you say. That's why I really wouldn't fault you on. I think Oliva is. I think Oliva is trying to diversify a bit more. Is what they're trying to do more than anything. It was a little surprising that they did. I could see them maybe doing a project with Ernie as a one-off because Ernie's doing a project with them, with the Allegiance. I could see them doing that one-off just as. But for Coraline and nothing against the Aroas, I'm just I was a little surprised that this is not coming out of the Oliva factor. But I, I bear I wouldn't. That's a, you know we have five to ten minutes for these interviews, so I wouldn't. It, you're fine with that. My that's I'm I'm being honest with you. Yeah, I'm not just saying that. I, honestly, it was a good interview. He did hit it a bit. But I know the question you wanted yeah. to ask. The question you wanted to ask is why why not do it at Oliva, right? That's the big question. Yeah, I just, you know, I tried, I tried to, and I think, I think, I think everyone on this panel and our audience can vouch for that. Like, I try to keep bias out of a lot of these interviews. Um, you have to, or else you just yeah. miss things. Uh -huh. And this is an example of, of bias getting in and me missing it because yeah. I, I, I just, you know, Coop, you're, you're, you're all about this story and everything. And I think it's a very important story. I just didn't have it that high up. I just don't think it. I don't think it's as significant as as you were we, saying we, it is. We we are. And that, I'm thing. saying that respectfully to Oliva yeah. because I think it is exciting for them to have these brands again. I'm just, I don't we, know. We were arguing this story a lot in an internal chat. I don't, Aaron, you were on that chat, which is probably not a bad thing, because that chat, <laughs> that, right? Right. Yeah. But but I think you know Ben and I were taking the position this was an important story. Ben maybe didn't have it as high as I did. But certainly he thought it was an important story. And then there were there was another faction who thought this was not an important story at all. I think, Bear, you were somewhere in the middle, I'll say. But Well, but, Ben was more in the middle. I was more on the other side of it. Ben, yeah, you know. but but there was some saying it didn't even belong on a list of important stories. Which okay, is, I wasn't, I wasn't that far. I wasn't no, that that's, far. That, that position is ridiculous. That was ridiculous, yeah. Yeah, Cuba Aliado is making a return. It's a big deal. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't yeah. care you are. Yeah, you, yes. look, you want to say it's not in the top five? I, I agree, but to say it's not important. It's a, and, that, and that's why I'm like, uh, I was really surprised that a lot of our, our brethren in the cigar media did not even try to cover this story. And I, I've talked to a couple of them. And they're like, yeah, you know, like, you know, uh, you know, we didn't know who to talk to at Oliva. I'm like, well, we started from the ground up. We, we went to reps and worked our way up and we got to the right person. Very pretty. And they were pretty accommodating for us. He was a little busy. I think he was on a phone call with Europe when we were trying to get him, but we got him. We certainly got the guy. Yeah. He was happy to do it. He was, he was very happy. Yeah. He yeah. was happy. But, yeah. You know, this is what I, this is what I say. Right. So whenever I was in our internal chat, where we're talking about this, I said, you know, people were saying like, Oh, it's, it's not a big deal. Who really cares? Okay. How long have you been smoking cigars, right? Because us old timers, right? Was, Cuba yeah. Aliados was a huge, Deal, huge yeah. brand back in the day. Yes. You know? So so this coming back is it's a big deal. It's like yeah. you know, Elvis making his return to Vegas. Yeah. You know, maybe not 
that's kind of that, that's crazy comparable. But it, it was right saying, up like, there with Oz coming back. It was right up there with Oz coming back at, at CAO for Whoa. me. Wow. Okay. But but this was a I smoked a lot of these. I mean, Ben, we smoked a lot of these. Yes. Brands. This was this. They were a major one of the top major yeah. uh, cigar companies out there when they were hit. I mean. The, the, bigger cigar than Pura Indios, though. You think Pura India? I think Pura Indios is bigger than Cuba Aliados. I remember it that way. I'm oh, putting the, I'm putting the whole three of them. I'm putting I'm putting both of them in the same bucket, though. Okay. Yeah, the, it were kind of it was kind of the yeah just one was one was real mild, one was much stronger. Yeah, and this is and, and Pura Indios we know is coming. They said it's coming, so of course, yeah, yeah they're, they're yeah. about the brand. They're going to do something yeah. with it, for sure. And, yeah, and, I, and that will be a big deal too. When that comes out, that's going to be a big deal. You know. It's just it's it's just people that remember that back in the day. It's a big deal, but you yeah. have a lot of a lot of our other other friends and you know the media got people that don't don't cover. It's not a big deal because they're newer to the industry. They don't they don't really know. They don't remember that, and that, I think that's a good point know, too. Yeah, they don't know about how big they were back in the day. It was the, the first cigar boom. Yeah, right. I, yeah. Can, I consider it's coming out the golden age of the cigar now, but the original cigar boom then Cuba Aliados is one of the kings. Yeah, yeah, so absolutely. That's why we consider it a big deal, really. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just a couple of other notes. I think we talked about Casa Magda, Connecticut. I'm going to talk more about that uh, when I show you the finalists. I think we talked about Alec Bradley Double Broadleaf as well. Um, and look, uh, Tatawahe with the Veracruz Blue, um, I thought it was a fantastic. I was surprised none of you guys had it on the list. Um, to be honest with you, but I think when we show our reveal of what our best cigars were, I think clearly you guys recognize that was a great cigar. Look, look, Ben. Ben spends his days being a homer for the Braves. Man, he didn't want to. He didn't want to be a total homer when it came to this list. Man, got to so give what, him what, respect to that. So, so Coop is basically saying. I told you guys, you guys are idiots that you didn't put yeah. it on your list. That's what I heard. I mean, that's exactly what I heard, man. Yeah. Fine. Yep. No. It's fine. I, I, I eat a little, I eat a little bit of crow on the, on the next page, so it's all good. Yep. Uh, all right. So let's talk about what we came out of the trade show with. Um, While you're bringing that up, Coop, how, well, how's everyone's cigar smoking? What, how's everyone? What's, what's, uh, how, what's the status? Uh, Aaron, are you on to like your third cigar right now? Uh, you know, Bear, I, the sar- sarcasm will get you nowhere, but in full <laughs> transparency, um, I've moved on and I've taken the band off because it's a short band, but I'll do the best I can. Speaking of Tatawahe, I went with the Tatawahe and I'll butcher G-110 the name. Texla? No, G110 Texla. Yep, exactly right. Texla. Yep. Mm-hmm. So that's what I, I've got two more here because I know it's going to be a long night. I've, I've sprayed to all fields with the uh, cigar selection. So I moved on from the 1910 to the Tatawahe. How was it? How was the cost of 1910? It was good. You know what? It was good. Um, it, I, I think that that cigar will actually improve with age, but I think for my initial uh, entree into this line, I thought he's, I, I could see myself going back to it. Ben, what about you? Um, I'm actually about to be done with the Byron. It was a huge cigar. Um, I, it's like a, I think it was like a seven by 52. It's a big sucker. Yeah. You so were like already in like three quarters of an inch when we started, like you were already in. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm actually looking through my box now. It has a lot of samples of the trade show in it. And I'm, I'm actually what I'm leaning towards right now, to be totally honest, my father, there you go. So it beats you 100 audios. I think yeah. I'm about to smoke oh, that. Oh yeah. I'm telling you, I think you, uh, won't be disappointed. Yeah, if I, went, actually, if I went regular production, if I didn't go regular production, it would have been on my top five. I went regular production. That's why it wasn't there, but easily would have been probably in the top three. Yeah, this, the, the Le Bichu line is, is probably my favorite of, the, of the, my father lines out of all of them. So, yeah, Agreed. I was excited about this. The Four Day Less Achilles yes. was one that was it's always been close to my heart because I, I love I love that line, but and I, I could have swore we got one of those. I could have swore we did, but it's not in this box. But I got one more set of samples, a sample bag that's in my office, and it might be in there. But anyway, I'm about to light this thing up. Coop, what about you? How's that uh, that sixty? It's all. I mean, it's, it's great. I'm enjoying. I love the A blend. I think it's good in the Gordo. 
um, performing really well. Just great combustion on this cigar uh, as well. Wonderful flavors. I guess kind of these, these oaky flavors, a little bit of natural tobacco. Um, it's kind of in the medium range uh, with strength and body. Uh, you know, like I mentioned, I, I still would probably reach for the Churchill before this one, but this is, uh, you know, if you're a six by 60 fan, you're going to, you know, and you want the experience of the McAuliffe A in the Churchill in a, in a bigger format, this is going to do you just fine. So I'll tell you the, the Gordo for me in that blend, I, I, I do, I do enjoy it. It's the third on the list for me. I, but what, here's what I really like about why I like the Churchill more is it has the Churchill has this really beautiful sweetness to it. It's almost like a cherry cordial. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, and, I, yeah. And you lose that, you lose that a little, a little bit, bit in the bigger gauge. But, but again, this is, you, you don't lose it entirely is what I'm going to say. No, either. no, it's just not as decadent. That's all. No, no, but I mean, this is, I tell you this, you know, this is perfect for someone who does like a big ring gauge cigar and you want a, a very good premium smoke. Um, yeah. I've been just so impressed with this line. Um, like I said, the Gordo, like, and I'm a Gordo guy, right? But I still like that Churchill better. But I would say if you're a Gordo smoker to get this cigar, I mean, I would obviously easily do it. So, uh, so yeah, definitely um, v- very, very good experience I'm having with it. Um, and I'm smoking at a reasonable pace. I think this is a lot more tobacco than I'm smoking than you guys had. So I'm about halfway down on it. You are also by far the slowest smoker. And I'm the slow, yes, and I'm the yes. slowest smoker. That is true. And apparently, according to Bear, I'm the fastest. So I'll, I'll be on my like ninth cigar here when we wrap up the show. So that's fine. The fastest smoker I know is Tim Wong. That guy can go through like 18 yeah. cigars in a day. He does. A, he goes through 18 cigars a day, man. He really does. And I've seen him do it in Nicaragua, by the way. Jesus. And it's not like he, he just smokes fast, is all I'm going to tell you. He's a fast smoker. I do have a friend that will smoke an LFT digger in 35 minutes. That's fucking insane, man. Well, well That's we just insanity. You know, one I know. Of, one You're not of, even enjoying it at that point. You know what I'm saying? The what great, are you doing? The greatest moment, though, uh, Victor Van Pelt, we give him a uh, a uh, mistress. Mistress. Quarter extension mistress. Uh, and I, I forget if it was a Toro or a Robusto. It may have been a Robusto. And we had a speed smoking contest. And Victor almost killed himself in that contest. So he puked, uh, that's a strong cigar. Well, he here's the deal: if you you heave, you leave, right? But he heaved after the contest was over. Yeah, he were uh, he wanted he he, he, they, he wanted some water, and the water just was the worst thing for him. The water was the worst thing in the world. It's like, dude, it's it's the it's the it's the, a- the killer Eric, for anything spicy food. Man, you, drink, never, you drink milk, man. You drink milk and you eat bread. You don't drink water. Yeah. And that was it. No more contests, Eric. After that, it was on a palooza for us. <laughs> Cause, yeah, because um, all um, the guys who shouldn't have gotten sick. Victor actually, you know, he he is. I, I don't want to say he's in bad health, but he's had a couple of health issues. And and actually, he was the one guy we, I I didn't want that to happen to. So, old school tip: if you start having nicotine sickness, eat or drink sugar. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Fanta, Coke, man. Orange Coke, Fanta. chocolate, something, anything yeah. with yeah. a shit ton of sugar. Yep. That's what you want. Not water. Yep. I just do that any anyway. Just I, I just I preemptive and just pound down sugar. Yep. Uh, but uh, competing with your buddy who smokes that digger in record time, which is just insane. We did we did have a chance to speak uh, to uh, former All Pro uh, Leon Cersei at the Howard G booth, and he big talked about Leon smoking the big Cersei, which is about that digger size. He smoked it in an hour. We all like nearly died. Yeah, I think he did it under. I thought it was like he said fifty five minutes. He said fifty five minutes. Yeah, <laughs> and they, and I was they, like, they, they they had to convince him to make a what a six by fifty eight, right? Yeah. Uh, because basically they had to tell him like, yeah, Leon, you like that cigar. We want you to sell a lot more cigars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, so they made, yeah. The <laughs> but they every day. <laughs> hey, hey, just, which, okay. I was like, just speaking on hit that man's size. Oh, but, like, so I'm, I'm six, two with large hands. Right. I, it was almost like a, a Deadpool when he loses his hand and he's got that little baby hand. That's what my hand was like when I was shook his hand. It was catcher's mitts, man. It was unbelievable. Oh god, it was. It it was. uh, He's a large individual. Dude, can you imagine him putting like you're 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 a a, you're a linebacker or safety just coming around the corner and that guy puts his hands on you, 
shit. Oh my God. Like, that was the oh. funnest booth. To me, that what, was the what funnest a, what, booth we what did. A, what a yeah. great time. I, I, I got to agree. They were all great. Uh, Ike and Howard and Rachel as well. I got to agree. So, that, I, that was a great booth we went to. So I told Ike, and I told, and I, and you know, look, we were given Bear some grief about his, his love for Howard G. Um, but I have had the opportunity, like a lot of us, have, have met famous people, whether it's an athlete or musicians or actors or whatever the case may be. And I had a conversation with Ike and I pulled him aside and I said, look, I've had the opportunity to meet a lot of, of individuals like yourself that are played professional sports. He was one of the most genuine, nice guys yeah. I have ever met. Yeah. I am a huge Ike Hillier fan. Now I'm going to go back and watch some old clips of him because um, we just had a great conversation and I'll, I, not that I don't want to bore the audience, but real quickly, I asked him, because I, I do this when I meet athletes, I always like to ask them, whether it's baseball or football or whatever, golf or whatever sport it is, it's, I always ask them, who's the best player you ever went up against? Because people don't realize when you're professional, I, you know, you're good. When you get to that level, like you're really good. So when you talk to people about who's the best they've ever gone up to, uh, gone up against, obviously high praise from a fellow individual that's got that much talent. So I asked like Hilliard, I said, who's the best wide receiver you ever went up against? He was like, well, I practice every day, Antonio Brown. I said, all right, well, take Antonio out of it because he's your teammate on the field. Who'd you go up against? He goes, he thought for a second. He goes, you know what? Ocho Cinco. He goes, that guy, he goes, not only was he fast, but he was quick. He goes, some guys are quick. Some guys are fast, but Ocho Cinco was the best player I ever went up against. And that, that kind of surprised me, but shout out to, the former Cincinnati Bengal, Ocho Cinco. Yep. Well, oh, be- yeah, that, I, I enjoyed both. But both Ike Taylor and Leon Searcy were just such genuinely nice guys. But I'll never forget when we're, we, all were t- <laughs> we were all taking that group photo, right? And I was standing by Ike, and he put his arms around me, and I, like, jumped. He's like, whoa, what happened? I said, <laughs> Look, I've watched you on TV enough where you put people in the hospital when you get them. <laughs> you know? And I watched you in college. He got like, hit, yeah. When you, when you just that put my arm around me, it just scared the shit out of me, yeah. man. I'm sorry. <laughs> it, just, it was just instinct. He started laughing, man. It was, that was, but that, that boot was fun as hell, man. Let me tell you. Those cigars, like Bear and I have been telling us how good those cigars were. Yeah. Dude, he, he was not full of shit no. and i'm telling you it was those cigars were really good too so yeah, that's that was what i was one of my favorite booths because those everybody there was just so cool it was it was almost like it, they made us feel like we had been friends forever yes it was like family yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah like we were yeah. a family like we were just getting together for like a sunday dinner kind of like yeah come on let's all hang out and talk and you know it was it was so good and then the cigars they all gave us samples man the samples were the that they gave us the ones that I had was awesome. Yeah. Like the Howard G Cameroon, which is the one Bear said he thought I would like the most. Dude, that, that cigar is legitimate. Cam- yeah, legitimate. Yeah. So good. You yeah. know, what's funny is like, so Big Leon's on the right side of the booth, right? And right next, and the booth's right next to him are the hustler guys. Like, you know, so all I kept thinking is, you know, the hustler guys with their hijinks, right? Is there a point where they just annoy Big Leon to the point, you know, where Leon stands up and, <laughs> and you know, Mike's not a, Mike's a, you know, Mike's, Mike's, uh, Mike's racked. I mean, he's ripped yeah, rather. He's, yeah. So, yeah. But I was like, but I small. don't know. I think <laughs> even with Big Leon, he, he probably run. <laughs> so. Look, you know, one, you know, one of those offensive lab of moves is they do that shimmy, they slap you on the head, yeah. on the top of the head, right? To, to, to the defensive lineman or whatever. Dude, even at, at Leon's age right now, dude, I, dude, I would yeah. not want that at even no half speed. Way. Not even at half speed, dude. No Again. way. No way. I, got, I got to be honest. I'm glad he sat for the interview because if he had I, stood up, that would have just been a little too imposing for me. So here's what we got to do. We got to get Lomas <laughs> to review the big Cersei, right? And then come to the booth next year. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Hey, boy, hey, this is the guy that gave you an oh, average. Four, four. Yeah, an average. An average. <laughs> what do you, you think? Uh, you you would um, uh all right so let's get to uh how we did with these lists we could probably go through these a little quicker um yeah. all right so all right. aaron yep your turn now yours turned out different and you had so let me before we kind of start this right all right 
we heard from the Espinosa people they weren't on the on the on the on the first list. I think I, I think it's in full disclosure. We 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 were we found out from right. <laughs> so like, where was Espinosa yep. on these? There's a, there's a little chatter. Yes, there was a little chatter on this, right? Yep. Yes. Yep. So, so okay. Yep. And that, yep. I a little, say, a little I want, good a little good natured ribbing from our. I'm going to say that yes. none of this influenced any. I'm being totally honest. I don't think anyone was influenced by that. By the way, just so you know. So, no. But uh, yep. I want to pay him full disclosure. No. So, right. Uh, yep. And I'm going to talk. So we've got a segment coming up about you know good poor needs help type type, and I'll talk a little more about this. But I thought so. We'll, we'll go run down. So we talked about the Alec Bradley. Uh, the, the double broadleaf. I thought from a, to, to echo what Ben was saying, you know, that could have gone horribly wrong uh, using that much broadleaf. <laughs> and it was, it, it was, it was a cigar that I actually smoked multiple times at the show. So I'm looking forward to, to getting that um, in my hands when it, when I can get it. Um, I thought it from a show sample, I thought it was, outstanding i really think that it's one of the the best cigars that alec bradley has put out um so i had put that and i put that one um because of i don't know if it was the best it wasn't actually the best of my list but i put it one because of what they accomplished with the double broadleaf um and so was really impressed by that cigar we talked a little bit about the the maria lucia um i just thought you know, knocked out of the park with just the the packaging, what how it smoked, the, the flavor profile. Now I'm gonna loop or I'm gonna put both of the Espinosa cigars in. I, I thought both of them were probably my contention for the best cigars I smoked at the show. Um, I actually smoked the tenth at the show, and it was on recommendation from you guys. Said go find Hector, get that tenth anniversary. It was it was unbanded. So um, he was sitting there with uh, Jack Toronto and, you know, Hector was like, oh, you know, Aaron, you might have some burn issues with this and, you, you know, it, it, you might have some problems with it. And Jack's like, look, I'm smoking this thing right now. It's smoking great. I smoked I, that 10th anniversary is outstanding. It is. So let me, let me jump in on that one too. Right. So this is where Aaron and I have a little bit of a story too. At the same time, that the Carlito story was going on that Barry Coop were just talking about. I went, I walked over there trying to find where they were because I had just left Espinosa booth and Hector gave me this unbanded cigar and I just lit it up and I was talking to him and Gavin, our rep for North Carolina and stuff. And we were, I was like, Oh my God, this cigar is awesome. What the hell is this? He said, Oh, that's the Espinosa 10. I said, Holy shit, dude, this is fantastic, man. He said, yeah, I know. I tried to tell people. We just don't have bands. We're not handing them out to anybody. Because nobody, we don't, you know, we don't have the stuff. So I go try to find, because y'all have all left now. I don't know where y'all went. So I start just heading up the aisle, and I see Aaron standing there. And I'm like, I said, hey, where are the guys? Oh, they're, they're trying to give Carlito a award, but he's one around. So I'm just kind of hanging out here. I said, no, no, no. Go over there. Go, go run over <laughs> there. Go talk to Hector. And say you want that tenth Espinosa, go go get it real quick before he, he gets up and walks off. Yeah. So he goes over there, does that, does that, and I probably go find them. And they're you know, Bear and, and Cooper over there talking to George Padron and Carlito and Jeff Warshawitz, and we're sitting back there enjoying <laughs> these tenth anniversary. Just thinking, oh my god, this cigar is awesome. Yeah, the whole time, it, not even thinking about we should go get. Go get yeah, I, was, I was too. I was too much in in enjoying that tenth anniversary. I mean, and and Ben, you called it out. I mean, it it was probably the best cigar. Look, I, you're, you're splitting hairs right now at this point. You're kind of trying to do a little bit of a revisionist history here, but the tenth anniversary was outstanding. And then that that knuckle sandwich chef special, absolutely fantastic as well. So. Was. I thought from yeah. a and we'll we'll talk again about the the show that Espinosa had, but those two cigars, um, absolutely phenomenal. And then I actually just I know surprising. Here we go. I got a box of the the Veracruz Blue. We should have it tomorrow. Um, I thought <laughs> that from I, I didn't know what to expect um, because I you know I remember the the older if you will the the older Veracruz line. I smoked it. 
liked it, did, but didn't like gravitate towards it. The blue is really, really good. And so box worthy for me. And I, I think that if I look back now and if, you know, a month, six weeks, whatever it is after the show, I'm, I really like my list of, of what I, I have coming out of the show so far. Again, haven't smoked the Olmec. There's a couple I haven't smoked yet. So I can only comment on what I've had. And those are the top five best cigars I had at the show. Yeah, I grabbed a 10th later on too in that day. And yeah, I, I, I concur with everything that's been said about it. I thought it was, I thought it was pretty immaculate um, as well. Didn't make my list. Um, and I'll, I'll explain why here in a second, but that was, that but, was stellar. And I also, of course, texted Hector and said, you know, great job on this, hoping that Hector would get the hint that I need more samples, but he didn't yes. send me any yet. So we'll see. That's her. It's her. It's her. All right. Let's kind of go up to Ben. Yeah. So I, kind of the same situation with, with Aaron, like the knuckle sandwich chef special was the best cigar I had at the show. I, it was it was it was stunning. I also when I had it though, so John, cigar surgeon from Developing Palettes, had where was making his coffee every morning in in the compound, right? And it was some of the best coffee ever. And I was actually it got up that morning. He had already had had the coffee ready for me and the stuff. I got it, and I go out there to, to smoke that chef special because Hector told me. Smoke it in the morning when you get up with your coffee because I think it'll be really good. Man, I'll tell you what, that was one hell of an experience, dude, because that just, it was so freaking rich and flavorful and good. It was so awesome. The 10th anniversary could easily have been here, but the reason I didn't do that is just because they weren't giving it out to people, wouldn't really showcase at the show, you know, so I, and I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want to put two of the same company on my list. Because it was hard to be honestly to get five cigars on here, because I, I there was so I was several that I want to put on here, right? The Maria Lucia, we've we've talked about that enough. We know why that's on there. Same with the Casa Magna, Connecticut. It's exactly what I thought it was going to be. It was fantastic. It tasted amazing. I can't wait to buy a box. Now, the one that barely. With, it was basically number six on my pre PCA show list, and the one that apparently we've been pronouncing wrong forever is because uh, it, so coming soon. I'm not sure when to when you're going to post it, but we have the Tatawahi video coming out soon, probably this weekend. So Pete, yep. we talk about how the how the properly pronounced is uh, Veroku. Veroku. That's how you pronounce it, right? So, anyway, this cigar was—it was—it barely just missed my list going in. I really wanted to put on there, but like I kind of didn't want to be a homer because <laughs> everybody knows I'm a tat whore. So I kind of didn't want to. Kind of, kind of knocked it off a little bit. But dude, that cigar was awesome. It's so freaking good. I, I, I'm, I'm getting a box. This, that's a that's a box for this cigar. Patina Sumatra, that one we got there with a lot of buzz everybody would get walking up to us hey have you tried the, the patina yep. sumatra and i was like no i haven't tried it yet but get over there we get over there and we get some samples dude that day is all, that's another box worthy cigar every 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 one of my list so i've already pre-ordered a box of the chef special espinoza 10th i've already got boxes ordered with my shop so when they're, when they're released i have boxes waiting on me for Roku Blue, I'm getting a box of so Connecticut, Casa you know, that's going to happen. Ray Lucia, bought a box. Sumatra, it's in here. And the reason I haven't bought a box by my local shop yet is because I've got basically got a five pack of all of the sizes to see which one I like best. And I know y'all uh, smoked them. I think that the Corona Gord is the best size of the Sumatra. I agree. And real quick, can I just to, to um, and agree with everything that you just went through, Ben. And, and just to put an asterisk by my list, the Patina Sumatra is outstanding. I guess it'd be six on my list. When we did this list, I had yet to smoke a couple of them or um, 
just hadn't got my hands on or whatever the case may be. So at the time of the list, these are the ones I had smoked. It may be very a little bit, but you know, we did this list shortly after the, the show. Yeah. We, yeah. And I had the same issue too, by the way. As, so by the way yeah. I was going to say one more thing because mm-hmm. I don't want to take up a lot of time on this. The Olmec would be five B on this because that one, so that one and the Patina Sumatra and the Olmec were the one I was flip flopping constantly for number five. That's why it took me so long to get this to you. It was like, what am I going to put for five? What do I put for five? Like, I, Cause I, I couldn't make my mind up. So the Olmec Maduro, which to be honest, I should not like, it's not really in my wheelhouse, but something about that cigar, man, it's, it's so savory. It just, it's so good. It's a I really agree. good cigar. And, and it, it, it's amazing that we apparently got the wrong one. And we should declare is better. Now I'm thinking, holy shit, what's the clear going to be like? Today? Right? Because the Maduro I thought was amazing. And I'll be honest, now that I'm into this, you know, the the My Father, Le Bijou, Cien Años, oh, this cigar is freaking awesome. I, I, t- I knew you were going to like that cigar. Oh my God, this cigar that, is so that's, good. that's one of the best cigars Pepin's come out with in a while. I, dude, it's got a lot of power. Yeah, it's a lot of lot of power in the cigar, but it's the flavor is outstanding. Yeah, and it's and it's different. It's di- it's not it's not nothing. I mean, it has the backbone of the Le Bijou, but it's got a lot more to it. It's way different. This is this is such a really good cigar. So I almost regret not smoking this before we did the list. But okay, so uh, five C. <laughs> okay, I'm done. Move on. All right, so so we so we got to to bear. Oh, by the way, if you see an asterisk on here, that means it was on our pre list. That's what that right. asterisk is. Just so you know. So right. bear, you were the only one who had the like like Mary Lucia, uh, which was on well, one of your top picks going in, not your number one, but it actually turned out to get a number one. Mm-hmm. Yep. A lot yeah. of us, like, we had some, uh, you know, we had others on there. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, like, I, like I say in my little description there, um, as self, it's just some of my choices or are, 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 might be, uh, you know, I looked at some smaller companies, like some of the extensions that, you know, we already talked about our experience at Howard G. Uh, and the Patina Sumatran is another example that I thought were just absolutely stellar. I, I, I approached this list. Uh, with a determining factor that you know it was to my own personal palate obviously but i also looked and geared it towards a larger scale market impact so let's start at the bottom here why how, okay so if we're talking about larger scale market impact why did i pick an le in the espinosa uh knuckle sandwich show special well I, I i view it as part of the larger story of the knuckle sandwich story which is you know in my mind you know is a top two story for the cigar industry this year the fda kind of you know the fda decision kind of trumps that um you know our our victory uh against the fda as far as the industry is concerned but other than that like this is the this is the this is the story uh for for the mainstream to kind of to kind of dominate the industry this year and it's been impactful but um this this cigar and this project guy fietti and what espinosa has done all the le's and what they've built um and I, and I say this with, I say this in no small measure, they've cemented themselves, in my opinion, as a humidor staple. You know, when I say humidor staple, I'm talking about your Fuente, I'm talking about your Padron, I'm talking about your Ashton, the cigars that you, the brands you have to have. And this project has done it for Espinosa. They are going to be a humidor staple for years to come. And, uh, and this cigar, the chef special in particular, I had it two days after we got back from the show. My son's birthday was that Sunday, uh, before all the chaos happened with my son's birthday party. I had a cup of coffee, uh, like kind of like Ben lit up that cigar. It was absolutely incredible when I got back. So, uh, just, just, just awesome. Um, again, starting from the bottom of the list, I went with the Cavalier Geneva inner circle. Um, I, I really believe this is the, this is the boutique brand that's on the rise, that's going to make that leap into where Espinosa is currently, where Luzione is in that kind of mindset. 
Like, I think they're in that conversation uh, and, and we'll be in, uh, we'll be continuing to dominate more, more conversations uh, as years kind of carry on. And the inner circle is just absolutely sensational. I've got another one here uh, waiting to be smoked um, either tonight or tomorrow. Uh, and it's just, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, the, the Viroku blue guys, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, this, this line from Tatawahi, I've always felt was missing something and I couldn't tell you what it is. I think it's great. You know, it's very solid, great, great work for, for, for Pete. You know, I just thought that there was just a lot. I thought it was overshadowed in a lot of ways. The brand is just overshadowed. I mean, Pete's just got a lot of good stuff. We all know that. Right. Um, in, in a year that was, that I've been calling a banner year for Pete Johnson, this, this, this is adds that extra something. It's an underrated line. It was missing something in my opinion. And this really captured my attention. It was really, really terrific. Um, for two out of the last four years, I've said, you know, when the gatekeeper got released by Alec and Bradley, I said, that was a dark horse of the show that year, a couple of years back. And uh, the Broadleaf does it again. I think it's the dark horse of this entire show. Um, it, you know, very, you know, unique, creative, the flavor palette is is just in something just incredibly different. When you have something that dark and that rich and that robust, you're thinking, you're thinking like you know, oh, you're thinking like coffee and leather and earth, and it has those things. But the thing that really kind of set it apart was just this very, very pronounceable but just not understated creaminess that just made this cigar really, really pop, and I really enjoyed it. And the Maria Lucia, which was the only one that was on my original list, uh, Nielsen and I were the only ones that only have one that carried over from our original list to our final list. Uh, we both had one. Um, the Maria Lucia for me um, was the cigar of the show. Uh, I thought it was absolutely immaculate. And uh, as our good friend, since we brought up Hector earlier, he likes to say when I kind of get in some moods, he likes to say that I get salty. That's his word. He likes, he's like, oh, salty, salty. salty. Yeah. So, uh, so in, in true saltiness fashion, by the way, since nobody asked, uh, I'm enjoying the 75th from Manila. Pasada, <laughs> by the way. Um, since y'all, if y'all cared at all. Um, yeah. <laughs> has anyone else had this? I didn't get one. I know Coop I, said you didn't have one. Yep. Yeah. I don't have one either. Um, Man, from the light, this is, I mean, it just, it really hits you. Yeah. I've had a few relights tonight. I'm not holding that against it. The blend, it, it's kind of taken away from the, the smoking experience a little bit, but this is a roller coaster of a cigar, man. It's, it's got some, it is a, it is a, it is a flavor rocket and it's, it's, it's quite delicious. I'm enjoying it. Very nice. All right. I guess it's me. Oh, oh, look at Coop. Look at Coop having three asterisks next to his Yeah, I know, man. List. Look at this. Well, part of mine was I had a smaller set of samples to go by. Um, but I did have three. Um, but let's kind of start at the bottom. Uh, Foundation All Mac technically could have been the fourth asterisk, but I had Claro on the list. I put Maduro. Um, and I think I told we talked about that cigar. Um, like I said, I think that's going to be a big hit for Nick. Uh, Verocco Blue, we, we talked about that one as well. That made I, that made all of our lists, didn't it? Yep. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, good job by Pete on that one. Um, Double Broleaf, we've talked about. Um, and here's I, I actually asked the question. I said, "Who says Alec Bradley can't produce a Broleaf cigar?" They and they did it, and this one certainly fits the bill of experimental series with the Honduran Broleaf. So good job on that. Um, the Casa Magna Connecticut really really um was great uh, i had that one after the show i thought it was more of a new of a of a new it was more of a new age connecticut than i expected i had it in the medium range it wasn't kind of like super dialed back uh really flavorful i think this is going to be a huge hit for casa magna and casada i think this is a um it's kind of interesting how they follow up last year they go with like a really bold cigar with the Liga F, now they go with something a little. Even though it's the medium, I think it's still the milder of, of the Casa Magnas I've had. So, but the number one cigar, uh, I did not have Maria Lucia on that. Although I did like Maria Lucia, I kind of put it under the limited rule. But I still thought this cigar was the better of the two Ace Prime cigars, and it's the Ace Prime Masignias. 
So let me take you back beforehand. We went to the opening reception uh, and it was hosted by Crown Heads and Ace Prime. And we, we get samples of cigars from these. And we get, Bear mentioned the Bosphorus from Osgona. And then we get the Robusto size of the Mas Ignis. And I got to be honest with you, I had both of those cigars. And the, the Bosphorus I thought was young. And there was something off with the Mas Ignis. I mean, this thing was, I, I didn't enjoy it. So the next night we went out to a, uh, like a wine, a wine and cigar pairing at Luciano's rental house. And Luciano, I see Luciano, like, and he comes up to me and he says, what did you think? And I gave him very honest feedback on the Mas Ignis. I said, Luciano, this cigar, I'm telling you, it just, there was something off. He felt that there was something off with those Robustos they gave out that night. He proceeded to give me some other sizes. Uh, the Gordo. Including, I, started, I was going to say, there you go. Say, the it, say yeah. it loud. The yeah. Gordo, the Toro, and the Robusto, right? Which, and I, I fell in love with the Gordo, okay? The, no. Yeah. I fell in love with the Toro. And I fell in love with the Robusto. It was definitely that Robusto I had that he it was night and day. I smoked this cigar, like, Aaron, well, you don't want to mention how you smoke in the Broadleaf or Al, uh, Ben? Who yep. smoking? Okay. Same thing. I, and I don't normally smoke a lot of the same cigar, but I kept going back to this cigar because I did get a few samples that night at, at Luciano's, right? So you're all going to say, but I'm just telling you that I, you guys know I was talking about that cigar for, for all week. Um, mm-hmm. It's probably left one of the biggest impressions of a, um, of a cigar that I've had at a trade show in a long time. Now, I do think the cigars that Luciano had at this house were under much better controls, you know, in terms of humidity and temperature. I do believe that. And I think that was the difference. Well, but, that was one of the differences. Did he, if I remember correctly, we don't have this on video or nothing because um, it's something we learned at the party. If I remember, right, I thought he said that the that boost the head and out, they put too thick of a binder on. There was, so, yeah, it That's was exactly something, yeah, it wasn't that, it, yeah, it wasn't that, remember I even said it wasn't young, there was something off with that cigar. Yeah, You're right. It yeah. Was, the, but the, it was told by the guy, the guy at the factory, like, this is too thick, probably shouldn't use it. He was like, I think it'll be okay, and it turned out to not be. So they're yeah. going to re, so the Robusta that will be coming out will have that fix, and it will be perfectly fine, it'll be like the rest of the line. Yeah, yep, so, and like I said, I, you know, I probably think the Toro is the best size of that. The Gordo is really good um, as well. So um, it was like, I, that was my cigar of the show. Uh, I haven't had a cigar like that at a show in a, in a long time like this. Um, yeah. You smoked like five of them, man. I smoked and I smoked more when I got back. I, Luciano, I, I, I got a few samples, right. But even when I left, I think the only cigar I smoked that night at Luciano's house was that Gordo. I smoked the other sizes, when I got back to the compound, because I, I, when I got back to the compound, my first reaction was, is this cigar, was I just kind of, you know, I don't know, in the moment or whatever. And, and I, really, I really wanted to validate the case that it wasn't. So um, I went ahead and, um, you know, smoked some more of them. And, and I, I could just tell you, now this doesn't mean, now, first of all, the bad news, this won't be my cigar of the year because it came out, it's coming out after the trade show and it's not eligible. So it's, it's a potential for 2023 is what I'll say. And there's a lot that can happen between now and then. So, um, but it won't be on this year's list. So, uh, but that's just the way I did my list. All right. Anything else? Cause what I want to do, if not, uh, I want to do our president's, I want to get the president's segment in and then we can go back and do some of the other topics. I need Aaron to pick my next cigar. Yeah. And then I did a big blunder. I did a big blunder tonight. So uh, so, Aaron, I have the Inner Circle from Cavalier de Geneva, okay. the All Saints, St. Francis, Colorado, huge, I just like saying it, um, the Foundation Olmec Maduro, and the Adventura La Rarona. Adventura. I think the, I think the, uh, the Claro might be a little too light in this course of your smoking progression so yeah. let's go with the I've, sm- I've smoked a lot today too so yeah nice speaking of which 
since we're going coop this is off your recommendation number three for me not a surprise but this is excellent i the, yeah the la I aurora like what is it the uh it's the especially especi 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 very good very good so uh, if you guys it, highly recommend this got a couple of those at the trade show uh they were already in the market um which is why, but they, that was a great cigar. I had my introduction to it, the trade show. All right. So I got to do a couple of things. First is I forgot to do the contest tonight. Hashtags, so, get your hashtags. Okay. Let's so get it. your hashtags out. Okay. And um, I'm going to basically, we have a, we, we, we got a bunch of these because I told them we like the St. Louis, a lot of people like the St. Louis Curry Cardenas. Um, the uh gift packs so i managed to get a few more of these so um i just don't know if they're sending the doers in there but let me share my screen but they're sending something else if they're not sending the doers i know that um here is the gift pack Carenius. um and we've given these away if you haven't heard uh i'm not like I said, i'm not sure if they're still sending the doers but they're sending something else if, if not you definitely get the, the bag the uh the bottle opener and the flask and like i said something else uh, that bag is an awesome bag. It's been highly recommended. Um, and I wanted to say something, you know, our, our contest work on hashtags. I, I you know, look, I saw Dojo did a hashtag contest and the Dojo guys, you know, they, they had their hashtags together. Now I want, I, I know the, 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 the primetime audience can have their hashtags at, at the same level. All right. So you have to put a comment in the live stream on the cigar coop page. Right. And here is, this is going to work this. You don't have to go to cigar coop to figure this one out, but you can. Okay. I want to know two colors on the band of the Carreñas and you have to list both colors, right? So if one of the colors is green, right? You have to list what another color. So if you, if you put green, that is not going to be acceptable. You have to put green and black. If those are the colors, right? Those aren't the answers. So you put the two colors, hashtag colors. I, I don't know how much more easy I can make it. And I'll pick one random comment at winner. Two colors on the Cadenas band. Easy enough? Okay. Bear, you, you approve? The two colors on the Cadenas band, correct? You only, you only have to give me two. They're not just two. You, you can just give me any two colors. Any two to. colors that are on the on Cade the Carreñas band. Yep. Okay. Any two colors. Hashtag colors. Okay. Hashtag colors, plural. Okay. All right. Here we go. All right. So here's what you do. Hey, everybody. You don't even have to go to Coop on this. You should go to cigar-coop.com and you can Google that name right there on the search key, the best search key in any cigar media website out there. Biased, yes, but truthful I am. If you go into the search key, you type in Carena, C-A-R-E-N-A-S. That'll pull up the article. It will have the bands on there. You just say two, two of the colors that exist on the band. Any two colors will do. I am doing an example. These are not colors on the band. But if you think the colors are purple and turquoise, that's what you would type. Purple and turquoise are your answers. Hashtag colors, plural, in the Cigar Coop live feed. Okay. You can't win, Ben. You can't win, Ben. I see you're smirking down there. You can't win. Yeah, and oh. uh, like I said, it's for the live audience first. But if we don't get a right answer here, it's going to go out to the coop audience overall. You could Google this, but go to cigar Free stuff, free stuff, yep, yep. And I'm going to validate if they're still sending the doers or not, um, but I'll double check that. But like I said, they, they send, I believe they're sending something else down. I forget what it is, but this is what I've had, so uh, I will double check that. Must be 21 to enter. Yeah, you got, yeah, everything's going to be 21 to enter, so I do check that. And uh, I haven't I haven't had to ID anyone yet, but <laughs> yeah, that's All not right. true. You you ID'd Mitch. Come on now, let's be honest. Well, Mitch, I had a, I, <laughs> I actually had to send Mitch something. I actually because we didn't, they don't send the Canada. I had to send something to him. He won it once, so we took care of him. We had some extra stock at the uh, the Coop warehouse. All right, 
So let's get into what we'll do is we'll do the president segment. We'll go back into some talk and then we'll come back and do um, great things are happening here. All right. So this is our president's trip, presidential trivia segment. And it is sponsored by United Cigars. Uh, for, uh, United Cigars featuring La Diana Havana and distributors of Jose Dominguez, Bandolero, Garofalo, and the highly acclaimed ba Byron and Atabe, and soon to be released Alfonso. Buy United, Smoke United, Live United. So this is presidential trivia. And, and guys, this is for Bear tonight, right? And the idea is we, the idea is to stump Bear. Now we've done four weeks of this. Bear has gone three and one. He missed last, year, last week's question. And I was shocked, right? Because uh, I wanted to know the, the, the president that the first sitting president to go to Alaska. And he did miss it, okay? So stumping bear is a challenge on this, okay? So I decided to kind of carry the theme over one more week and see if I can get another win on this. I, I don't think I'm gonna, right? And the question is also related to travel. And I want to know who was the first sitting U.S. president to go outside of U.S. soil while in office. Who was the first? First president to go off U.S. soil while holding the office of president. Okay. All right. So I will give you, yeah, I'll give you, an, well, I'll give you an example of a wrong answer, okay? George Washington went to Barbados. But he went there in 1750 before he was president. So that, that's right. why that don't count. So it's the first president in the office. He's sitting in the presidential Oval Office. And he's the first one to leave U.S. soil as the U.S. president. Uh, Aaron and Ben, if you want to try to guess first, I'll give you guys the shot. And then we'll turn it over to Bear. Oh, God. You can pass. There's no pressure. This is all the pressures well, on Bear. I'm, I'm, I'm going to guess just because at some point. But I, I, I have to think about it for a second. Okay. Hmm. I'm seeing some answers come in there. I know the answer. I just want to see if you're trying to trick me up again. There's no, there wasn't, a, there's no tricks in these, these questions. That was. Well, what is it, Bear? Wait, all right. Let, let, wait, no, wait, well, Ben, you <laughs> guess. You got, you and I got to guess at least. I mean, I might, and I'd even Google this or cheat or anything like I, I, I have done in the past. I didn't, I didn't either. I didn't, I didn't Google this question because, well, for one, I thought it was just for Bear. But two, I, I just, I want to see if I can, because I'm thinking it's way late. Like, way late. Okay. Um, By way later, you mean what? Uh, 20th century late? It was Civil War. Okay. Do you know the answer, Bear? I do know the answer. <clears throat> Am I the right so, ballpark? Oh, well, if you're guessing Abraham Lincoln, so I already no. had this discussion with Jay Davis, okay? No, so, Abraham, so Abraham Lincoln, so I'll, I'll, I'll state this about this. This isn't my answer. We're not, Abraham, we're not doing the trick question with that either. I know where you're going to okay. go with that. So Abraham Lincoln actually traveled to Richmond after it fell. So there's two ways of looking this, right? Well, one, if you view the Confederacy as a foreign entity, he still technically was not on foreign soil because it had fall, fallen to the Union. So technically he was, on, he was on Union soil when he visited Richmond after it fell, okay? So, um, but the argument still stands that it didn't matter even if it had still been in Confederate hands, he technically wasn't on foreign soil because the union did not recognize the Confederacy yeah. as a foreign entity. Correct. And, I'm, really I'm important. Right. and that is, that is valid with this question there. I'm not that, tricking you up with the Confederacy. Yeah, the Confederacy right. was never a, a legal union. A right. legal it was, correct. It was, yeah. Never kill. We're talking yeah, legitimate, per, per, we're talking legitimate, so, uh, other country from, here, from yeah. yeah from you from the union perspective they yeah, never yeah, were from yeah. if you look if you ask great britain that's right. a different story right. uh they actually sent ambassadors so um but the the other the other trick avenue that you could go down is that george washington the barbados one is is is, is a really good point um also um but he wasn't fact, in office. He wasn't yeah, in office. He, he technically actually was born on foreign soil. And actually, most U.S. presidents up until James Buchanan were, were born British citizens. Yeah. Um, so that's another another little fun trivia yeah. pass. 
another cool thing too from uh, it was in the late 1870s, 77 to 79, I believe. Uh, Ulysses S. Grant was actually took a did a world tour. However, he was out of office. This was after he left office yep. his second term. He went on this world tour. Yeah, yeah. It was really cool. He got to he visited with the Pope, Queen Victoria. Um, I mean, uh, the um, Otto van Bismarck, uh, a couple of other dignitaries. Like uh, he went through this entire European tour. It's pretty cool. Um, I didn't know what he, I, I don't know how he lasted all that time without bourbon. But you know, he he uh, him and his wife went on this this world tour after he left office. Um, so. But the the correct answer, I want to see. Wait, wait, I'm going to guess. I'm going to guess. If you guess, Ben. Okay, so this is where I was going with this. The So I was trying to think, did any president ever visit Mexico during the Mexican-American War? And I don't think that never happened. That did not happen. So my what I was thinking then was, <laughs> I don't I don't know. I think didn't Theodore Roosevelt go to the Panama for the Panama Canal? Yes, well, he did. He did. Okay, but but that was so late. It was that's why I was wondering. Right. So that's what I was saying. That's that's that was what I was saying. I think it's really late post Civil War. I don't know if that's the first. I was pretty sure he visited the Panama Canal. Aaron, what's what's your guess? Harrison. Okay, Benjamin Benjamin Harrison, mm -hmm. not William Henry. Okay, I was gonna say William Henry Harrison didn't do anything but visit his bed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the uh, actually Ben, you nailed it. That is the correct answer. In 1906, Theodore Roosevelt's visit to Van Panama was the first international presidential trip. That's the final answer. And that is correct. Yep, that is correct. So there, you you moved to four and one. Uh, you, yep. So you, <laughs> you couldn't stump you with that one. It, I, I I can see where you thought I was trying to trip. I, I don't think I tripped you up with the sword question. Uh, well, not the sword, but the Harding question last week was the answer. Um, but yeah, so you have the right answer. And the good news is next next show there will not be a travel question. But Jay Davis has submitted the next question, uh, Ooh, which I have nice. approved. And the only reason Jay didn't use it is uh, I already had some you know just background planned for around this answer so we just wanted to kind of but yeah next you will not have a travel question with the next one i can assure you and it is a potential stumpable question because it's a tough one there's multiple yeah, parts I, i'm not i'm a history nerd i love history but i'm nowhere near bears level presence so i was i was thinking it was either that or woodrow wilson that was the two i was thinking yeah yeah, it's really it's inter international travel became a thing like Theodore Roosevelt really tipped the scales on this. It's really kind of cool. So the ones that really did like extensive travel, it, it kind of that was the domino that kind of fell. And then another president's foot, like you, you said, Woodrow Wilson, he made two. He actually made two trips during right. the Paris Peace Accords. Right. Uh, and um, and he also received the Nobel Peace Prize. I think so that Wilson was. was a, yeah, and I think Wilson was the first to actually do tra a transatlantic visit that's correct that's correct yeah, yeah. um the yeah. one who did the most extensive like uh you know like you know coolidge visited cuba um and a couple of others but it was, it was actually franklin delano roosevelt who actually did uh which is pretty incredible considering his considering he was his handicap right uh he made uh, 20 international trips i believe I well, I knew I, I had seen I had yeah. seen his his trips and but I knew it was before I, I knew it was before him. And for some reason, I was watching a documentary on Harrison at one point, and I thought he had made a trip at some point overseas. But that was obviously the wrong answer. Yeah, his most important trip was to Malta. Yeah, Frank Franklin Delano. Yeah, Roosevelt. Right. Yeah. Uh, he had several trips to Canada, too. By the way interesting and interestingly enough uh, but uh yeah but yeah t ted uh theodore roosevelt good answer so. good answer good job there it's four and one uh and um we will continue this going so again uh uh united cigars uh sponsors of our presidential trivia segment and, did you uh, know here here's one last fun fun fact about international travel from US presidents did you know that president trump was the only was the first president and like five presidents to miss three continents 
He didn't travel to Australia. He didn't travel to Antarctica. No, no president has been to Antarctica. And he didn't travel to Africa. So he missed three continents. He, the only thing he did do, he was, he is the, he visited a country for the first time that no other president visited. Do you know what that yeah, country? North Korea. North, 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 North Korea. Yeah, North Korea. Yep. So that was, uh, that was, in, that was the only one that, yeah. Uh, and then I think one, I don't know if it was Bush or Obama has the most days on the road internationally, right? One has more, tri- more countries and the other has more days on the road. And I forget which one it's, it is. It's Bush has more countries. Bush has more countries and Obama has more days on the road. Totally. Yeah. I think, I think that's absolutely right. Yeah. I know, I know Bush has more countries. So if, if that's the stat, then. The, the interesting thing is Biden has been one of the least traveled presidents in a long time. And I, yeah, and I but think his term list, isn't up yet, so I'm not. I'm well, not his counting. term's not up, and don't forget he ha- he's he's 80, and he also doesn't. Um, you know, he's going in a he's in the COVID world right now, so so yeah. Um, you know, so I don't know if we'll see anyone at the Bush Obama levels for a while, for sure. Trump didn't do as many trips as you would think, though, outside the U.S. He no, a he, lot was, less than, he, was, yeah. he was pretty light all around. He was, he was more light. Yeah, he was definitely lighter because. HW, I think, did more more than, than Trump did. Correct. Yep. Bill right. Bill did Bill. Uh, so so you were asking about the, the the number of countries. Yeah. So it was W who had the most, but he only had it by one. Okay. He only had it by one. one. Um, he only had it by one. Uh, I think he visited like seventy five, and Clinton visited seventy four or something like that. Wow. It's by and one though, he Bill yeah, Clinton. That... He beat he beat he beat Bill by one. Wow. Most so. interesting. All right. I love this segment. This is so much fun. I know. I know. We we uh we do it on this show, and then Bear put, does it to his guests on the show. But I do it to Bear because um it's fun to see if we can stump him. So uh, by the way, and Jay has submitted a question. If you have a good question, feel free to email or me at coop at cigar hyphen coop dot com. It if will I get it, reviewed and fact checked. So no trick questions, y'all. Yeah, yeah. yeah it let's will, have fun with it. Yeah. So the deal is what the deal I have with Bear is if he misses the question, he can appeal it. Um so he certainly has that right. Because because sometimes sometimes our sources for this information are a little tricky. Uh and, and I've learned that there was there was one I almost got tripped up on. I think it was week one and, and lucky I figured it out that Bear was would answer was right. So um before the show so all right hey let's get back to pca um we'll, we'll kind of go through these a little more in rapid fire here we talked a lot um i want to you know there were a bunch of new exhibitors at the trade show and we start, we hit on this um bunch of them um and we'll just kind of go around the horn um was there one company and new exhibitors can mean two things new company or first time exhibitor in this case so, but it's the first time we've, you know, in both cases, they're both exhibiting at the trade show for the first time. Um, so Ben, let's start with you. Was there a new exhibitor at this year's trade show that impressed you? Um, yeah, it was honestly the one that, well, I mean, we talked about one already, but I don't figure Bear will talk about those, talk about them. But it's the one that Aaron found for us while we're having another yeah. interview, Codio. Is that, did I pronounce that right? There you go. Yeah. yeah. Audio. Mm-hmm. Dude, they were they were really cool people to talk to. And it really, I mean, you, they talk about cigar family, but man, they were tight. Like they could tell. Yeah. They they can, it was all the family right there, man. And they they had a good lineup of cigars. They were real knowledgeable. They, I mean, that was a cool booth, man. I was so glad Aaron found it. But yeah, I agree. Caught our attention over to us. You know, that's that's another asset. Aaron brings to us. He's like our, <laughs> he's like our international spy going around getting, yeah. getting, getting some information oh, for us. I was, I'm just, I'm just looking to get free samples at different places. So then I just happen to stumble upon them. Yeah. Look, look whatever, whatever your your motive is to get there, it doesn't matter because <laughs> the the what these finds you bring us all the time, dude, is awesome. But I, I I really enjoyed going to talk to them. They had a lot, they had a lot of cigars too, man. And, uh, you know, it, we tried several samples of them were there, and I, I, the one they gave me, I thought was really good. I mean, it was, mm-hmm. I, and I, I don't remember the name. I don't remember because I remember thinking I got to get it set up real quick. We had an appointment we had to go to real, real quick right after it, but we wanted to get into the coverage. And it was a, it, I said, hey, can you, 
<laughs> I said, give me something small because I'm behind the camera. And they gave me this freaking Gordo, yeah. like, <laughs> cigar. And I was like, holy shit. I don't know how I'm gonna pull this off, and I and I was I was like holding this, holding the camera and smoking, and trying to blow my smoke over here because it was just putting off a ton of smoke. But I remember it was it was a it was spicy, but you, and I don't like spice, y'all know that. But it was but it was just it just had a smoothness about it that just kind of tamed that spice where you got the good flavor of it, but it wasn't like sharp and just just kind of in your face like some brands I don't like that I talk about all the time but it just was it was just a really good cigar they were great people to talk to I really enjoyed that booth a lot I was glad that we, we, we gave them some time and got a video of them okay so here's a very interesting fact that you guys might not have picked up on Shh. okay and this is not a bad thing by any means um, with these guys so you know what happens is we do the interviews and then the interviews get embedded into a written report that I do. Now, I try not to focus on wrapper, binder, filler too much in the written reports, but it, but it does get covered. So I, I did ask for some blend information from them. And they had three cigars at the trade show. And it's interesting what they had listed in the filler. And the filler, this is on their, this is on their um, catalog. The catalog. Mm -hmm. In the filler, they use Cuban. It was Cuban. So the next thing I did is I went back and listened to the interview that Bear did with Fausto, Fausto Codio. And he's talking about his 50th cigar. And if you listen carefully, he says Cubano in the filler. So now I'm like, okay, so where's my next source I go to? Let me go to Charlie, who's the only other person I know who covered that booth. And I read Charlie's report and guess what's in there? He had the same observation. So now I don't know how they're, they could be using pre-embargo. I don't know. I'm just saying they had Cuban listed on, on, on their shelf talkers catalog. And he said it in the interview with Bear. And Bear, it was like, it, you have to really pick it up when he's going through the yeah. field. He says Cubano. It was a little tough. No, to I remember it. him saying, I remember him saying it. And I saw it later in the catalog. And I, yeah, like when he said it, I was thinking like Cuban yeah. seed, right? Like Habano seed. Yeah. That's why, that's the way I took it. I didn't even, I didn't even think. I didn't even think twice about it. Yeah, I, I. So again, I'm not judging. I'm not just saying I don't know what kind of Cuban they're using, uh. But they are saying it, and and even Charlie wrote like. So I was gonna. Call, I was actually gonna email them again, but in Charlie's thing, it said, I asked them to clarify it like again, and he said yes, Cuban in it. So I mean, there, there's at this point they're saying it's in there. I'm saying it's in there too. I totally missed that because like when I and people ask me all the time like what did they say what did you hear. I do when I'm filming, I'm more concerned. You, you, I, I'm, I I'm, miss I'm, I'm keeping, I'm keeping them in frame. Sure. Watching the, the, I, watching the audio, make sure it's getting in. And I'm not even hearing what the hell sometimes parents say because no. I'm concentrating. And I completely miss that. But I wonder, is that a U.S. release cigar, or is the, it is it overseas only? No, it's fifty. It's a fiftieth anniversary. They're selling it on their website even too. Yeah. Yeah. So, so here's like I said. I didn't catch it either, Ben, until, like I said, I got the catalog and I'm writing up the thing. And, and here's the thing. That's why, if you notice when I was going through these, Ben, Codio was like, I skipped it because yeah. I was trying to validate this part. Like, and, you know, that's why I started. I said, let me go back. And I went back, listened to the interview, and then I caught it. He said, Cubano. And you wouldn't have caught it, Ben, unless you knew what you like. He did have an accent. You wouldn't have caught it. And even when he says Cubano, that doesn't necessarily – I've heard people say Ecuadorian Cubano tobacco, right? Uh, yeah. But, but so he said that, and then like I said, then I went to see if Charlie had one, and that's when he had the same thing in there in his write-up as well. It was I, don't crazy. Know how they're, I don't know how they're doing it, but hey. I, I don't know. Hey, I'm not asking a question. I mean, it's in there. You know, it's in their talk. They say so. That's all I can say. But the cigar, uh, the uh, I, I actually am intrigued by it. They have that clock cigar, they have the Coseca cigar, and then they have the 50th birthday cigar for Fausto. And I'm kind of like I said, they look like really nice cigars too. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, and then they had some other interesting names, which I'm not going to go digress. But uh, but they're a small. But they are. Is there? They make the cigars in the Dominican. They have a small retail operation in Clifton, New Jersey, which is uh, for folks who it's about 
10 minutes west of MetLife Stadium with it, where the Giants try to play football. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> yeah. So I want to check out, I want, when I go up there, I definitely want to check out their shop for sure. I want to definitely visit their shop when I get up there. Well, this, this is, this is one. I want to just want to add this one little statement before we can move on. Right. I always love covering these little small companies right. that usually are some of our other friends don't cover. You know, and they're yeah. so happy. They're so excited when we yeah. come in there. Like, oh, you're going to take time to cover us? Hell yes, we are. Yeah. We deserve it. I, I, I love it. Those are yeah, special. I, I, I thought that was Aaron, and I agree with Ben, and this was my company too, by the way, that I had on there. Um, Aaron, this was a great find. Um, because what happened is we were doing the 1502 booths, and I guess one of them saw, saw, and they came over to me and Aaron. That was good, yeah. It's and Aaron said, hey, I said, Aaron, I just need to stay because I – I needed to stay there at that point. Uh, so he said, I'll go over there. Right. And, and that was good. He went over, he comes back. He says, we got to check these guys out. And then when Aaron says to we'll go check the guys out, we're going. Right. So, okay. he, so that was a good, you know, cause you, you usually <clears throat> found some good brands with this. So, so I, well, I, I think, uh, yeah. And I think, yeah. And thank you guys. So it was, look, I'm not saying it was um, well thought out, but it, it worked out well. The other thing to Ben's point, what you're talking about is, what I like about it is these guys are going to remember that we gave them it. Look, I don't know where they're going to be in two years, five years, 10 years, whatever the case may be, but they're going to come back and remember that we were kind of one of the first to give them some, some airtime, if you will. And I think that goes a long way. And I, I liked what I liked about them was their passion. Um, they had, they didn't have just one cigar there. Um, they had a good story to tell. They were thoughtful. And I mean, that was the one too that I was going to put on, but then, you know, the other ones, I think they're this the first year was Howard G. I'm not going to go into, uh, it was actually a second, but it was the first was year we second show. Out. Yeah. It was second. Oh, was show. it? Okay. Sorry. I apologize on that one. And then, um, I did now Pastani did Mike, is this the first time he's was this, he was there? This is Push uh, first uh, first trade show. Yeah. As, ex- um, so, as an, ex- mm, as an exhibitor, as an exhibitor, he's been in the Roma craft booth though. So this so, is the first time having his own booth, yeah. Right. So I was going to mention, you know, it was good to see Mike. I mean, Mike is just a quality individual um, all the way around. I think he's good for the cigar industry. Um, so it was good to see uh, him have his own booth. I think hopefully it's kind of a start to, uh, you know, them to have continued presence. Um, so those are the ones that that came. I, I, I'll, I'll play the – ignorant card i don't know who was also first time exhibitors outside i thought i thought howard g that was the first time which was the second um the asterisk with with mike but then obviously the Codio one so i don't have uh, those the ones that came to mind when we were kind of doing some show prep so that's all I got. I wish uh, I knew some more that were maybe the first time or so. If you won Coop and, and Bear probably know. Uh, and, I, and I listed know. some on the out, I listed some on the outline if you want a refresher. Yeah. Yeah. But we don't we we do. Yeah. There were a few of these that we missed, too. Um, mm-hmm. And are not, you know, like, well, I think there's some obvious ones on there, too. Like West Tampa and Osgoon, right? Oh, yeah. 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 I, yeah. I, I, yeah, West Tampa, Osginner, Carolina oh, Blue, yeah. uh, Black Star Line, Stolen he, Throne, it, Wildfire. It, oh, I got him here. Aaron, okay, and Aaron yeah. wasn't there when we went to ATL. Yeah, ATL and so was- H- ATL would have been the one. I know that was one that we had talked about on the the, the show um, yeah. leading into it that we wanted to all go by. I wasn't there the day that you guys went to ATL, um, so I didn't have a chance to talk to them. But you know, I'm expecting good things out of them. The, the, the other ones on there, the, you know, the Osner, the Oz, I'll just say Oz, cause I mispronounce it all the time. That was kind of different in a sense because they were in the, the uh, crown heads booth. Um, so from a exhibitor standpoint, uh, I, the black star line is interesting to me because they are a Chicago company. Um, I have smoked some of their stuff. I like it. Um, I like him I'm too. Inter- He's a good guy, Eric. Yep. Yeah. Yep. He is. Uh, and, and so, that would have been one of the other ones that uh, <clears throat> that I w- uh, would have mentioned too. So, but we kind of hit on those, and so uh, I should have read those notes. But th- those are the ones that come out. They, they were put in later, Aaron. Don't feel bad. I, I yeah, I put them in. I, I, I missed an, I missed another. The one that we covered was Casa del Sueños in the. Uh, oh, that's yes, that's right. Yeah, that was another good one too. And I really want to. Tr- I mean, I should say I have. I've tried one of their cigars. It's very good. 
Well, black, like, so we're going to talk about the Black Star line. That one, I really wanted to cover. I've never had it. I, I'm friend with, friends with Eric on Facebook. He's a really cool guy. I really wanted to go by there, but we, we, we just, did. You know, we, we did, and he wasn't we, there when we yeah, went there. Well, yeah, we tried a couple of times. He was he was on the show four. We read it until we mentioned the show four. We're like, hey, we're going to come by your booth. Just give us a second. We got two appointments. We went back, and they were gone again. And then the last day, they, they weren't there the last day. They, they yep. went ahead and they went home. Yeah. So we missed but they were they were on our list to go see. It was just one of those things where we, we just kept missing each other. But that, yeah. that, that was, a, I've heard a lot of buzz. I know a lot of people that is, have spoken their stuff. It's like, it's really good. I haven't tried it yet. It's one of, uh, it's on the top of my list to try for sure. And, you know, and when you, and, and for me too, like when you, you, you meet somebody, you're just, you, like we, we met Eric, he was a really cool guy. You really want to try to get over there and cover them because, you know, Good people, you want to get get the word out as much as you can about that and stuff, you know. But we just one of those ones are you know just conflicts the schedule and we just we missed out on them. But rest assured, we'll get them next year. For yeah, sure. for sure. Yeah, we Aaron and I had them on had him on prime time back in uh, April. Good guy, good story with the brand. Um, and uh, you know, like I said, we we really I think we really made a good attempt this year trying to get the folks. So. Um, but Bear, you have not answered this question yet. What was yours? And well, there's one I, company, and there's one company you missed too. Another company you missed, I just saw, but yeah. Um, the um, well, what I will say is, you know, I I really have to hand it to Aaron for uh, the the faith he has in me for going into a going into a booth blind. Uh, oh, but- by the way, let me say that. <laughs> I, by the way, I, I had mentioned this to Bear after I dragged you guys to Cody. I mean, Bear going in and and doing the interview on a, Not knowing on a anything company about that this we company. didn't know anything. Like, yeah. right? I mean, it's like, hey, come look. Great job. You know, we're looking at the spec sheet and at Bear, just outstanding job. I, yeah, I meant to mention that. Really, uh, everyone, yeah, believe me, that was a great job. You 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 had a you know that's that is as tough an interview as, as anyone to do, um, and yeah um good job you, you no it was a lot you no, know it was a lot of those are those are fun though those are yeah, fun that, uh, um but yeah that, that was just something of note like i just wonder I, I, you had given me that yeah. that very humbling yeah. comment here but that's true like i was like i was like that's a lot of faith you're putting in hey, and when i went back and watched the interview it's just i mean again it, it it's great and uh you know and again at ben the camera work you've done and you know on all these interviews but that one you did that one despite me walking and that was one of the booths I walked in back of everyone too. <laughs> but, uh, but Ben, Ben, when he had a close up and stuff, it was just, it was, it was, everything was on the money this year. Yeah. So to answer the question, um, you know, I know we talked about the Howard G booth and how much fun we had there, but one of the most fun booths that I had, um, um, I just had such a, a great time. Um, like I felt so good after the interview, not because of necessarily the quality of the interview, but just, just, just the the vibe man just how i felt like leaving it the attitude and everything and just how welcoming they were was atl uh you know peter uh gross uh leroy lamar the third and his wife uh janelle yep um so uh so warm so hospitable and just oh god they were so much fun they were they were they were, they were just they i mean I mean, they were, they were just happy to be there. They were happy that we were there, that we were talking to them. And it was just, um, it was a blast, man. It was just so much. It was, it was just a really, really cool experience. And, uh, you know, I, you know, I still hadn't, I still, I still haven't had any other cigars. Uh, Leroy handed me one of, uh, one of the cigars that they were featuring, um, at the trade show. I haven't smoked it yet. I've got it ready to be smoked. Um, and I'm excited for it. Um, but I'm just, um, I was just, I was just blown away by their, their hospitality and their, just their incredibly welcoming attitude and stuff. And they they were just a lot of fun. They made you feel, I know I've said that a couple of times now, but they, they just, they, they just made you feel good. You know, they, they were the perfect encapsulation of the entire vibe of the trade show right in one booth. Yeah. Like, Everyone that was there, I said this last year and I'll double down on it again this year. Like everyone that was there at the trade show this year wanted to be there and everyone was happy to be there. Um, 
you know, and it was just a really, really great and fun show. And ATL, the booth was just awesome. Peter uh, had me in stitches. I thought he was hilarious. Um, you know, we, we kept, dra- you know, dropping like outcast quotes and stuff like that. And it was just, it was just, it was just fun, man. It was just good times. Uh, really, uh, really encourage people to try the cigars, even though I haven't had it. But every, I've heard such rave reviews from everybody who's had their stuff. It's really good. And Fair. check I'll out our interview. I've, it's a lot I've of fun. got a couple. I've got, okay, Ben, I, I got a couple of boxes of a couple of stuff. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll send them. No. To you guys. That's I know. Crazy. You I have know. boxes? <laughs> I know. No, I no know. I do. I know. I went on a limb, but I'll I'll send them my next care package. You guys have got a couple of their stuff. Listen, I I I agree with everything Bear said. Yep. That was one that I was I would had like you know highlighted that I couldn't wait to get there because I had not had anything from them either. But I man, I've seen a lot of stuff on social media. It was a lot of. And I told him, I said, dude, y'all have a lot of buzz on social media. They're like, really? We do? I'm like, yes. Yeah. I've seen a ton of people posting pictures, smoking your cigar, said how, how much they love them. So I was like, I, I, I was glad to see that y'all had a booth here because I to come by and check it out, man. And they were the, they were some of the nicest people too. I was, it was so good to go there and hang out. It was, it was kind of like the Howard G atmosphere. We, we went in there. It was like, we were like this family. Let's all just, you know, sit around and, you know, have good conversation and check out the cigars. It was it was a really cool experience. It was, it was a fun booth don't, and a fun interview. Don't you guys, I, 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 I'm, I'm listening to this, these comments and, and kind of our experience from the show. It's like the day you leave, you're like, I'm so ready to get out of here. And then you go about a week and you're like, man, I can't wait, wait to go back next year. It's like one of those things like, we you, we work so much during the show. It's like you sometimes you can't you know stop to smell the roses per se, and you're like exhausted when you leave there. It's like okay, I'm ready to get out of here. And then it's like you go back, you get settled back home, you get back in your team. Like man, can't wait to get back in 2023. Yeah, yeah, I, I have a lot to say on that, but I'm gonna save it to the end when we get to the end of the show. But yeah, I agree 100 percent with your saying. I feel the same way. All right. Uh, I'm going to skip one topic just because we're moving. I want to make sure I don't get people here till ridiculous hours. Uh, and I want to go and uh, what I want to do is I want to talk about standout companies of the trade show. Um, so this could be whatever you something, a company that really stood out for you. They, they fired on all cylinders, the products, the booths, the direction they're going and whatever, whatever you, Something that was a standout for you. It doesn't have to be a big company uh, either, but it's whatever whatever you think. Um, and Bear, we'll start with you this time. Um, yeah, I think. Um, I mean, there's. I think there's a lot of uh, potential candidates for this this question, and I was thinking a lot about this and everything. But um, I think it was. I think it was the return uh, of two companies back to the trade show and they came back with a fury one did it in sensational fashion that we've talked a little bit about already and one well we've talked about both these companies and then one did it in a very small fashion but it was still very impactful to have them back and you could tell by the vibe of their booth and everything so those two companies are foundation and la florida minicana and it was really good to have both those companies back at the trade show um you know different circumstances and why they couldn't be in 2021 um, both reasonable reasons as well, too. Um, it, it was interesting. A lot of there were, you know, last year there were a lot of harsh words for people who couldn't attend the show, but these two see, these two companies seem to get a pass um, because I think they had some they had some very legitimate reasons. I mean, uh, Nick had a family obligation that had been in place, and to his point, you know, we didn't know that there was going to be a trade show until 100 days before. You know, that's so we talked about the accomplishment of the PCA putting together a trade show in 100 days. It's in no short order to attend the trade show and, and exhibit is is also very challenging. So that put a huge huge uh, weight on a lot of these manufacturers last year. Um, and La Florida Minicana, um, you know, John Carney talked very candidly last year about um, about the fact that you know Dominican had just reopened. They were um, you know period you know feverishly trying to get a lot of their back order situated and everything like that. And so they just didn't, uh, they just didn't feel right. 
Um, and um, I thought their presence back at the trade show, I mean, in, in a very sensational fashion, I thought Nick really kind of stole the show in a lot of ways with uh, very quietly, but very loudly at the same time. Uh, but I thought, you know, having Lido, having his entire family there, uh, John uh, does an incredible job as well. Um, and, you know, he's basically a part of this part, part of the Gomez family at this point. Uh, but, it, it, you know, with one, you know, with one key release in the Soli, it just... Uh, it was great to have them back. And for me, I, they stood out because I think um, in La Florida Minicana's case, what it showed is like, you know, I had a very wonderful conversation with Lido. Um, I was, I really enjoyed that interview. Um, that was and, one of the, that was another standout interview, by the way. People who haven't heard the La Florida interview, you need to hear it. Yeah, it was, it was, you know, it was very touching in a lot of ways. And yeah. You could tell uh, just from uh, the alluding conversation that Lido had with me was that the the company's in good hands. Like I, I don't think Lido's going anywhere. I don't think he's retiring anytime soon. But he's he's very much letting his sons do a lot, and it's clear that the company's in good hands for the next generation, which is really really fantastic. I mean, we've all known about Tony's accolades and capabilities before this year. He's done a tremendous job over the last few years, um, starting with the chapter one and, you know, Lenox and, you know, Capitolio Dos, et cetera. Um, but this was Lido Jr.'s first uh, foray into uh, having a cigar. And it was really, really, really well done. I thought really well executed. And, and in no short order, Nick uh, coming back, you know, and, and coming back with the Fury and uh, Core Line, Limiteds, Line Extensions, he had it all. And me, me buying all that stock back that you guys. Unloaded. Yeah. Yes, I know. <laughs> uh, but those are, those are the two standouts for me. So yeah, foundation yeah. of the Florida Minicon. Yeah. Hey, Coop, before, we, uh, before I'll let Ben go next, but um, are we going to do both good, poor, need the, 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 the categories? Or are we just doing good? What do you mean? Um, this is just stand, standout. Yeah, stand, the, we're going to do standout in the other categories. Who needs help? Okay, got it. Yeah, got yeah. It. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I guess it's, it's kind of tough to do it otherwise, yeah. All right, Ben, what do you got? Um, I, had, I had two. I, I couldn't really decide between that, two. Yeah, you could, that's fine. So, I mean, one of them, obviously, it's one bear has already talked about foundation. I was really happy to see Nick back. I mean, and you, I, and you can see we weren't the only ones thinking that, too, because that booth was freaking packed. I mean, nonstop. Even the last day, it yep. was packed. There was people there. They were writing orders all day long. We got now, Nick at a good time. Seven, we got him at a good time when we got him, yeah. Yeah, we did. We, I mean, and we, you know, we tried to walk over there a couple of times to see if we could you know, get a spot. He was like, He's like, yeah, let me try. Let you come back in about an hour. Yeah, okay. And then we get back. And like, ah, you know, we saw they were just packed. He was, he's with, he's, they have tables set up in there. And they're all, you know, and he's got, you know, reps and stuff at each table. They're meeting with customers. And he's bouncing from each one. He's, he's going in person talking to everybody coming in that, in that booth. You know, we're, and we're not going to interrupt business to do this, right? We're going to go in at a, at a slack moment talk to people and it was super hard to do in foundation because they were always packed and they they came out with some great releases this year you know and they we started started rolling in like after we did our our pre pca cigar list and stuff like well i remember when we did it the only one that i had heard about was the the i'm working on fuck it up again the, the senator <laughs> the car keeps on called the senator. Got it right. Anyway, got it right. It's it's but that one is the only one that I kind of had knew about. It we and he was teasing us going into it with, on his Instagram with you know showing us he's unfaded cigars and whatnot. And most of what we saw actually was the Olmec. It was actually posting more about the Olmec than anything. And I didn't even know about that going when we did that list. But like when we started saying well, here's a release coming this and this and this. Shit, he's coming out with some stuff that sound on paper. I guess will be a banger release. And uh, so far, when we spoke, he's, it's been on. It's been pretty much dead on. Um, 
the other one that I thought, and this one, this is a low hanging fruit. I know, but I figured, fuck it, might as well talk about it. Is Espinosa? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like Espinosa. Yeah, they were firing on all cylinders. What man. a job they did! Yeah, that entire team was locked in. Yeah. I know it was. It was a great boot. They had a. I mean, that was busy as like hell too. But I mean, and having. You know, Guy Fieri there too was, was just icing on the cake. Everybody wanted to meet him, which we did get to meet him, and he is a genuinely <laughs> yep. nice guy. And I would, I, I, I was holding that one back too. I didn't why, want to promise so, it. Why, why are you, why are you giggling, Bear? Why are you giggling? Why am I giggling? Because I, because it's called the long con, Ben, and you've got to play the game sometimes. Yep. <laughs> so I, you know. Because so, Coop didn't get it until he got it. I got it. I mean, well, I learned a lot. But but what's funny is they were trying to make arrangements for us to meet him. And I was keeping it. I was holding back. I didn't want to promise you guys what was going to happen. Then I just started telling you guys, yeah, I think we're going to get a chance here. And Hector and Jack really came through for us. Yeah. Yes. Both of those guys. And we had two absolutely <laughs> stunningly amazing <laughs> moments at that meeting greet after hours. <laughs> The one, the line that I will never, ever, ever forget, and I drop it randomly in the middle of conversations because the shit is so funny. Now, people don't probably don't know this, but Coop absolutely detests eggs. I it, it sounds terroristy, I know, but he hates eggs, right? And so people, you know, some people know, especially like big, big Uber fans like Barons. Um, guy also hates eggs. <laughs> So he's like, Coop, I got a present for you. And he, we're standing there, and he looks at Gus, and Guy also hates eggs. And he has says the fuck the funniest thing. He says, <laughs> he said it's just liquid chicken out of a uni hole. Yep. Dude, I liquid started laughing. Chicken. Liquid chicken out of a uni hole. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh my god! Even when I just think of him saying that, I just start laughing. That is the funniest shit I've it ever was- heard. Yeah, and it, and it is dead on. Is exactly what a freaking egg is. It's a liquid, liquid chicken out of a you know. <laughs> that was that was so funny. And they're fucking but, delicious. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think. Yeah, I know. Coop can't even. He can't even smell it. Yeah. He can, like, literally, he can, he can smell it when it's cooked into something. Yeah, okay. it's true. That's my wife on that. It's it's unbelievable. I, yeah. Like I could eat eggs all day long. But anyway. The, the second funniest part was we were all leaving. <laughs> <clears throat> Coop and Bear have gone outside the patio. And no, I was there. I caught the end of it. Yeah. Oh, you, you were, were right okay, You were standing there. Yeah, you and, were closer, and I, and I was standing off to the side, and I and I I, I witnessed it. Yeah, keep going. This is your story. So, so Aaron has this thing where he just name drops. It's the slightest little subtle moment. It's like a oh yeah, <laughs> by the way, boom, and it's like a nuclear bomb goes off. So we're 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 sitting there talking to him about the, the tequila that he came out with with Sammy Hagar, and which we, which we had that night too was really good. And it was you know you know you, you you're talking to somebody and you're shaking their hand and you're kind of like walking off like you're, you're kind of walking away. Well, Aaron's doing that, and uh, he's like, yeah, talking about his dad and his vodka and stuff. He's like, and he's walking, he's like pulling away, and guy like holds his head and is like, wait, who's your dad? He says, oh, it's Rick Nielsen. And it, like, turns to walk off. <laughs> and God, like, wait, wait your wait, dad wait. is Rick Nielsen? <laughs> and pulls, and pulls Aaron back to him <laughs> and starts talking. He has this amazing story about seeing his dad at a sound check and how he just, like, stops cooking and goes and sits down just to watch his dad play guitar doing a sound check. And, like, it was mm-hmm. the most amazing thing ever. That was the that was the one of the best moments of the trade show. And it's all thanks to Espinosa. Yeah. Guy Fieri. But uh, but aside of that, those little personal things, that booth was always popping. And that and the releases they came out with, man, were freaking awesome. Hector did such a great yeah. job blending these cigars. I mean, I, I didn't get to try the new uh um the new warhead and stuff, but, but like the tenth Espinosa, freaking awesome. So good. But, and the other one I was a little surprising was the Chef Special. And, and not surprising that it was good. I, I knew it would be good. It was better than I thought. But what surprised me is, like, they just came out with the core line, and then it 
really quick into coming out with LE. I thought that was a little weird, but I'm glad they're doing it because they have a cigar. It's freaking awesome. It made sense to it kept guy. It gave it gave a what's new for Guy Fieri's brand knuckle sandwich. So I thought it was a smart move to do rather than invest in a third core line. If they had something that they felt could be a very good limited, put it on the knuckle sandwich. So I thought it was a good job. Yeah, true. I just thought maybe maybe hold it to next year or something. I don't know. Uh, you know, because they, they came out with what six? They came out with six releases, and I think all all six were limited, right? Yeah, yeah. all everything was limited. Yeah, so I, I, I was Death just special. The two anniversaries, the Warhead and the Cesar uh, uh, Vincent. Cesar Right, but I didn't, I didn't, I haven't tried that one yet either. But I just thought, like, I was thinking, like, man, that sure is quick because they just kind of the core. It's been out a little while, right? But it hasn't been out a full year since the beginning of the year, since like yeah. February. So, yeah, the so, Great Smoke. So we're we're talking like six months, and here's the LE. I was just thinking, I, I don't know. I, I would think maybe hold it to next year where it's won't get maybe a, a scared it might get lost in the shuffle. I don't think it will because guy guy is name is attached to it. So I don't think it will, but I was just yeah. thinking maybe save it to next year to where it gets a little bit more of a spotlight. It's a little bit more special on its own. But still it was it was outstanding. And one last thing was it's about guy, right? <clears throat> Everybody wonders, like, okay, he's a, he's, you know, he's a, got that TV persona or whatever. It's not. That is, that is not true. That he is just like he is on TV. Super nice, real gregarious, really good guy. The, I mean, he lights up the room and he is a 100% true cigar guy. He's not a guy putting a name on a damn cigar as, to, to get money. It's, he's really, he was involved with the, the whole makeup of it. He's really behind it. He's, he's all into the cigar business. And he's, he's, he wants, uh, he, he wants to be there to make the industry, industry better. And he actually gave a little speech about that. Yeah. I was going to say that. Yeah. yeah. He was very, very candid about speech. that. Uh, because, yeah. you know, I don't want to steal your thunder here, Ben, but like, he was just, I, I, I really appreciate how candid he was. He was saying, you know, for a long time, he wanted to do something like this, but he was told he couldn't because it would, because of the, uh, the, the, the thing that it could do to his image, it would, it would, it would disrupt things in a, in a negative way because of the connotation of tobacco. Right. And he was very candid about that. And so when he, uh, I'll let you tell the rest of it, but that, that, that really, he was very, very candid about that. And I really appreciated that. And then uh, I'll let you tell the rest of the story, Ben, but I, I just, it was, it was very refreshing. Yeah, it was just he was just talking about how you know he's he's not there just to you know be a one and done. You know he, he wanted he you know he picked Espinosa because he knew they would do it right, they would do him right, and they did. They they one hundred percent did. It's a, I think it is a great pairing. Those two coming together, a perfect pairing. And you know he's he's you know he's paying attention to what's going on with the FDA. And all that, and you know, he's 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 in it for the long haul. He's in it. He's not there. He's not there to just slap his name on a cigar, make a quick buck, and we'll, like, oh, we'll move on to the next thing. No, he, the way he was, the way he was talking, and he's talking to a small group. He's not. He, this isn't in front of a huge audience trying to, you know, try to sell stuff. No, this was a real intimate setting, and it was like, man, I'm I'm here for the for the long haul for this. You know, I love this. I, I have a passion about this too. So that that was really cool to see. You know, I thought that was a really nice thing for him. So anyway, I'm, I'm gonna end on that. I've gone on too long about that, but anyway, that that's my two picks. Yeah, that the 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 bit about that story that I wanted to say though was how it, it was great because he it was you know like when people win the Super Bowl, like hey, what are you gonna do next? I'm going to Disney World, right? So the moment for him was when he got his star on the Walk of Fame. He got a star on the Walk of Fame. He was telling the story. And, you know, the reporter asked him, you know, reporters asked him, well, okay, guy, what's next? What's the next thing you're going to do? So it's funny, like the industry, we always joke around about how in the cigar industry, like, hey, what's new? What's new? What's next? What's next? Everybody else gets it too. And so they were all asking about Guy Fieri, what's your next thing? And I'm going to make a cigar. I'm going to do it fine. He had made it, He, you know, to the point where he could do it. And and that's, and here he is. Here he is with, uh, with Espinosa. So. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I just thought those remarks were refreshing. 
and very candid. He didn't have to say, he didn't, could have said a thousand different things, could have said it a thousand different ways, could have really given a slip service because he's an incredibly charming individual, but it was very candid and I very much appreciated it. And I, I just actually, I, I'm going back to what I just said. I, there is one other thing that he, he did say there that really hit home with me, that, uh, not hit home, but I kind of you know felt that the heart was like he said, you know, during the time the trade show goes on, he, he takes a, a month, I think, was, I think he said it was a month off, and they go to, he, he has a lake house, I think on Lake Tahoe, and it, it's just family, just a family. He, he shuts everybody else out, it's just him and the family, that's his focus, it's, it's family time. And he said he flew out there for the, for the base was a day and a half, just, you know, because he, he wants us to know, like, this is, this is, this is important to him. This means something to him. So he left his family vacation, which he said he's never, ever done. He's never done that. Come there to, you know, meet everybody, you know, talk to everybody and you know, talk about a cigar and how this is important to him and all that. And when he, when he, did, he did all that and gave it speak, we lost Coop. Hold on. Hold on. Keep going. And yeah, I don't know. I, I just thought, lost it. We're good. We got it. We're, we're good. But I just, I just thought that was kind of heartwarming. Like, for one, that he does do that with his family. You know, not a lot of people do that, right? It's, you know, but that he, he did that. But he, he, he took time away to come to the show to meet everybody and to show them how this is important to him. This, this is not just a quick money grab. And, you know, after that, you know, that little intimate setting we had that night, he flew back. He went right back to him, and that was it. I just thought that was really cool. Of you. you guys there? Yeah, yeah, we're all here. There. We're it's, it's still recording, Coop. You're good. Okay, good. Yeah, I, I didn't lose the recording, I don't think. You'll have a small break. Okay, you guys we, hear we, me, we, right? We, yeah, we had a small break, but we stopped the conversation, so we're good. So all you guys went froze. Yeah, and your bandwidth's pretty low right now. Yeah, I, I switched the... Uh, okay. Um, Aaron, let's go to you. Yeah, I won't belabor this. I know we, we've talked about... I had... You know, as I was prepping for the show, I had the same exact two that uh, these guys have. And w what I'll say is, and I, I echo everything they've said, but w one of the key factors, and let's, let's you know, be transparent on this, both Espinoza and Foundation were my picks, but they both have something in common in that they put out good cigars, right? So at the end of the day, um, this is not something like they had a good show because they had a lot of traffic and put out, uh, you know, some dog rockets. I mean, what they put out, not only, you know, the Guy Fieri part, you know, Nick being back from foundation, but they put out. Hold on. Bear with us, everybody. Uh, just give us a few seconds. We just got to get a couple things in order here. We'll be right back here. Did we lose, folks? Uh, no. no, we lost you. You need to hit record again. I don't have the ability to hit record. It's still recording. No, it's not. No. no. It says it's recording on my end. Now, no, now it is. Okay, go okay. ahead, Aaron. Yeah, so what I was saying is, you know, those are the two that I thought really excelled at this show but but point being is not only to execute well but they also put out great cigars i mean look at our lists right i mean you look at the list all of our lists had those two companies in our kind of post uh post show cigars so not only did they execute well but they put out good good cigars and i think at the end of the day 
it all comes back to putting out something that represents their brand and is, you know, just world-class tobacco. So nothing to elaborate more, but uh, I thought those two were really, uh, really did a, a really good job. So we're losing Ben, we're losing Coop, you know, so it's you and I, Bear. The Aaron and Bear. <laughs> we Aaron and we Bear. go over here. I'm here. All right. I'm just yeah, here. So, I'm going to get some, some backup support. <laughs> All right. So yeah. So I'll uh, I'll end with that with uh, echoing what both Bear and Ben said. All right, Coop, you're up. Hey, Aaron, Stand. can you? Are oh, you guys hear me? Um. All right. So my two companies. Aaron, can you repeat what your two companies were? Because I lost both your companies. Foundation while, while and Espinosa. The... Yeah, Foundation, Foundation Espinosa. Okay. Just same same okay. with what Ben so, and Bear said. Okay. So Espinosa was on mine as well. And uh, look, I got. I want to add a few more things on Espinoza. Well organized booths, well laid out booths. Five limited editions or six. I think it was five, but the limited editions were all compelling. Um, even the guy anti limited edition, but Espinoza did the limited editions right. Warhead has a new release for annual release. Warhead eight. Six Provincias has a new release. Um, they have, of course, the Lazona 10th anniversary, and they have the, um, uh, of course, Espinosa 10th anniversary, and then Guy Fieri. But I thought the booth was very well organized, um, and uh, they, they handled the crowds well, it seemed like. They, 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 they were ready for an onslaught, and, and they did a great job. And there was activity in that booth when Guy wasn't there. So uh, hats off. They did a great, they had a great show. Um, and uh, they deserve some props, but I'm gonna give you know the other show is I still gotta you know I, I picked United slash Selected Tobacco uh, prior to the show, and I stick by that. They um yeah. they knocked it out of the park, and in particular the Selected Tobacco booth. You know, look, Davidoff's not there anymore, and Davidoff was always that luxury booth for many years. Um, Selected Tobacco comes in and they have luxury products. Is what they're doing. They're high end products. They were displayed like high-end products. That booth was, they told me that booth was, we were there the first day, like the first appointment was them. And I could tell you that um, they got done very late the night before. That booth was like going into, we said museum. I heard, you know, like high-end auto showroom, you know, high-end departments or whatever you want to call it. It was, it was very, very well laid out. They had product for this year. They talked about some of the products they're coming out with next year to give you a preview of that. Um, they had a lot of product that they introduced this year. Um, and, you know, we were there the first appointment, but we went, we had an hour with Oliver, right? And we used that whole hour, but people were lining up to talk to those guys as we were doing, as Oliver was giving us that hour of time. Um, yeah. So I thought, I thought they did a great job this year. And, uh, you know, I just want to give them their due on that because I think they certainly did did uh, did all the right things as far as that goes. So so, Coop, and, and that was good. I, I wasn't there the day that you guys visited them, but I, I did have an opportunity to go through. And it was like a um, I equated to like a high end jewelry store. Right. So, I mean, the way it was displayed, the way everything was laid out, you felt like you were in, you know, like a high end Tiffany's or whatever the case may be. I thought they did a really good job. But company that. I don't know what they're doing, but could take a page from that is and and their price points El Septimo. They should take a page from what what they did because if you look at these five thousand dollar or whatever the five million dollar or whatever the heck the the humidors are that they had like five of them or whatever. I mean, if they're truly trying to go high end like that, take a page from what they did. Yeah, and look, they had a beautiful booth, El Septimo. Um, and we'll get into like, I guess this is a good segue into companies that need help. Um, well, this wasn't my, cause I didn't visit this booth per se. You guys did. Um, that was when we had Ben and I had to kind of go take care of the battery situation. My problem with El Septimo is they, they, they do a great presentation, but they need to get back to the roots of what their brand is. And it's a tobacco brand. And I don't feel there's a, a strong tobacco story I'm hearing from them yet. Um, I want to hear a strong tobacco story from them, but I'm not hearing that yet from them. Um, to me, it just seems like it's, it's very nice luxury items that, but the cigars, 
to me, they, 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 they see more folks that are coming out with 10 different blends rather than come out with one really good cigar. Um, you know, do it like Nelson's doing it. You know, he has the whole story about the aging in there, you know, this, and he's a fanatic about aging. And I'm, I'm talking about Nelson Alfonso. I, I think El Septimo needs to kind of pivot a bit with that. The messaging just, yeah, you, know, you could put a beautiful lighter on out there, but um, I need, I want to hear about the tobacco story. Well, and I, I, and, and since we're on that topic, I was with Bear when we went to their booth and I, I flat out told the guy that your price point's prohibitive. I mean, they, they haven't earned the right. That is a quote. That, that is the is, word you used. I did. Yep. I, I said the cost is prohibitive. And it is because if I'm, if I'm going to a luxury brand and I'm going to spend what their, their price points are, I have to have earned the right to be able to charge folks that. And I go back and I know it's not always the best analogy, but if you look at what I, I spend on a Padron cigar, which is going to be consistent and outstanding every time for a cheaper price point than one of majority of their cigars i'm buying the padron all day long they just haven't earned the right and they it's like they're trying to be this high end but then it's like to your point what's the core what do you let the tobacco speak for itself instead of this glitz and glamour so yeah they need help yeah yeah i kind of actually ran into that when i was um when I was visiting down off of Tampa, right? Cause I was actually looking at, the, they have a section of Davidoff's there that's, you, you can only get there. And but right behind that section is where those El Septimo cigars are at. And I, I was, I had my back to them, there was two customers there. And um, they were like, just talking about like, who is this? Like, why, why the cigars are so expensive? Like I can, mm-hmm. I mean, I can buy a Padron or a, or a, a Dowdle for the say They were having this conversation, and one of the guys that was uh, that was working there, he knew me, so he came around where he was talking, and he, you know, made said something about doing reviews or whatever. And the guys looked at, you know, the way they wait, we got done talking, and they turned to me, I'm like, "Hey, you ever have you heard of them?" I'm like, "Yeah, they're they're kind of a newer brand. They're you know, they're trying to be that." real exclusive type cigar company in the same fashion as like doubt off or whatever. And they're like, have you had any? I said, no, honestly, I haven't because I, it's, a, it's, it's what Aaron just said. Like, I, I, I don't know much about them and I haven't heard a lot from people smoking them to say from people that I trust palate wise, like, are they good or not? If I'm going to spend that much money on a single stick, I mean, uh, I'm gonna. I'm honestly gonna buy a Padron or down off first. Yep. yep. That's, that's, it's it's a known quantity. I know what I'm getting when I pay that money, right? I know what I'm gonna yeah. get. That them, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna get. I mean, I don't want to spend like upwards to fifty bucks on a cigar, and it's eh, it's it's average, as our friends say. It's just <laughs> average. So I'm not gonna pick it up. And, that's, and there's these customers that were saying the same thing. And then literally about an hour later, I'm going back to there to go get um, the Angel cigar because Bear was texting me like, "Oh, you gotta go try this." And I go back and I swear to God, I was saw another guy there, and he was, t- you know, he asked me the same question. I was like, I don't know, man. I don't know. Try the try the cheaper one. It was like an orange label when I said try. It was like twenty some bucks. I, I would start there if I'm gonna try it out, you know, and see what it's like. But it's like that's what they gotta go through. But they they got to do a better job of like explaining why, 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 why is your cigar cost that much and worth that? You know? I mean, I mean, let's be honest, but it, you know, United went through the same thing originally with the Atomy and stuff in their lives. Yeah. But now, they were, di- they were different though. Like they were telling the story. Like there was a lot of storytelling as far as not story, but they were telling the story behind the aging of that tobacco. And, you know, no, that was yeah. very well documented. But also, sure. but also, but also with that though, I mean, this goes back to what we said. If you, to what Ben is saying, there was a few people that I know that that smoked the Atabay and they're like, "You got to try this." I don't hear anybody coming back and saying to the El Septimo, "Like, yeah. you got to try this." So there's no buzz of spending the fifty bucks or forty five dollars or whatever it is. Well, and and also like like 
listen, if you're going to have that kind of, you know, Jay mentioned this word in the chat, if you're going to have that level of hubris about your cigar, if you're going to stand, if you're going to stand on that pedestal yourself and make this grand proclamation about what you're trying to accomplish, like I'm all for it, man, go for it. But you got to, you, there, you, you can't, you, you, you can't, you can't go like three quarters of the way. And like, look, with all respect to, and I know one of their brokers in te for Texas incredibly well. He's my former, he's my former general manager at Michaels, Tracy Spence and Joe Lipscomb for, they, they're incredible brokers. They have incredible portfolio. They do an incredible job. And I've, I know Tracy selling that stuff um, because he's, he's an incredible incredible individual and he has great relationships in this industry so i know he's getting the word out for them but with all respect to them if you're gonna if you're the, the way that el septimo talks man why are you brokering this shit that was my next yeah well, why, why don't you have a sales force yeah why aren't you investing yeah. in pe like people to the level of this i mean you can hire the best brokers in the business and i'm biased with you know my friends that are that represent them but you can hire the best they do have good the brokers business. they have hired good brokers i'll say they that. have hired yeah they have hired good brokers. The hernandez but, brothers i think are doing them too if i'm not that's mistaken. true yeah they're, they're and they're, they're really good yeah they're very good they're they're yeah uh we've heard very you know from a lot of people that they're the best and uh they sell, they sell magic they sell, they sell magic yeah of course um yeah. but uh <laughs> All joking aside, like that, that's my, that's, that's where I get turned. That's where yeah. I, that's where, that's where I kind of like, okay, you had me. It's like, you had me until yeah. there. And I, I, I'm, I'm, it's just, it's, it's very confusing. Like, okay, like, like okay, let's, so that's great. You have $50,000 cognac in your booth, but you don't want to invest in people. This is a people business, man. This is a people business. Yeah. Just saying. You know, and we talk, yeah, and Barry, you talk about people. Look, the reason why people get behind brands or even they get behind Pravada, right, is because there is a personality behind it, right? And I'm not disparaging anything against the CEO of the company, but I don't think he's that, he's not a tobacco guy either, right? Or, you know, he, yeah, you he's don't have to in, be. You don't have but to be. You have Nelson Alfonso behind the selected tobacco brands. That's a big, that's yeah. a big difference is what I'm saying. If they had that person, you know, like, and I'm not saying Brian from Pravada is that person, but he, he's certainly connecting with people who are, or are people behind making these cigars. So he's doing the right thing. I don't see anyone from El Septimo as the tobacco guy. If, if you're making these great blends with the best tobaccos in, uh, in, in the world, right? Isn't there someone behind this who's, who's kind of, overseeing this and just kind of the personality but they don't have that and they don't have a gut person on the ground as an ambassador reason for the brand so i i you know i'm impressed with, with what i've seen at their booths and everything and i think the cigars are average i don't think they're bad but they i think they definitely need help at least from my even though i wasn't at the booths and i was external i mean the brand i think needs some help for sure hey not to guess and we're we're going down this rabbit hole of El Septimo. So one of the things- I knew this was gonna come up in this segment anyway, yeah. But. Yeah, yeah. so one of the things, and I'm, I'm deviating a little bit from script here, but one of the things that I wanted to call out, and I don't, I don't wanna say, I, look, they're never gonna have a poor show. And last year was a lot to live up to the second year, but I thought Rocky did not have a good show. And why I say that is, look, Rocky's always gonna have traffic. It's Rocky Patel, I get it. His cigars last year that he put out were really good. I thought. I, I thought you know the the was it the, the disciple the disciple the the white um, white label D sixty. Those were yeah, the big the 60, three, right? I smoked, and I was really looking forward to the twentieth anniversary edge. And look, I got the show sample, whatever. But the cigars that that he put out this year, I thought fell flat, and um to me that's disappointing so i don't know maybe you you hold a couple back from last year don't put out three again or whatever the case may be that he did but i thought i don't think rocky had the show that he had last year so it's not a, it's not a company that needs help obviously right but 
I'm spraying to kind of the, the topic of that we were talking about of, of good, bad, and different help, whatever the case may be. I'd love to get your guys' opinion if you even put some thought into it about the show Rocky had. I always thought like Absolutely. Rocky Mattel it seems to have like a good show or like a good release show and then a bad release show. Good release show, bad release show. It's it's almost like comes in a wave. It's kind of weird. But I didn't get to try anything from Rocky this year. They, they didn't give us any samples when we were there. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. That booth. You, your guy Wes hooked us up. Wait, I got the edge. Yeah, I even got the oh, edge. Heath. Heath. Or Heath. Heath. Sorry, Heath. Heath? I didn't get I didn't get, I don't think I got any Rockies. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But I was just saying, like, I was kind of going into it thinking, like, the edge was a big head scratcher, right? That's your value, Grant. Value is probably not the right word. No, but it it's is. Like, it's the right word. Yeah, but, I mean, and that's a really good freaking line. Dude. And it's and it's a value line. You come out with the anniversary, and it's like, what, more than double what an average edge is? Hey, come on. Mm, it's about four dollars more. It's twelve. Is it twelve? I thought it was like fifteen, sixteen dollars. Well, that's okay. Well, that's a little bit better. That's not as bad, but still. I mean, I don't edges know are I, about edges are about nine dollars now. The DB the DBS is gonna be more expensive though. The DBS is gonna be about twenty dollars a cigar. That was the other cigar. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I so, and I just thought about anyway. I I didn't mean so, to guess. I was curious on your point no, of view on that. So let me let me respond on that. Um, I didn't think it was a bad show for Rocky at all. Um, you know, I, I don't think it was as I think last year was better. Um, here was the here was the this is again when you kind of cover the booth and you don't get the whole story. Okay, so I got a bunch of information from the Rocky booth, right? And Aaron, this is no fault of yours. Because I didn't even notice sending you to take photos of this stuff. They did a massive launch of accessories this year that, frankly, um, and this was another thing um, I had, I had, and I put it in my write up, the accessories, right? But we didn't have the pictures, right? Because no one told us about that they were doing this big, I mean, there were a lot of lighter collections introduced, and these things look great. And Charlie did, Charlie did have them, right? Charlie did have them. I had the information, but I, I mean, that's nice stuff there, really. It's nice quality lighters and stuff. And I was just disappointed we didn't get that part of the story. I'm sure Rocky's all excited about the edge and the, and the DBS. And I'm not, and he gave us great time, by the way, at the booze. And I'm, I'm very appreciative. He but kissed that you story, twice. He did. Kissed me twice. But the accessories piece was missed. Um, and again, some of we had to be, you know, we're covering, a, and we were spending a lot of time with Rocky one on one because of the awards and everything. Had I known about all these accessories, and I found out after I got all the materials back home that there were all these accessories that debuted at the show, and I got news for you. There's some of the stuff I want to get. There's some really cool lighters that they have this year. Mostly lighters was their focus this year. Um, and it, it seemed like, and they added, I mean, I want to say they added five or six collections of lighters with different colors and everything, and there was a lot. So, I mean, it's in the coop right up. It probably, a lot of people probably didn't see it, but... Um, that was something I think it would have, I think, told a better story this year at the trade show. Well, I would just wish Rocky had like a dedicated PR person that we could contact and meet him, right? Because like, right. every time we go there, I have to go hunt, hunt down my, my buddy that's one of his reps, get yep. everything arranged. Yep. And let me tell you, it's Heath Hill, that, that was, that's a Southeast rep, yep. that's my friend. And he, yeah. it, oh my God, the whole show, he had customers nonstop. And it was like, he, I, he I, always I miss, helps us I, too, this guy. Yeah. And I, I, just, I happen to just catch you walking back to the booth, coming from somewhere. And I'm like, dude, we need it. You can set up Rocky. No problem. You tell me what time, I will make it happen. That's how it happened. And he made it happen. There's no, Two years in a row. There's, yeah. no, there's no PR person. Why, why should we have to go to Heath? You know what I'm saying? Like, we, yeah. we, so we need a point of contact within them to say yeah. let's, let's arrange things get us information yeah. get us all this stuff yeah so we don't we don't miss this kind of stuff you know yeah i agree i mean it was like i said it was unfortunate that we missed some of that stuff um and you guys missed it because um like i said it was a lot like i said we were very focused on rocky because we we actually got some really good personal time at rocky because that was when fuente padron was going on so I think we, we focused a lot on, and we did a great job, I think, on that. And I certainly, we, you know, like I said, I think last year's releases were a little more exciting. Um, but 
that's okay. I didn't think it was terrible. But I said, I thought there was a bigger story there this year that we, you know, unfortunately just things work out the way they were. It's no one's fault or anything like that. Okay. Um, I'm going to take another, another, because I know we could go on for hours here and probably bore everybody at some point. They got to go to bed, but I'm taking a different angle and I'd like to get you guys opinion on a company that I said need help. And I like their cigar. There's two companies that, well, there's a couple that come to mind, but I'm going to throw out two at you guys and like to get your opinion on because we like their cigars. One is Dapper and the other is Aventura. And here's my take on it. When I say help, this is in a good way. They've got the, they've got the, they've got the quality, right? They've got the right. cigars. We've talked about who they are, what they have to offer. But I don't think enough people know about that. You know what I mean? They need so to get to I the next help, level. Yes. Yeah, I'm with you. So, yeah. So when I say help, it's like, guys, you got to strike while the iron's hot. Like, hey, you're going to continue to hopefully put out good cigars, but you're missing a window of opportunity in which you got to take that next level to get to the, take your pick, Illusione, whatever the case may be. I don't know. Maybe it's a bad example. But I would just like to see. And HVC is another one that I think is, is missing out too. That was the one I said, you know, help, help in a sense of get them out there to get more mainstream. I don't know what the word I'm looking for, but they've got great cigars, but they just don't have the, the traction. What's your thought? I mean, I know I heard what you you said very kind of agreed, but yeah, no, absolutely. I do agree. I, I kind of had, I, when I was thinking about this question in a, in a positive context, I, I took it two different ways. I took it the negative context and I took a positive context and the positive context is the ones you're talking about, you know, like, um, you know, I, I think all three of those are in it now. Uh, now Rainier is in the middle of a factory move. He has his own factory now. And so he's producing his own stuff. That's a, that's a big, that's a big change. Uh, so I think he's got, he's got moving and shaking. Um, it's clear that it's clear that Ian is doing great stuff with Dapper. He's paired with a fantastic factory that puts out fantastic cigars. He has a great palate. He's very passionate about this industry. He can't be the only one that's doing it though. Um, Adventura, um, I think um, Marcel uh, Noble and uh, Henderson do a great job. Um, but do. again, they're just two people. Um, and you know, when you have great cigars, that's great but what's what's gonna what's gonna take you to the next level you know like you know we, we've we've lauded praise over espinoza tonight well deserved but what did eric need you know eric brought in his family he brought in his son what did he need he needed someone in the factory that's why he has hector and then they have a general manager down there and excuse me the name escapes me and i apologize but there's someone quality at lazona there it's a small factory he wanted to be bigger. So what does he do? He partners with AJ, right? You know, he brings in, he brings in um, Jack Tarania. He brings in Richie Otero. These are guys that can handle key accounts. He switches. We were talking about Salesforce. We're talking about investing in people. He switches from the broker model to reps that are doing an incredible job for him. Like these are the steps that those companies need to make if they're going to make the leap to the next level and they've got to do it um and no. it's yeah. not disparaging at all because all three of those people that you named i love all their cigars right and they had good products this year and they had great yeah, right. i just finished the La, La Rona. that shit's fucking fire holy crap yeah. that was good yeah i mean it um here's but here's one i'm gonna throw in there and bear you're gonna be upset about this one oh but hear shit. me out I, I have I think, one that's going to I have one that's going to piss a lot of people off. So keep going. All right. This so piss make, you off, so okay? make, make me mad. Here we go. Roll. With OK, it. so here's what I say. I love this guy. And he's one of the guys who always remembers. I was the first guy to cover him. And this was his biggest trade show ever. OK. And the booth was terrible. It's just and look and, the, and it's Bellotto. OK, he had I mean, he had. He had three new lines, actually four blends, three lines he launched. He's launching the new Bellotto stuff. Some of this is higher end stuff, like those those edition cigars are, are going to be in the you know twelve to fifteen dollar range. You can't have you can't have that booth that he had. I mean, you get it. You got to get a glass. You, you mentioned Rainier, uh, Aaron. Rainier at least has a very presentable booth. It's not an expensive booth or anything. 
Tony just need, Tony needs to take that up a step. I mean, he, I think he missed an opportunity him being the 10th anniversary of Bellotto or of La Barba, the 50th anniversary of his father in the business. You have a lot of new stuff. And, you know, there's, there's garbage on the floor. And I love Tony. I hate to say it because I think he is he is a hidden. He's going to be a force in this industry for a while. But yeah. he, I think he needed some help at that. But you cannot go with the model you went with this year. Um, and sell the, there's a lot of competition out there at that trade show. And I just hate, I hate, and Tony's had nice booths in the past. So I've seen, we know Tony's had nice, when, when crew Mexi soul came out, remember that was a cool booth. Yeah, he had. That was a very nice booth. Very well um, presented product and everything. Yeah. So look, I'm not going to be a Tony Bellotto apologist. I love Tony. Yes. Yeah. That does make me mad. You're right. But I, but, 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 but no, I love Tony. I love his product and I, he want him to keep doing what he's doing. Yeah. Yes. Here's here's what I here's what I absolutely love about Tony. And he is takes a page straight out of the Robert Holt playbook, man, which is dance with the one who brought you. Tony's incredibly loyal to Robert. And I think that's a good thing. Don't get me and, wrong. I think that's still and a good loyalty thing. and loyalty in this business. Uh Again, it's all about people, right? Loyalty in this business is something that, and a lot of times we don't see it, and it's it can be really bad, uh, you know, and it can, you know, where it's just bad. Um, but yeah, and sometimes that's tough. Yeah, you gotta make yeah, and some, but sometimes you gotta you gotta look out for number one, and and um, I'm not saying that Robert's bringing him down. Uh, no, and I think Robert Robert's done cool a lot. That, yeah, Robert had some cool yeah. products too. Robert's done a lot for for Tony, and Tony's done a lot for Robert. They yeah. have a they have a very yeah. unique partnership, and, and he's and Robert, they've he's done gonna, some great things. Dance. Robert's done great things. Yeah. Yes, he's just going to dance with the one who brought him, yeah. and for better or worse, and in in this case, like I, yeah. I I agree to a certain extent about about the booth, but I think, um, you know, again, I'm not trying to be a Tony apologist here, but I think. I think that's one point. Number one is he's loyal. And point number two is he is taking this new direction in, in the business. And I, I, I don't think it's half cocked by any stretch of the imagination by any stretch of the imagination. I think he has a vision for it. It's just not complete. And I think yep. I, you know, I don't have any insider information here, but I think, I think we're going to see a different Tony Bellotto and a different Bellotto cigar booth next year. And it's going to be more in the long the lines of what you wanted to see out of them uh, this year, Coop. I think it's just going to be one year late. I don't okay. have any inside information. Okay. I'm just that's my theory. No, no, no problem. So, all right. Any anything else on this topic? Yeah, I, I, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't get. I didn't, uh, I didn't get to go and make people mad. So, okay, go ahead. You got to do that. You're okay. Yeah. Um. So. I think there's two, and I'll go with the one that's going to be less anger filled at first. Um, but he, this is a, I think this is a polarizing company. I, I think the the man behind it, it, you know, can be polarizing. I've had nothing but positive experiences with him in booths, and positive experiences with him in general. He's a good interview, and in the last few years, he's released really good product. Starting with the COVID year in 2020, he came out with the cigar that I absolutely adore, which is the Cashmere. Last year, he comes out with the 10th anniversary Chupacabra. And this year, he does From the Devil's Hand, which was a good cigar. But Craig Cunningham's got to do something different. He has a model. He stays consistent. He said it to us in the booth this year. It's like, we do this every year. We don't announce beforehand. We announce at the trade. We show the new product at the trade show. And why I can appreciate that, and I wasn't being insincere when I told him, like, this is the way you do it. And I kind of like it. I kind of do, but at the I same time, I kind of don't because I think he's getting in his own way a little bit. He's got a great sales force. He's got a great sales team. Um, he manufactures good product for other people. Uh, he made, he makes good product for himself, but he, you know, he's, he's been in this business for a long time and there's something keeping him from going to the next level. And, you know, with all respect to what Craig's done in this business, and I mean this sincerely, it's it's him. It's it's this this plan. It's it's it worked to get him to here, 
but he's been here at the same point for a long time. And if that's the way he wants it and that's where he wants to be and he doesn't want to get any bigger, he doesn't want to get to the next level, then shit, man. For, sorry, I'm, forgive me. Um, but I, for one, would like to see everyone always keep continue growing and getting better and bigger and everything. And I think there's, I think there's potential there. And he's got the years of experience and he knows this business incredibly well. He really does. Like it, just the way he was describing the, the packaging on the, from the devil's hand, which was really, really elegant, you know, with a name like that too, you wouldn't think it was elegant, but it was, and it was really, really good. Um, but that, that's someone I think needs help. Um, what, what, and yeah. what kind of help and what that looks like, I don't know. But I would like to see another. I would like to see another step. So so they, were, they were on my list too. I didn't want to rattle off like ten, but that was another company that I I thought the same thing. Okay. I'm gonna so, so here, I'm gonna defend them a little. Okay. Uh, so I think they're making some moves behind the scenes right now. Okay. Uh, and I think the big thing going on is they're moving their operation from California to Nashville, and I think that's going to be a huge thing. So there's some infrastructure stuff they're going on behind the scenes, and and. I think that is going to help them. Um, and let's see what comes of that is what I'll say. I think some of the things you guys say are valid, uh, but let's see what comes of that is what I'll say, because I think that's a big, big step he's taking right now. Okay. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Great. Let's yeah, see. I guess yeah. I, let's see what comes of it is what I'll say. Yeah. And we, we could revisit this conversation I think again too, it is, but I think some of the stuff is valid what you say. All right. Are you ready for me to really piss some people off? Yes. All right, here it is. Aganor's leaf. Oh boy, I'm sorry, Terrence. <laughs> I'm I am sorry, Terrence. I am because Terrence has put this company on his back for the last few years, and he's accomplished some amazing things. Amazing. He went through an entire. He led the charge on an entire rebranding that was successful, basically from day one. They've revamped packaging, revamped branding. This is a, they're, they are, they've made so many changes and everything, but it's, look, and this was with, this is with all respect to the Fernandez family and Paul Palmer, but they need some help because Terrence can't do everything. And they've got a good team. They've got good people there. And I don't, I don't, I don't understand why they, it just, it, it it just, it again, it's kind of like they should be two or three steps ahead of where they are right now. And all the credit in the world to where they've, how they've gotten to the, the place that they are. Um, but the, the, the way I see it is I think they should be three steps ahead by now. And you can blame that on COVID. You can blame that on whatever you want. Uh, you can blame it on the rebrand. You can blame it on the restructuring. You can blame it on losing the incredible, uh, the incredible icon, Arsenio Ramos. You can blame it on whatever you want, but the way I see it is that they should be about three steps ahead of where they are. And I th think, I mean, Terrence was exhausted, man. I mean, he lost his voice, um, and he's on the road 360 days a year, and he's doing an incredible job. But you, the the topic of this segment is who needs help. It's not they need not help. They they, they need I like help to, what they did to, this year. to yeah okay to to they need help to sh to shake off all th this the, the the rust the dust whatever you want to say to to get to those three steps what they should be um and I firmly believe that they will be but that to me I just think that they're they need help and um I think they're a good company. I think they've got great people and but I just, they, I just, they, they feel, it feels tired to me. They feel tired and they should be because they've been through a lot. They've put themselves through a lot the last few years and Terrence has done an incredible job and hats off to him. But you, the topic of this segment is <laughs> who needs help. They need help. I thought they did a good job at the trade show this year. Um, the, I, the rebrand, we, we did skip the top, like a rebrand. Um, I, I, I like the fact that they listened to their retailers and they, they this rebrand and Terrence has said it from day one was going to be evolutionary. 
like it was going to be done in phases and iterations and you know that's what they're doing with the core line they focused on their core line this year they made a, a good change with the anniversario as well which they they needed to kind of distinguish that maduro out i thought the, the fresh packs were a good thing and you know they're doing some things innovation wise and i think it's going to take a while and we, we talked a lot about cerberus right and i know everyone wasn't a fan of cerberus but they are working with this newer tobacco that it's probably it's going to take them a couple of times i think before they get it right um do they need do they need help in gross i think that's that's a fair thing you know i think terrence does, I mean, does need some help but terrence is they're also hiring some in-house reps they just hired a guy named david palm who is a rep in in my territory and they hired him not as a broker they hired him into the company so uh Good. you know i think they're starting to make that move as well so i think they're doing some of the things with that okay. um so so i think again i, I think it's something I, I but i understand your point you're making as well it's it's the name of the segment is who didn't have it's not we thought they had a badge it's who can help here who needs help mm -hmm. that's all it is i mean it's a good call bear i think it's a good call all right um so here's what we're, our guys uh, i know we're getting late so um we got to get one more segment and um how are, do you guys want to call it after this one last segment we got to do which is the great things are happening here i know i know we kept everyone very late yeah whatever uh, yeah i just don't want to skip over that segment that's a great segment yeah no we got it we got to definitely get that so let's get that segment in um and then we'll just do some final thoughts after that and we can hit some of those final things so this is our great things are happening here segment um and this is sponsored by tobacco usa uh makers of iconic brands such as monte cristo romeo julieta h upman and aging room cigars tobacco usa great things are happening here so in this segment bear and i pick a good news story uh something good happening in the news for change instead of all the bad news happening and uh we just talk about it so bear i'll let you kick this one off first yeah i yeah, Coop, this is uh, this story. Um, this story actually brought me to tears um, and in, in a really beautiful, wonderful way, because I love I love this segment, as we always talk about. And uh, it's got some, we've got some good, good stories here. And I can't wait to for to share yours as well. But this was this one, unlike a lot of the stories that we share, Coop, this got a lot of play on social media. A lot of people saw it. I saw it on several on several occasions and everything. And it was a really, really great story of sportsmanship. Um, and it revolved around a sport that we love very dearly, which is baseball. And it was at the Southwest Regional Championship for Little League Baseball. And, um, you know, it was a really, really uh, fantastic uh, testament of, of, you know, of sportsmanship. So there, there's a 12-year-old Oklahoma uh, pitcher uh, that... Um, uh, excuse me, a uh, batter, right? So th th it was it was a Texas team and an Oklahoma team that were facing off of against each other, uh, and the uh, the pitcher, uh, Caden Sheldon, was a 12 year old boy, and he lost control of a pitch because you know he's 12 and he was it's not like he was head hunting and he lost control of his pitch. The pitch hit the batter, uh, Isaiah Jarvis or Zay Jarvis as he's uh, as he's known in the head. He uh, got up, brushed his head off, showed everyone that he was okay, and he, you know, he walked to first. Um, but it was very apparent and very clear that that Shelton was not okay on the mound. He it was mm -hmm. he was really shaken, uh, and it was it really really upset him that he hit this guy. And it turns out these 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 kids are acquaintances or even friends, right? And um, you know, in a true testament of uh, sportsmanship you know, Zay Jarvis leaves first base and he goes to the pitcher mound um, and gives his fellow competitor a hug and tells him he's going to be okay. And um, that it's all right. No bad blood, nothing, nothing crazy. And it was, a, it was a beautiful moment. It was, it was a beautiful moment of sportsmanship. It was a beautiful moment. If you're a father of boys, which I am and not only should the coaches be proud, not only should their teammates be proud, but the, the parents of these two young men should be incredibly proud of their boys. And it was, it was a beautiful moment. Yeah, I, I watched this too. I, I watched the video and it was, 
it was something else because he hit that kid in the head. He, <clears throat> he collapsed out. He was there for a minute, and you guys, the ump was like, "Oh my god!" You hear the ump say that. Yeah. And and you know everybody was worried. Everybody you know, the teams took a knee and all that. After a few minutes, you know, he got up, dusted himself off, and went to first. And the the pitcher, the kid, didn't even throw the next pitch for a while. But he was shook it up. He, he started to cry. Little, he was crying on the mound. And that's what his friend saw him. I walked over there and gave him a hug to tell him, I'm okay. Everything's okay. You yeah. Know, he said, you're ball. doing great. Yeah. That, great. That's, yeah. We, that's why we still see baseball as pure and magical because of stuff like this, you know, the, it, this, it's a special game, you know, and, and, and the little league world series and all the burritos going up to it is the purest form of baseball, you know, and it, it's, it's just awesome to see sportsmanship like this and how these kids love the game, but they're just having a blast out there just having fun. They want to win, of course, but you know, they're still just kids wanting to have fun. And just to see that reaction was like, one, these parents are obviously great parents to have their kids act like they did. You know, and these kids are just, they're going to be awesome. The, the rest of their life is going to be awesome because they they know the right things you know, to do. It was just a really cool moment in sports, or not just sports, of, of, just of humanity. You know, it was just a great moment, really touching Beautiful. moment. Absolutely. Right in the field, agree. right in the field. Agree, totally agree. Outstanding. All right. Um, so mine, uh, is this happened, uh, actually late in June. So it's not really new good news, but it's still good news. And I actually came across this, and I wasn't aware of this story. Um, a Russian journalist by the name of Dmitry Muratov, uh, who is a who won a Nobel Peace Prize back in October, um, and uh, he also received five hundred thousand dollars cash with that. Mm-hmm. Um, not only did he, what he did is he has donated. Uh, that five hundred thousand dollars cash to um, help out uh, children displaced by the war in the Ukraine, but he also auctioned off that Nobel Peace Prize award he got, and yeah. he sold it for one hundred and three point five million dollars, and it shattered the old record, which was four point seven six million in nineteen sixty two. Um, um, and the key word is. Murtov is a Russian journalist. Uh, just be aware of that. Um, so he actually has, um, I don't want to say he's in good graces with the Kremlin because they, they actually shut down his newspaper uh, back in March. Uh, Shocker. Yeah, in the wake of the Ukraine invasion. And he's been very critical of the Russian government um, uh, over this time. So I know back in 2014 when Russia accessed Crimea, um, he, uh, you know, he's very critical of that, and he's also very critical of, of the war launched this February. But uh, nonetheless, this is a, a, a major thing he's done, uh, and, and it's just a great example of give back. Um, and, you know, politics of the war aside, this guy just put the, all that aside and said, I'm going to help these, these children out in the Ukraine. And that, that's an, I mean, that's an amazing story um, to do that. It's just so selflessness as far as that goes. Um, I, I, when I saw that, I'm like, I got to put this in there. So that was my story of the week. That's another fantastic one, too. I, I yeah, good heard, about job. The, heard about that in the news and thought that that's a great story to share, too. I, I can't yep. believe this is still yep. going on. But I mean, 103 million for displaced families and stuff. I mean, what a, what a yep. gesture. Yeah, exactly. It just the uh, total selfishness as far as that goes. Um, Great job. Great job. And that was our great things are happening here segment sponsored by Tobacco ESA. So um, I'll just kind of do a wrap up here. Um, and, and what I'll just kind of do is, you know, now just overall impressions of the trade show. Um, you know, logistics of it, what happened, 
this I'll just kind of make this more free form as, as we kind of wrap up because uh, I know we're running late. So um, Aaron, Aaron is on. Uh, we'll, go, we'll start with Ben. Like from the standpoint of us as a team or the show in general? It's the show in general. I, I thought it was a fantastic show. I think it was even better than last year. Um, I, you know what? This is where I was waiting when Aaron you brought up some stuff earlier. Um, I thought the show was really well attended. I thought it was kind of great the vibe about the whole thing. Very positive. Even more than last year. Um, it was good to see the booths were busy. You know, we always talk about the last day. Usually it's like a ghost town. It was not a ghost town. It was not there a ghost town. It was slower, but but not a ghost town, yeah. It was, yeah, it was slower, but but let me tell you, I've been to a lot of trade shows. This was a very active last day, way more active than we've been, and it was really good to see that, you know. And yeah, I agree. You know, something that has been pissing me off since we've been back is hearing from people that didn't even go about how oh, was it well attended? Sales were slow, blah, blah, blah. It's all bullshit. Sick of hearing it. Quit saying it, especially if you weren't there. Please shut the fuck up. Because it was not like that. It was There was plenty of people there. The vibe was good. Sales were good. I haven't heard of anybody complain about sales. I don't know what the hell people are talking about. But it was a good show. I I, I personally had a blast. You know? And I, it's like what Aaron was saying. It's like, so... I, I can't tell you how many trade shows I've been to. I mean, the first one was 2005. I missed a couple here and there. So it's almost, I've almost been to 20 shows at this point. And I, every year it's like, I go, we go to the show, it's a whole lot of work. People think, oh, you're going to Vegas. I ain't going to party it up. It's be so blah, blah, blah. Man, it's a lot of work for us. It's a lot, a lot. And a lot of work afterwards. A lot of work yes. for everybody afterwards. Yeah, it's a lot, a lot of work afterwards too. It's a lot going on. So, like when we're there, I do, I do enjoy the hell out of it because I love seeing all of y'all. This, this, you know, doing this is cool. You know, we'll we'll have these Zoom chats and stuff where we just be her and stuff. That's cool and all, but it's not like it's as good as getting there and seeing everybody face to face where we could all hang out together. That's cool. You know, we we see some of our other friends that have run other media sites. You know, it's great to see everybody. And stuff. It's also it's great that great networking and all that. Get to see, you know, the manufacturing, the people in the industry that we we don't get to see that often either. You know, so I, there's that excitement. And then, like Aaron said, with the last, when it's over, it's kind of like, jeez, thank God, I'm glad, glad it's over. I need I need a rest. I need a moment. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, you know, that. And so it's like, but when you get home, you know, it's kind of like, oh man, I kind of you know kind of miss it. But then I get like anxiety <laughs> when it gets close. I'm like, God dang, I don't know if I want to go again. <laughs> Stuff like this. I get, you know, I get nervous. I think I have, you know, how much work it's going to be. But as soon as I get off that plane, dude, it's like, oh, this is awesome. Let's go. It's always, it's like a roller coaster for me <laughs> for emotions. But it's, it's always, it's always fun. I love going to it. I think every year, PCA, the organization, does a better job every year. They're making improvements every year. So, and I think they're on the right path. They still have things to work on, but they're they're doing it, man. They're doing they're doing pretty good. They're addressing a lot of issues. They're doing the best that they can. You know, I think it was a great show. I, I thought we I thought we did a fantastic job at the trade show. You know, I mean, and I would say that any, you know any viewers are you know doing this live or later on. You know, if you have suggestions, please let us know. We're open to what you because we're doing this. Yeah, absolutely, we're, we're doing this for you. So, if yeah. you have suggestions, please let us know. If this, you know, we'll, we'll definitely consider anything. You know, whatever, whatever y'all want because you're the viewer. So, please let absolutely. us know. Indeed, absolutely. Um, I'll kind of hop in here. Um, I, I think the I think the PCA show was much much improved from last year. Um, I think they took a lot of feedback uh, and they implemented a lot of it. Um, hopefully they'll do the same this, for next year. Um, I know that there's been some a lot of discussion about them looking forward to shows in advance about 
potentially relocating the show. Uh, and to Coop's point that you've made a lot, I don't want to steal too much of your thunder, but you know, we need to focus on this year's show and, and next year's those need next year's show needs to go off without a hitch. It needs to be improved. Uh, they need to find more unique. I think they need to get a little creative. I just want to see what that creativity entails. I think with uh, creative minds like Jared Trudeau and Michael Herklotz on the board now, um, along with uh, a couple of other people that uh, are new presences uh, on the board and for PCA, I think we're going to we're going to start we're going to see some of those create creativity things in, in motion, and I'm excited to see that. Um, I uh, from our perspective, I thought I my goal was to get to more booths than we did last year. We accomplished that. Um, I still want to do better. Um, I still think that um, I think that you know a couple you know some of the interviews could have been a lot more polished i could have been a lot more prepared personally um i think we can also we we just need to and we just need to move a lot more too uh because i i i want the i don't want to i don't want the number for just the sake of the number i don't want quantity over quality i do want quality i want my cake and eat it too i want i want more and i want better and I think we're capable of it. Our team's just getting started where I think we're, we've got a great, great chemistry, the four of us. I think we put out some of the best content out there. I think we have a great team. I love it. I love working with you guys. Uh, but um, I, I just, I want us to continue to, to continue to build on this foundation that we've created. And I, I know we're going to get there. So um, myself personally, uh, hold myself accountable for a lot of that. Uh, next year, I'll be more prepared for a lot of other things. And, uh, and I'll, and uh, I cracked the whip on Coop a couple of times. Uh, I'll, I'll keep doing it so we can keep moving uh, good, and keep good. bringing good content. Good. But I thought overall, uh, I thought it was, a, overall it was a fantastic show. I had a lot of fun. I had a blast. As Ben said, it is a lot of work, um, but it's worth, it's worth every, every tiring moment because we are exhausted <laughs> from it. And, uh, but it's worth, it's worth every minute of lost sleep. Aaron, you have any final yep. thoughts on this? Yep. Yep. So sorry. I was on mute there for a second. So, you know, I, I was talking to some friends uh, the other day about cigar smoking and cigars in general and, and the passion that I have. And I know we all have as a group. And we were just talking about, you know, what cigars have to offer. And, and I think we've talked about it. I mean, you guys are my dear friends and it, but it, it, it it's, you know, as Ben said, it's great that we can zoom. We, text each other you know 50 times a day and give each other shit or whatever the case may be about a topic or whatever and i i relish the moments that we get to spend at the show it's a lot of work i mean you know we're exhausted at the end of the day but you know as a holistic view into the show the cigar industry is about relationships right and so you know this we get the opportunity and the privilege to cover uh, an event that we're passionate about, an industry that we're passionate about, right? And and so, while there's certain times during the show that we'll be like, yeah, this is, you know, here we got to go over here, we got to run over here. Sometimes I'm guilty of not stopping and smelling the roses a little bit of how fortunate we are and the position that that we're in to be able to cover uh, an industry in which it's not. I mean, yeah, it's work, but it's not really work, right? It's fun. And, you know, this was my second one. And I hope to get to go to many more. And, you know, from my perspective, we just continue. And I've heard it from, from comments from people that have just tuned in or, or looked at the, the, the podcast and, and have watched the, hopefully it comes across that, you know, we're able to collaborate. And for me, it's, it, it goes back to a little bit about what Bear said, you know, the knowledge is power. And I think for me, it's about continuing to learn not only about the industry, but the names, the faces, but, you know, try to be as best prepared we can going into the show, because I think that just will come across as we are doing each other's role, whatever said role it is, will come across in the work that we put out. And to everybody that we talked about, you know, we do it for other cigar geeks, if you will that are passionate about the industry as well, to try to bring some insight into what it's like, what's going on, what 
trends are coming up, what cigars that we like, because at the end of the day, people are going to go hopefully, you know, take some of the, the stuff that we talk about and be able to, you know, experience a cigar or look at something else that maybe they wouldn't have otherwise uh, been on their radar. So I think if we continue down the path and we take it serious and we try to be professional about it, but at the same time, have fun, I think that uh, not only for us as a team, but I think the industry as a whole, I think sometimes folks take themselves a little too seriously. I know it's their job. It's their, their source of income. But at the end of the day, we're, we're in a space in which it's not a job, right? It's a, it's a passion. And, um, you know, if the PCA continues down that route, and I do think that they made some improvements. I thought this show was better than last for a variety of different reasons. But um, I, I'm really looking forward to what 2023 has to offer and, and where the industry is heading, because I think it's, it's in a better place than it was in years past. So thank you guys and, and um, look forward to uh, continue to put out good content and, and uh, bring people along for the ride. Thanks, Taryn. Well said, everybody. Um, a couple of final thoughts I have. Um, like I said, this team was incredible this year. We had some challenges this year um, throughout the four, day, four days. It wasn't easy. Uh, Aaron, I know you had multiple challenges you were dealing with. Um, and, you know, I, everyone had, you know, but, but it was, it was uh, you know, we had a little, we had a couple of challenges on the floor as well that we, there's no problem we can't solve. And, and certainly that's, that's kind of what we've done here. And, and uh, we still, I think, delivered our best content um, to date. And as Ben said, we can always do better. Uh, there's some things we're looking at improving some more equipment we're going to be investing in. We did a major investment in equipment upgrades this year and uh, we didn't get any complaints about audio this year. So that was really good. Um, our, our content and has been doing very well in the Google Analytics. Um, so I'm really happy about that. As far as the PCA goes, I think I've covered a few things that they need to do. Um, as far as, I think the big thing they still need to do is sell some more sponsorships because that's going to invest more money into the trade show. Um, you know, just selling those little things. Uh, they seem like there are a lot less of those sold. Uh, but for example, you know, obviously Pete this year came through with the lanyards. Yes. <laughs> they Fucking came through best the name tags ever yep so they came they heard our feedback with that um you know i think pca the one thing they got to solve is where they're doing the social events right and i've said this a couple of times the problem is they had that we didn't go to it right the, the cosmopolitan thing but we didn't hear a lot of buzz about it right so it wasn't like people say oh you should have been there it just wasn't a lot of feedback and i think Every year they, they, they have these social events way down the strip and it's just too far for people to go after a long day. Um, I'm sure PCA, if they had their druthers, would have it at the Venetian. But, you know, they, they haven't. Um, and that's something, you know, it, unfortunately it hurts the show a bit. Um, but that's a minor thing because, you know what, by the end of the day, I'm not really concerned about the social. Our, our social activities are back at the house anyway. Um, so, I mean, that's a minor thing, but again, I'm just looking at the overall experience of the trade show. Um, Fuente Friday was a huge hit. I've said it up. They need to follow that model every year. Um, do it, do what they did at the breakfast this year. Bear, you covered this very well with Greg. I thought when you interviewed Greg Zimmerman, the president, uh, he, you talked about how Nick Malo came and I, Nick Malo did a great job. Aaron, I know you missed that. But Nick Malo was the, the featured, he sponsored the breakfast and was the featured speaker. And he did a great job. And I wasn't missing a keynote speaker because uh, Nick was awesome. And he talked to everybody, whether you knew his brand or didn't know his brand. Uh, and I think he did a great job. And again, I'd like to see the model of that go forward every year. Um, as, you know, as much as people may like to have a big star uh, keynote speaker, I think people ultimately want to hear from people in the industry. So if you do that at the breakfast and then you have seminars with other industry leaders like Nick Perdomo, um, um, I mentioned Steve Saka, Malillo, you know, those types of things. Do the seminars with, with our industry people. I think you're going to improve the experiencing. I gave the show a B. I think that's a very good rating. Um, you, know, Eric, you know, I heard Dojo say on, when you interviewed him, Bear, he was down on last year's show. I mean, compared to 2019, and Aaron, you weren't at 2019. I, 2019 was rock bottom, in my opinion. 
that was a disaster of a show. Um, it needs to be erased from history if they you can't erase it from history. But you know, it just wasn't a good show. It was a terrible show that year. Um, the, the 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 ghost town effect on that last day was sad. But that ghost town effect was actually starting on day three. We didn't have that ghost town effect. They, they could still do more to improve um, attendance, but they're getting there. Um, I think they're making progress. So. Uh, I have confidence in the leadership team and I think they'll do the right thing. So um, certainly I have a lot of confidence in this team as well. So uh, yeah. thank you guys. Uh, thank you guys for doing this tonight as well. It's always Can appreciated. I add one last couple last things here, Coop. Yeah. So in the next couple of days, we're going to have some other outstanding interviews and booth reports and product reports that you'll be putting up on uh, yep. Cigar Coop. Uh, you'll definitely want to tune in to uh, two of at least, you know, all the interviews, but uh, two of the most, you know, two of the ones that we always look forward to every year are, of course, Pete Johnson and Steve Saka. Yeah. Uh, Pete is, uh, Pete as ever, more than ever, is thoughtful, deliberate, and um, gives an incredible interview. Um, one of my favorites again of this year. And yep. you definitely don't want to miss Steve Saka. I don't like, I know you're not a fan of teasers, Coop. But I'm just going to say the terms chubby and nuts across the bathroom floor appear in the interview, and you don't want to miss it. Yeah, uh, those are like our grand finale interviews as we get there. We always wrap up with Pete. That's a tradition that Ben brought over. Um, I think it's like 29 minutes with Pete Johnson will be the final uh, interview. Um, you're not going to want to miss that uh, for sure. Uh, by the way, we didn't even mention it. I think Pete not only has had a great trade show, what a year he has had. I mean, yeah, this has been the better year, this man. Is, this has been the biggest year Tata Y has had, um, in my opinion, uh, since I've been covering them. So uh, just he's firing on all cylinders right now. Um, and uh, I think he's had a great year. 2022 has definitely been a great year for him. All right. So I'm going to bring us to a close, guys. Uh, thanks to everyone who hung in. Thanks uh, to our audience. Um, this Thursday uh, on primetime, uh, we have uh, Rainier Lorenzo as our guest uh, with Aaron and I. Um, so you want to stay tuned for that. And then we have a jukebox show scheduled for Monday. We'll be doing more of the Rolling Stone top 500 list. Uh, and then next week for the remainder of the week, there are no shows because I will be traveling. So um We'll be back in uh, the last. Uh, we'll be back in two weeks. Bear and I will have Andy Yaffe on from McAuliffe as our guest. So uh, looking forward to that. Um, great support we've gotten from them as well. Um, but that's going to wrap up Prime Time Special Edition 125 into the Annals of History for Tuesday, August 16th. Now Wednesday, August 17th in the Eastern and Central Time Zones. We'll see everybody next time. Take care, everybody. We'll see you next time.